you defeat it, all of the seven serpents, and destroy Kare. So that's like two good results right there. Let's continue the adventure for the final time. There is a legend. Long ago, or so they say, the ancient world was prosperous and free. From the Kakabad Sea to Lake Lumle, harvests were plentiful, people were happy. All was at peace. All was at peace, even the thunder and skies were calm, tamed by the arts of the sorcerers of Mampang. Then everything changed, when the Fire Nation attacked. A fearsome sorcerer leveled the cities and turned the fields to dust with towers of devastating light. He heard no plea. Cutting down village after village, the mages scrabbled to defend the ancient world, but they were weak. Finally, the last Archmage sealed the walls of Mampang and sent out seven deadly serpents to keep the dark sorcerer away. All seven died! We did that! And now here you are! Climbing the narrow pass into the mountains of High Zaman. The price of your journey across the backlands has already been paid. Now, the Anol Land is coming to Mampang. And nothing will be allowed to stand in his path. The crown will be yours. We're the bad guy now. Inkle presents... Steve Jackson's Sorcery. The Crown of Kings. This is the last one. This is the final map. Um, and thing, things get, get quite wild as this one goes along. Are we the baddies? <laughs> yes, we are. Unfortunately, we're also very hungry at the moment. We, we, we didn't end the last book with any food. The sun is now sinking down. It will be night soon. You climb an ancient staircase, worn to almost nothing by the ears. Look at the steps. Long ago, these steps were etched with messages, warnings, and words of advice, and succor to the acolytes, making the pilgrimage to the fortress. But they have long since been scrubbed away by dust, and the remaining marks tell you nothing. Let's check all the food I don't have. You have nothing. But at least you have one portion of raw meat, which will be edible if you can find a way to cook it. <laughs> oh yeah, we just have like an uncooked steak in our bag. In the distance, black smoke curls upwards. Check my sword. At least you have your blade. You draw your legendary sword an inch from its scabbard, its edge flashing in the dying sunlight. It is a fine, strong weapon. You are well armed for whatever terrors lie ahead. Pulling up your hood against the chill air, you stride onwards through the failing sunlight. You must not linger here. And to both the stream crowd and the, like those hopping in and the YouTube crowd who will see the video later, how's it going, folks? I hope you guys enjoyed the finale. Um, presumably, this one will be 16 hours long because it's been exponential gain. Uh, well, ex like, it's like doubled every single time we've done one of these. But I, I think this is going to be closer to like six or so hours. I'm going to place my guess now because I think this one is shorter than the third book. Um, I li we live in hope so I don't die. A 16 hour stream, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Take breaks or else. Now, I'm going to make sure I get some water this time. Don't worry. You're reflecting your progress with a heavy heart as you climb. The backlands were a cursed place, and your journey across them was slow. Even with the serpents defeated, caution would be wise. It's possible that other messengers will have brought news of your presence to the Archmage's ears. Walk on. Head held high. Up the steps. The Zanzunu peaks rise on either side like jagged teeth. The path winds back and forth as it climbs, and glimpses of the brooding horror of Mampang come and go. You should make progress while there is still light. Uh, yeah, let's sing while we climb. You try to sing as you climb an old Anilan song that tells of a wandering wizard and his three small children, but even then you cannot be jolly in this treaded place. The song dies in your throat. Oh, I can just imagine like the Anilanders just going up the hill, like the, the stairs. He's like, do you ever feel... Like a plastic bag drifting through the wind, ready to start again. <laughs> he's just, he's faltering, he's breaking, he's not doing Katy Perry justice right now. He's doing his best. Rough undergrowth. <laughs> Rough undergrowth springs up, lining the path on either side. Um, let's see if there's food. Like, please, God, be like a steak and kidney pie or something. 
Perhaps one of the acolytes who climbed this way years ago dropped something of use. Pause and push back the undergrowth with the blade of your sword, and then jump as you disturb a nesting spike hawk. The creature flaps in alarm. I mean, we've killed everything else we've encountered. <laughs> oh no, that's a lot. You slash quickly at the creature and open its wings, circling talons outstretched. Hit it strong. Okay, fetters drift down in the stones. The spycock issues a bloody call and spreads its talons wide. I think it's just gonna hit me again. Oh, look at that. No stamina loss. Flawless f fight. First try. I'm gonna edit that fight in the highlights too. <laughs> I'll make it look like we weren't doing sound checks there to make sure everything was running properly. <laughs> First try. Too good at games. Spycock tumbles as it tries to lift itself away, but it cannot move its wings. It collapses to the grass, and in the light, in its eyes, goes dark. Hawk drops to the ground. The red fire in its eyes turns dark. Search its nest. Return to the bushes. You quickly find the bird's nest. Two tiny hawk chicks are burrowing deep into the straw, hiding from the light. Two more eggs st are still on hatch. Take the eggs. <laughs> the eggs will never hatch without their mother, but they will serve you for a simple meal. You pick the first up carefully and wrap it in a scrap of cloth before putting it in your pack. One of the chick tries to peck your hand as you reach for the second egg. <laughs> we can knock it aside or just take the egg quickly. Uh, just take the egg quickly. Moving quickly, you take the second egg from the nest. Then you wipe your sword and move along the path. Say goodbye to your brother and sister! <laughs> Uh, Michael, thanks for the 200 bits. He just says to kill him. <laughs> Emma Chill, thanks for 200 bits as well. Oh, M. Cahill even, thank you for 200 bits. Night has fallen, you should find somewhere safe to sleep, for if you keep going through the night, you'll be weaker for it, especially on an empty stomach. You reach the top of the stairs. Round in the corner, still looking for shelter, you find three cave mounts set in the rock. Okay. We can enter a cave if we want, or we can just sleep rough outside. Uh, there's probably something evil in at least one of these caves, but there's probably something good in one of them too. Let's look at the caves. You regard the caves with interest. The middle cave is the smallest entrance and probably opens into a niche and nothing more. The nearest cave will be large enough for a fire, but looks deep enough to contain any number of nasty surprises. A series of hoof prints leads into the mouth of the furthest cave. Oh, look at the hoof prints. Take a closer look at the hoofprints. They are deep enough to suggest the largest creature, but they are no longer fresh. They are at least a few days old. You also note there are no prints coming out of the cave. Oh, okay, so this is the furthest cave. We can we can cast magic. I don't think sus is actually... Sus is useful if it tells us which cave has danger in it. Um, otherwise it's not too helpful. It's- Wow, it's actually- We can't even do sus. <laughs> oh no. How wouldn't help us because how would just be find safe passage? Don't go in the cave. Doc, heal disease. Um... Pep cause strength. You can do pop to create explosions. I, I, what, what is hot going to? What, the, hot was an option, but why is hot an option? We're not. We're not in combat. There's, there's no justification for creating a fireball right now. Uh, but you guys want to see it? Okay, create a fireball. You cast a spell, wind a fireball in your palm. Toss the fireball in the large cave, the small cave, or the fire cave. We can cancel the spell too. Fire cave, I don't think we should do it in that one. I think there's gonna be more than meets the eye for there. Let's toss it into the large cave. You throw the fireball in the middle cave. The resultant explosion is colossal, knocking you backwards and onto the ground. Black smoke plumes into the air from the cave mount. You can only hope no one from Mampang sees it. Why did we do this? What is the benefit? <laughs> one of the caves should be safe now, at least. 
cast it again. Okay, let's go into the large cave. You approach the cave out and peer inside. It seems to stretch back a long way. Let's smell the air. There is a faint, foul smell coming from within. Let's go inside. You, you take a few more steps into the mat of the cave. The cave quickly opens into a wide chamber. Stop a short distance inside and look around, waiting for your eyes to adjust to the dark. <laughs> Just sleep here. Now search the back of the cave. There's no more surprises to be found. Can I cast sun? Can I light up the cave? Look at that, create light. Sun jewel in your pack begins to pulse and th throb with a brilliant blind light. The cave walls flicker to life. Okay, so that cave actually appears to be safe. We can head back out into the night. Let's go outside the caves. Step outside the cave ridge once more. The light from the sun jewel pulses twice and fades. Moonlight covers everything. Okay, uh, let's have a look at the Hoofprint Cave. Stepping towards the northernmost cave, you see a few more sets of older ho hoof marks nearer to the mouth. Okay, look into the cave. The cave appears to be deep but quite empty. If a creature made the hoof prints, it is either left another away or is hiding in the furthest shadows. Um, let's enter. Uh-oh. You step inside the mouth of the cave. From the moment you stop for from the moment you stop for sitting on a rock just outside the mouth of the cave is a figure. Um let's look at him. The figure is in shadow, but it is human like and naked. A long mane of hair sweeps down over its back, which is turned towards you. Clearly you are treading quietly, as the figure has not turned around. Hello, sir. Figure makes no reaction. Okay, draw my sword. Suspiciously, you draw your blade from its sheath with a swish. Still, the creature does not react, though surely it must have heard that. Th this guy could just be dead. Um. <laughs> Touch the creature's arm. Th th strike it with my sword. You swing out immediately. The creature does not react as your blade smashes through their skull and they topple headless to the ground. Seems the creature was so still because they were already dead. Okay, look at the creature. You look over the creature. It is a woman with a human torso, but her legs are thick with hair and end in hooves. Her face is a blend of human and goat-like feathers, and two short horns rise from her forehead. Um... Should we be disrespecting the dead? Because, like, what if someone's gonna be like, hey, What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> it could still be a trap. Uh, 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 like there could there could be some danger here. You've already beheaded her. I'm gonna leave her alone. Short of burying the body, there is nothing to be done with it. So you turn your attention to the wider cave. Yeah, let's let's leave let's leave the cave. Leave her alone. We've we've got one more cave we can explore. Can't be a trap if it's ash. <laughs> Just cast fire. Okay, the smallest cave out and kneel down to peer inside. You might be able to crawl inside, but it'd be a tight squeeze. Okay, there's been no monster in any of these caves yet. So logic tells me that this has to be the one. Like something the evil inside it. Create a force field. I'm gonna replica creature. Um, find safe passage. <laughs> it's like, don't go in. See what it says. You bind the star line to shape around you, and a familiar voice begins to speak to you. The entrance to the cave is right in front of you, and the voice and tones before fading rapidly. As your eyes adjust to the darkness within, you can see that beyond the entrance, the space opens out somewhat. I don't like this. Are we just gonna go in the small cave? 
Crawl inside. Moving quickly, you crawl into the mouth of the cave. You're barely through the entrance of the cave when a terrible howling noise booms around the tiny chamber. <laughs> Did we just crawl back? <laughs> like, nope, not for me. Stab with my sword. You go to draw your legendary sword, but there's not enough room to draw it comfortably. As you fumble and tug at the blade, the howl comes again, almost deafening you. I should just... I should leave. You guys want me to wait? Okay. You wait a moment and slowly your eyes adjust to the dark, but you can still see nothing in the chamber. Suddenly, a tiny creature brushes your leg. What is this? This thing is a jib-jib. No more dangerous than an overgrown mouse. Why has it got human feet? Look at it. Covered in fur and no lar larger than a bomba fruit, it stands on two duck-like feet. Its body- Ducks don't have feet like that. Its bodies must be mostly lungs, as despite its size, when it howls, it makes a noise like a horn. Leave the creature alone. You ignore the creature. It howls a few more times, but it's, be but it's beginning to realize you are not afraid. A moment later, it scurries away into the darkness outside that hides somewhere else. The cave appears otherwise empty. This should prove an excellent place to rest. As long as you don't mind the alarm clock that lives in the cave. Um, let's... Let's sleep here. You lie down, pushing your pack under your head. There's just enough space to stretch out, facing the door in case anything should approach. I ate eaten today and you'll have a few provisions remaining. Let's eat one of those eggs we got earlier. You eat one of the eggs, cracking it raw into your mouth and feel much better for it. Oh god. Then you close your eyes and let your tiredness overtake you. You feel quite safe here, and you do not dream. Okay, inside the shallow cave. During the past day, you've gained a provision. Explore the high caves the caves of High Zaman. Begin your ascent into the mountains. The Archmage remains unaware of you. Ooh, so that's something of note. This status could change. That status could very well change as we go along. We have to keep an eye on that. Salmonella will be at your end. <laughs> you wake to find the cave is darker than before, not lighter. Look around. Darkness does not resolve. Solid rock seems to float mere inches from your face. Where are you? You open your arms to search for starlight but find nothing. It would seem you are too far below ground for magic to reach. Uh oh. Feel the walls. You reach out, taking a step before your fingers reach the rock wall of the pit. Then step by step you make your way around, drawn out a full circle. Overnight the cave is sealed up and you are now enclosed by solid rock. Um, should we just pray to the fox? Our current spirit, just please help us. Oh no, nothing changes, perhaps you've been abandoned. Fox, why have you done this? Feel underfoot. You reach down to the floor. It feels like loose gravel, fine dust, and small stones. You skim your hand through them and feel a slight shift in under your weight. <laughs> feel for the ceiling. Nothing. You feel a rush of hope. Perhaps you're not quite fully buried alive. Um, let's climb up. You find the rock with your fingers and begin to feel for holes, holds to pull yourself up. The going is easy enough. The stone is craggy and generous. Clearly this is not a trap. Or not one designed to hold a human, at least. Keep climbing. Climb a few minutes more, then your fingers find a corner in the rock, a ledge. You haul yourself up and out of the pit in the ground. Weak morning sunlight enters through the mouth of the cave in front of you. Let's just look behind us real quick. Turning back, you see the middle of the cave now contains nothing but an empty pit. Presumably the rock was always this shape, but previously the space was filled with aeons worth of gathered dust and debris. You must have shaken it loose through some opening below. How did we not notice that we fell down a pit in our sleep? <laughs> did we just like gently sink that entire th thing? Um, um, no, get out of the cave. Thanking the fox for aiding you, you hurry quickly out of the cave out and onto the path once more. Free. I'm not jumping back in, I'm just gonna die. We gotta be smart. <laughs> We're just gonna go, like, we climbed out of the pit. Okay, let's go in, that was real fun. Like, no. 
We gotta leave. Us be smashed. <laughs> we return to the path. There is an unshakable gloom about this place. A few birds are singing th thin and miserable songs. Enter a cave or move on. Okay, um... You know, I, th I think I want to just keep moving. Uh, like, we have a fair bit of map to traverse to. Before we even get into this place. See, like, like, look at all this. There's like a few ways to go about here. Yeah, let, let, let's just move on. I think we, we've searched the caves. You leave the caves behind. The steps are becoming wider as the path turns to fall the edge of a deep chasm. Walk on. A little further on, a rock ledge juts out into the chasm. Two posts stand on either side, with a narrow and rather ancient wooden bridge lashed to them. Okay, let's look at the bridge. The bridge must be a few hundred years old, at least. It's set on timber supports driven deep into fixtures out of sight below the ledge. It seems like it's it might still be solid. Okay, look across the chasm. You lift your eyes to look across the chasm to the other side, where more mountains rise up. A cleft line in their peaks trace a narrow road. Atop one summit is what looks like a large bird's nest. Uh, I want to keep my gold because I don't have much of it. I can look at the pad. You glance down the pad ahead and see a line of hoof prints, similar to those you saw outside the cave. They lead away past the bridge. Ooh, okay. Time to continue. If the bridge is sandwiched, it will get you quickly closer to the citadel. The hoof prints do not take the bridge. Which could be significant, and there is a bit of a wind and path, and there's some kind of settlement here. Um, I'm gonna say that we avoid the bridge. I think the bridge might be trapped. You make your way along the track, then pause for breath. A few clouds move across the heavens. A jutting rock sits, sticks out just by the edge of the ravine. Look at the rock. The rock is shaped like a hook claw, poking out of the edge of the chasm and looking out over the drop. The fire face is grown over with thick, fre fleshy green moss. Oh, we've gotten moss before. It's it's normally been good. You grab a handful of the moss, it feels juicy and fresh. Eat it. Put the moss in your mouth and chew it, and it fills your body with healing warmth. There we go. And the moss, the moss always seems to be good. You look into a ravine. The ravine on the north side of the pad is deep, but not impossibly so. A sheer drop becomes softer as the ground curves towards grassland within view. If you had a rope, you might have been able to scramble down. You must keep going. But I have a spell that... That could get me down, I feel. It's just... We're just not gonna use magic this time. The path crosses a rocky plateau, which rises gradually. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. We're almost in the peaks now, with cheer drops open on either side. The plateau is relatively sheltered, but there is no time to waste here. Okay, along the pass, there's some kind of village over here. We gotta have a look at this. A sheer rock wall stretches high on your right, while a drop is on your left. You follow the path as it curves around. As the sun climbs the sky, the winds begin to rise. The path quickly narrows, and you have, to you have to press yourself against the wall at times. You follow the trail around a corner, stopping short of view of a jutting ledge. The path turns to fresh mud, pressed with hoof prints. Look at the prints. The prints are similar to the ones you saw before outside the cave. Could there be more of the goat people here? You continue upwards, sweating under your pack, head low. But as you wind around a bend, a voice like gravel calls out. What, what does gravel sound like? Halt! That's that, like, gravelly? Gravelly? Uh, let's stop a moment. You stop in your tracks, and a rock strikes you on the temple. Looking sharply up, you see two creatures, each half human and half goat, perched against the southern slope, spears held ready. Hello, sir. What is your business, one demands. Who are you? I mean you no harm. I discovered one of your companions. Oh. Uh, one lowers her spear. Where? Uh, she is dead. She sighs as expected. You must have discovered Shahim Bli. She disappeared a few nights ago. She was very ill, and I suspect she left to prevent her disease from spreading to others. It is hard to hear of her fate, but I'm glad you told us of her sacrifice. Forgive my curiosity, the second goat woman says, but where are you traveling from? 
Okay, well, if she died of disease, it's a good thing we didn't search her. Because that would have ended badly. I... It worked out. We actually made the right choice there. Uh, okay. Where are you traveling from? Let's tell him something. You take a moment to prepare a reply. Are these creatures servants of the Archmage, or are they his enemies? I come from Analand, and I journey to Mampang. From Kara, I off to sell goods in Mampang. From the southern plains with no destination. Do we trust the goat people? Um... Because I feel like these guys, these guys are further away from the city. I journey to Mampang. I come from Annalyn, I journey to Mampang, you declare, unafraid who should hear your words. Mampang, she hisses, the cursed place. And what is your purpose? I will recover the crown of kings to find a lost heirloom, I will not say. Crown of kings. The creature stares at you, you would oppose the Archmage. He is evil and I shall destroy him. The creature lowers her spear and exhales heavily in wonderment. A traveler of such kindness or idiocy is a welcome sight here. None of us have seen much of the outside world. We did not dare hope it had goodness in it. Okay, we've made friends. We've made friends, it's worked out. Okay, you will keep my secret. The world contains a mixture of everything. You suffer under the Archmage. The creature nods. Please, come with us. Jahori will wish to hear what you have to say. The Hulfborns turn and begin to climb up a side path. We will take you to our village if you are willing. Um, please lead the way. The two Hulfborns sling their spears and beckon you to one side to a narrow way, almost invisible behind an outcrop of stone, and then you begin to climb. Okay, we'll go. We'll go and see the goat people. This has actually worked. <laughs> the village is a circle. <laughs> Um, I feel like a circle is a very common shape. I don't think we can distrust it forever. I don't know if this is always like, a good idea. It's a trap. The sun is blistering hot now. After about 20 minutes of climbing, the hoofborn paused to let you catch your breath. They are impressively nimble on the rocky paths, using their small hooves to perch on narrow ledges. As you continue, they even have to, they even have to help you climb up on stable stretches. Eventually, you spot a cluster of huts surrounding some caves. Get to the village. Oh, we got, a, we got a new map. Follow your guides towards the village. On an outcrop above, you spy two hoofborn standing guard, spears and rocks at the ready. It seems these creatures take their protection seriously. You must see Shahori, one of the, your guides says to you. She will be keen to hear of our companion's fate. Uh, Michael, thanks for another 100 pits. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have bashed the thing's head in with my sword. I'm gonna leave that detail out, and I'll pretend someone else did that. Because that might get me in trouble. And uh, Shahori, your elder. Yes, the guide says. She is very wise. She was one of the first. First what? First of us. It's not for me to explain. Ask Shahori, and she will decide if you're fit to hear. The hoofborn nod. Okay, it'll take me to your leader. The guides grow quiet as you enter the village. There are a few well-maintained huts, but it's clear many of the hoofborn live in holes in the cliff face. Look at the caves. From the outside, the caves appear clean and spacious. A surprising number of hoofborn stream out the gawk at you. These caves must honeycomb the entire mountainside. An older hoofborn, draped in several hides, emerges from a larger cave. One of your guides extends her arm straight out. Shahori, she says. Shahori, we have brought a visitor. Shahori stretches her arms towards you, just as the guy did. Welcome, she says. We do not entertain often. Um, let's mimic the gesture. You return the gesture, and Shahori is pleased by it. You are honorable to respect our customs. Oh, we're on a fucking roll right now. Um, may I enter your village? The Hoofborn leader takes a canter and step backwards and ducks her head. Feel free, eat and rest. We also have items to trade if you are willing. Look at this, we're going in. We're being polite, we're being courteous. This almost makes up for all those people we mur murdered in the second book. Step into the center of the village. The watch and hoofborn gradually disperse back into their groups. Some into caves, and others to a gathering around the fire. Okay, there's, there's, there's quite a few things here. Um, let's check out the viewpoint. 
On the north side, the village is a lookout point that offers a spectacular view across the valley below. We stay for a while, watching birdmen circling the peaks across the ravine to the north. One of the hoofborn comes to join you. They are cruel creatures born of pure hate, he remarks. But they say they are nesting in the mountains outside Mampang. Tell me how the birdmen can be defeated. Do they have a weakness? A fear of gold, perhaps, the hoofborn replies with a smile. No such luck. Birdmen are as tough as eagles. They barely eat. They can fly, obviously. They can talk to each other, but rarely trouble themselves to talk to other species. They are fiercely loyal to their master. He shakes his head. No, birdmen must be avoided. There is no other way. I gotta stop somewhere. They are not birds no more than we are goats. Birdmen cannot have children of their own. Only the Archmage can birth them. Oh, God. <laughs> Looking around, you suddenly notice the truth of his words. In the whole village, you have not seen a single infant. You cannot have children of your own. We cannot. The hoofborn strikes his chest with a palm. Go in peace, stranger. The village is small. There could not be more than a hundred inhabitants. Archmage just has a bunch of kids. Let's check out the fire. Go over to the fire and sit down with the gathered hoofborn. They are sharing out a meal that smells of oranges and charred wood. Oh! I can cook my raw food! You unwrap the portion of raw meat you have been carrying and roast it in the fire. Save it for later. Save your provisions they should keep well. Okay, let's talk with the hoofborn. Since the hoofborn are so entranced with the wider world, you would offer them you would offer to tell them of your adventures. They surround you with eager faces as you speak of the chaos of Carrie's many markets and the destruction of the city port by the marsh goblins. Key note, it was the marsh goblins that destroyed Car, not us. You tell them the story of your journey through the vast plains. You tell them about Leek and Kala and your battle with the dreaded water serpent. They clearly do not believe half of what you have to say, but enjoy the adventure nonetheless. They look wistfully across the mountains when you are finished. Fire smolders gently. Ask him about the Archmage. One of the goat people shrugs and then her laughs. Strange rumors come out of Mampang, stranger. Strange rumors indeed. Tell me. There are those, merchants and traders mostly, who say Mampang is run by the guards. They say the Archmage does not appear. D do they say why? Goat person shrugs once more. The merchants say he's dead. They say if he was alive, he would be over a thousand years old. But who can say? It is certainly true he never steps outside of Mampang. And that's all they say. Okay, let's have some food as well. Move over to the hoofborn to share their meal. It is a bit gr is greasy chunks of meat with some kind of sweet glaze that smells of oranges. It sits in a bowl of small grains and it's very filling. Get to your feet once more and have looked around the village. Okay, there, there's a trader here. Against one rock face, a thin hoofborn stands beside a few broken pr packing crates stocked with trinkets. He raises a hand as you approach in greeting. Uh, let's look in the crates. You peer into the crates. The creature has a curious assortment of items. Some most likely highly valuable, others all but worthless. It is almost a parody of a shop. The crates are labeled in scrawled writing. The first is marked 9 gold and the second 15 gold. But you cannot afford anything anywhere. A spear leans against one of the crates. Look at the spear. It's a blessed hardwood spear, he declares. It's virtually unbreakable. And very expensive indeed. How much, you ask? 70 gold pieces. That's robbery. No robbery would be anything less, but never mind, you need not buy it after all. I've seen enough. You thank the trader and move away. There are some youths playing around in the dirt. They are hairier than their elders. Some are using all four legs. They grow into their humanity, or the younger ones simply more goat-like due to the Archmage's interference. 70 gold is a lot. Like, we should have made a lot more money in carry. You approach Shahori, who is seated outside the largest hut, and not a Grecian. Greetings, she declares. I hope you are finding our village comfortable. Thank you. This will be your last respite, I think. <laughs> she agrees. Shahori looks away into the distance, and for the first time, you notice that her eyes are blurry and weak. Stronghold, thanks for 150 bits. It's gambling time. <laughs> we just go to Shahori. Fancy a game of Swindle Stones. <laughs> Okay, uh, you are blind. Not yet, Shahori answers, but I lose sight with each passing year. You're all made creatures, but not made to last. Um, okay, you've been to Mampang. Shovels are hooves uncomfortable. We used to live in Mampang. Several of us, at any rate, we escaped. We were the Archmage's prisoners. Of a sort. Your experiments. Yes, we- yes. 
That's horrifying. She stomps once, a sharp sound that echoes through the nearby caves. We are not horrors, she says. We are the product of cruelty, but that does not define us. What can you tell me of the birdmen? They are cruel creatures, but there is some hope for them, I think, she replies. They are strong, perhaps even strong enough to escape from the Archmage's clutches in the end. You nod and turn to leave. One last thing, Shori declares, before you step away. If you should find the Archmage. Yes? Kill him without hesitation. <laughs> With that, she looks away, her weak eyes searching the distant horizon for answers. Oh, God, we don't even get to talk to her more. The only other option is leave. Like, I feel like there was other stuff here, but we, we just didn't have the option for it. No swindle stones. Yuri bids herself, you for bid herself bids you farewell as you take your leave of the village. A guard accompanies you back down to the main path. You are grateful for it, as the route is so steep you, ri you risk a fall without help. No swindle stones, lads. We gotta get going. Once at the road, your guide extends his arm in the hoofborn bow. Thank you for your news and stories, traveler. But we'd appreciate it if you did not return. We cannot risk a spy from Mampang following you to discover our home. You have my word. He smiles, extends his arms again, and disappears up the narrow path once more. We've left... Left them behind. Never get to see him again. You skitter and scramble the last few lengths down to the trail once more. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. Look for the hoofborn path. You look back, trying to find the path by which you climbed up into the peaks. After a few false starts, you imagine nothing but a few scrapes and falls. Perhaps you only ever had the confidence to climb such a slope because the hoofborn were leading you. At any rate, the curious cave village has now vanished from reach. The path runs in both directions along the chasm edge. Okay, well, I'm glad we stopped there, at least. Like, we, we, we got the resupply. Uh, a bit. You know, we, we got some food. Food is good. Buff, thanks for 200 bits. I'm from New Zealand, barely get to watch your streams. So I stayed up for this one. Love what you do, keep it up. Oh, good man yourself. Thank you very much. You walk along the edge of a sharp ledge, which looks down into the deep chasm. The gap is wide, but across it you see a path winding down through the mountains towards Mampang Fortress. A rope hangs suspended mid-air above the chasm. Its near end is coiled up neatly on the path. Ooh, look at the rope. You look suspiciously at the rope. It is dangling quite unsupported in the middle of the chasm. Ooh, test the rope. You unwind the rope from a rock and give it a tug. It feels solid, though its surface is strange. The other end of the rope does not move from its invisible anchor. It feels quite firmly pinned. The result of a fixed spell, perhaps. We can jump for the rope. I feel like jumping for the rope is a mistake. There is another bridge along here that we should investigate. I, I, th th this has to be a trap. Cast a spell. Can we do sus? We can do sus. Sense danger. You weave the enchantment. A quiet voice enters your mind. The voice informs you that the rope swing is a trap. But so are the bridges, and the path ahead. And then before it can offer anything more useful, the voice fades from your mind. Okay, so everything's a trap, I guess, so we gotta just pick our poison. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so everything is dangerous. We can jump for the rope. Look along the path. You notice the trail continues, you think you see a bridge in the distance. Look down to the chasm. Bottom, you can make out a rocky path that winds out of view. It is all but hidden below a layer of fog. Can I can I cast a spell to just float into the chasm? And like we'll we'll find we'll find a way back. Float in air. Yeah, we can do it. We can go in. <laughs> do we? Ju are we just gonna? Are we just gonna try and go down? There is how as well. Find safe passage. You cast a spell expecting the convoy and the enchantment to talk into your ear, but it does not come. Instead, without any explanation, the rope's invisible anchor point seems to evaporate, and the rope plunges away into the ravine and it's gone. <laughs> uh, peer after it. You lean over to peer after it, but it has vanished from sight within seconds. Clearly, whatever enchantment has held up the rope was severed by your spell. This is clearly a counterspell. It would seem that the spell of pathfinding opposes the enchantment of attachment. 
Okay, I mean, at least that's something that's quite good. And uh, we learned a counter spell there. Okay, let's, let's let's make our way to this dangerous bridge then. The rope is clearly a death trap. You leave it behind, walking towards the bridge in the distance. For a moment, you seem to see something moving on the slopes above you. Look up. You look up, but can see nothing. A hoofborn, perhaps, watching over your progress. Look at the bridge ahead. The bridge ahead seems strong and secure. It spans to a path on the far, far side. You'll see the way that travelers the Manpang took in times past. There is no reason to waste time here. To the bridge. Andromeda, thank you for 250 bits. Thank you very much. Uh, Dog Little, thanks for 100 bits as well. Thanks, guys. Head along the path until you reach the foot of a sturdy-looking bridge that spans the chasm here. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Soon, it will be dark once more. Look at the bridge. The bridge is made of plain wood and looks sturdy enough. Here in the dry mountain air, it has not even begun to rot. Test it. Take a probe and step. As your foot touches the plank, you hear a strange, quiet sound. It stops when you remove your foot, but when you step back onto the bridge, the murmur begins again, as though the bridge was whispering. Time to move on, but will you risk the bridge? Were we warned about the whispering bridge from one of the serpents? I feel like that's incredibly dangerous. Kalidas and the whispering bridge. You're told the path of Manpang lies across the whispering bridge, guarded by the hermit Kalidas. Oh god. So this is the path. But we were warned. There might be one more way. It's almost definitely dangerous. Do it anyway. Okay, the boldly go. As you stride into the bridge, the whispering grows louder. You begin to make out phrases and words. The whispers are quite audible. You will never see the crown, they say. Your journey is pointless. You are wasting your time. <laughs> okay, keep going. You hunch your shoulders and push forward across the bridge. You pause about a third of the way across. Each step is taking more effort than the last as the whispers continue to assail you. What is the good of pressing on? Oh no. I must turn back. You stumble quickly off the bridge. <laughs> you return to the ledge sweating. The sun is sinking and the sky is turning bruised purple. Time to move on, but there is no way you're going back onto the bridge. He doesn't want to do it anymore. Wait, if I if I go back, can I call out his name? On the bridge. Call out a name. You stop to call a name to your invisible assailant. Kalidas. The echo bounces off the peaks, but that is all. Wait. You wait, and the bridge shudders, swaying and creaking. The whispering becomes an irritated groan as a ghost steps sideways out of the wood. Well, I'm here, the ghost says. What do you want from me? <laughs> Why is the bridge so miserable? This whole... <laughs> Why is the bridge so miserable? This whole land is miserable, the ghost replies. The whole land. The bridge tells the truth. Even as a ghost, he looks ancient. He feels his way forward as he walks. As he walks, A blind ghost. His eyes have been painted black in the Christotanti tradition. The priests and shamans blinded themselves to better see into the realm of the gods. Who are you in life, Mr. Spirit? I was a holy man, he says. I was on a quest much like yours, but I failed, just as everyone else will. A holy man and a healer. He nods. I was, or perhaps still am. What is the point, though? I only stave off sickness, and now the Archmage is the crown. All will suffer. I'll kill him. Don't you worry, buddy. I cannot cure you of complacency, he says sadly. And it's terminal out here. Can you help me across the bridge? I must get across. Why would you want to do that? There's nothing out here beyond death and ruin. The ghost does not stand aside. He raises his translucent hands to his face. As he mutters, berating himself for his failure to reach Manpang, you hear the bridge's whispers, whispers growing louder. Can I, ca I need to cast the counterspell to the sap, I think, because I think someone's cast a severe case of sap on him. Tell me how I can aid you, spirit. There's no help in me, Kalidas groans, and the bridge all but chuckles in the wind. I'm quite dead. 
What can I give you in exchange for passage? Nothing, he yelps. What could I want in such a miserable state? I don't have holy water. I could free you. Scratches his chin, fingers passing right through his face. Ending this torment, that would be a blessing from Throth herself. Okay. Then we have an arrangement. You can hear the whispers subsiding, then they begin to creep back as his face droops. But how, he asks, is it possible? I'm a sorcerer. You are no match for the sorcerers of Mampang, Kalidas replies bitterly. And no match at all for the Archmage. You'll die his slave. Attack the bridge. <laughs> Do I just destroy it? You draw your legendary sword and strike at the wooden boards of the bridge, then no effect. Kalidas hovers nearby, trembling. Slice the ropes. You swing again, sword passing through the ropes of the bridge. For a moment, everything teeters. Then the bridge begins to laugh as you took. Wait, why did I do that while I was still on the bridge? I thought... <laughs> Surely, if I was gonna cut the ropes... <laughs> I would go to the end of the bridge. <laughs> well, down we go. The rock walls flash by as you fall down the chasm. The bottom is approaching fast. You have mere seconds. Cast a spell. Cast a spell. <laughs> we we have we have two that can get us out of this. We can cast then. Hover in the air. There. Consulting the constellations above, you bind the spell, and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. With perfect control, you float down to the ground. We're okay. We save Kalidas! <laughs> you bob gently near the ground. You're shaken, but unhurt. You're in the narrow ravine once more, and once more you are somehow still alive. Your weight returns, and you settle gradually back down to the ground. Look at the walls. Go over to the walls of the ravine. They are worn and weathered, with several cracks and weathered pockmarks. You could try to climb, though the incline is sheer. Uh, let me just check the map. There was something over here. So I think we should go investigate that. I mean, if we climb up here anyway, the path's just gonna take us round to there. So, yeah, let's let, let's make a move. We'll start walking down the ravine. Search around and see if there's anything here. Uh, looking around, you know, scattered among the rock, a few rotten boots, dented breastplates, and other abandoned gear. Where did this come from? They keep digging around. After shifting a few rocks and pebbles, you discover the answer. The ravine is peppered with the smashed bones of adventurers who do not survive the fall from the bridges overhead. You're not the first to attempt the journey to Mampang. Has anyone ever succeeded? <laughs> you cannot stay here. You must find a way back up the slopes to continue your journey. Okay, so let's go, let's go down the ravine. And see what's over here. You clamber down the rocks and into the grass begins to take over. The sun is almost set and the sky is a deep pink. No time to waste. Ravine widens a little here. Follow the ravine downhill. You think you're still headed in the direction of Mampang, when it's hard to tell so low down. As you travel, the rock slopes begin to even out, becoming a valley peppered with clumps of grass and shrubs. Darkness closes in. You need to rest. Look around the rocks, but come across nothing useful. Valley over here. There should be a path. After cool hours of dusty walking, you arrive at a cluster of trees. A sparse, spiny type that seems to dot the area of High Zaman. There'll be a quiet spot to rest. The moon is high. Look around the valley. Uh, the valley continues straight ahead, dipping out of sight. To your right is a path leading up a far rock slope. Okay, let's make a move up the slope. There's, there's something up here. You climb the path, which, which soon steepens. You need to keep one hand on the rock wall to keep steady. It climbs and sharply turns up the mountain. You keep, keep climbing. Vaulting boulders and grabbing tree roots. Towards the tower. You walk on, feeling your way through the darkness. A tower sits a short distance off the path. It looks to be in ruins. I look up at the tower. The tower is familiar, built to a similar design as the one you saw in the backlands. But this one has fallen into semi-ruin. The entire top half is missing, as though struck by a blade. Uh, let's approach the tower. 
As you move towards the tower entrance, a shadow falls across the doorway. The shape is stooped and hideous. It would seem this place is home to a troll. It has not yet noticed you. Watch it. You watch the creature as it paces around inside the ruined tower. It appears to be ordering things, moving stone blocks from one point to another. Let's go say hey! You march over and the troll's eyes snap up to meet yours. Then he lumbers out and in, into the moonlight. Let's look him over. He stands at least a head taller than you and his shoulders fill the exit. The troll roars and bangs his massive sword against a shield large enough to squash you with. He is a ferocious enemy of incredible strength. Let's fight him. Sophia, thank you for the 500 bits. Thank you very much. Um, cause depression. I don't know if he knows what depression is. <laughs> Create lightning. Pop. Cause an explosion. Mud. Create quicksand. Oh, well, that was depression. Talk all languages. Sharpened blade. God, they're giving us a lot of spells this time. Foth as well. Should we just electrocute him? Let's electrocute him. Cast lightning. You wind the stars into order around you, building up a charge of electrical energy around your palm. The bolt hits the troll and he spasms in pain. He survives the magical assault though, so you'll have to fight. Oh, he's barely injured. Oh no. He begins wailing and shouting. Yeah, his, sh his shield comes up. That means he's going to defend. So a weak all hit. Troll stamps back. Stamps back means a light attack. He's stumbling. His wiry old muscles leaking green blood. He shifts his grip on his sword. Defend here. Steps away quickly. He's gonna defend. Oh, he didn't defend, but we still got him. He shifts his clutch on his mean sword. Got him again. He narrows his eyes. Shift into a crouch, the troll circles around you, his shield high, his shield twitches. Little gentle strike. He shifts his hold on his sword. All out. Okay, we got him. You get to your feet and gather your wits. The troll is quite dead. Search his body. You find nothing but a charm around his neck. A goblin's tooth strung onto a string. That is useful for a spell. You tug the tooth away, snapping the string. The pack continues in both directions and the tower is open to you. Okay, let's sleep in the tower then, I guess. You step between the fallen blocks of the ruined tower. It stinks. Search the ruins. Nothing in the darkness. Look around. You pause and look around the broken, shattered room. This was a fine building once. There are hints of carvings and decorations on the stonework, even though all of it is now tumbled away, and the tower is open to the elements. Niches set in the walls once held idols and statues, and a curving spiral staircase once climbed upwards, but is now broken halfway. Climb the stairs. You wind your way up to the stairs about halfway up the tower's height. The stairs end a few paces further on. They have been she sheared off by the same force that removed the entire roof of the tower. Step to the edge. Step carefully to the broken edge of the stairs. Two more steps, taking each one at a time in case the stone should give way under your weight. After three steps, you stop. The broken edge of the stairs is now one step away. <laughs> Am I just gonna fall? Take a step. You take another step and then another and then another still climbing. Looking back, the stairs behind you seem quite intact. Looking in front, there are once again only a couple before they fall to ruin. And yet, with every step you make, it seems more steps appear. Walk up the steps. You pace up, step by step up the tower, spiraling around until you finally reach a trapdoor on the non-existent roof. Push it open. You push the trapdoor open and step out onto the roof of the tower. Oh god, there's something weird going on here. The wind whistles past your head, ruffling your hair. 
You were standing high above the pass, atop a tower that was not here when you passed through the path below. Look at the tower. A brass beacon of the same kind you have seen before stands here. There's the faintest shimmer of magic in the air. Look at the beacon. At first glance, the beacon seems quite intact, but there is no light shining from it now. Step away from the trapdoor and walk out across the roof. Go to the beacon. Move over to the eye of the beacon. A shimmering blue crystal is set at the end of it. Can I adjust? Can I, touch the crystal. You reach in to touch the crystal. wonder if you can activate the beacon. But though you touch it, nothing happens beyond a sense of healing wellness that floods your veins. The beacon seems unchanged as you step back. Can I turn it? Try to turn the heavy beacon, but unlike the towers in the backlands, this one appears firmly fixed, its eyes pointing out towards Manpangan's central tower. Step away from the beacon. You hear a quiet cough from somewhere behind you. Who's there? You call. But there is no reply. Oh, I don't like this. You head out to the edge of the tower just by the end of a large brass lantern. Out across the land. Out across the land towards a deep crater in the earth that is spilt like a bleeding sore by a black hissing vent in the ground. No doubt this hellhole is the quarry used to build the citadel that lies beyond. Look at the beacon again. Yeah, it's still just focus on the citadel. There is indeed a very faint light spilling from its end. It seems the beam is active, but it's been focused into an extremely narrow beam that reaches across empty space towards the citadel. You now over the edge, you hear a surprise. You have a surprise. The tower below is still not there. Looking down, you see nothing but ruin and rubble. And yet, under your feet, the planks are quite sound and solid. Ampang itself dominates the skyline, enough to chill the hardest of hearts. At its top is a tower with a single high window, the Archmage's turret room. Step back from the edge of the tower. Just then, a robed figure steps out from a shadowy spot behind the lantern. Hello? Greetings, it declares. And what are you doing here? Who are you? I am the custodian of the lights. Who you are is more of a puzzle to me, since the lower floors of this tower are home to more than one mind snake. I would not expect any traveler to simply walk in. I saw no snakes. No, indeed, replies the custodian. Mind snakes are hardly visible. But the sharp end is quite sharp, and usually quite hungry. Uh, you're wrong, the tower is ruined. The creature looks around and shrugs. Evidently it's not. The creature strokes its sharp chin. All in all, this situation is most unexpected. Okay, so I should, probably shouldn't sleep in the tower, because there's potentially murderous snakes here. Let me ask you a few questions. Indeed, the creature re returns in some surprise. Who do you serve? The Archmage, naturally. Whom else is there? Why do you serve him? It is right I should serve someone, the custodian replies, as you do. There's something strange about the custodian's speech, though the conversation was happening out of its proper order. How do I reach Mampang? Along the pass through the crater of ghosts, the custodian replies. Though that should be obvious enough, I should think. Seen beacons like this before. It's the last of the great beacons built across the backlands, the custodian declares. They are lenses, and like all lenses, they collect, focus, and deliver. Only they do not focus and deliver light. They focus time. Indeed, that is correct. You're funneling time to Mampang. For my master, the Archmage, he lifts a hand to his forehead reverentially. He desires immortality. It cannot be achieved. Extreme longevity is a close second. Little, thanks for 300 bits. Thank you very much. Hum he's evil, I must be destroyed. Uh, where can I find him? In his tower, of course. That is where the last this last beacon shines. Where he sits to drink in the light. Custodian nods to you. I must resume my calculations, he declares. You nod in return. If you survive your journey up my tower, no doubt you will survive the journey down. Okay, see you later, Mr. Custodian. Stairs disappear as we travel back down. Oh! You're back in the ruined tower. The wind howls through the broken structure above. 
I probably should not sleep here because we were warned of snakes. And I feel something bad will happen if I sleep here. Is that I think that's a fair guess. Make a move. Yeah. I don't want to get killed by snakes in my sleep. I can smell the troll's corpse even from this distance. Okay, let's move up. Climb up the cliff path. The night air is cold. The path splits here, snaking around the edge of a mountain while a branch works its way downwards towards the stone tower. Looking west, you see the end of a narrow wooden bridge. There are three ways to go from here. Okay, so there's some kind of ruined structure here. There's a big crater here. And this way just kind of leads into the fortress. There's some kind of cheeky side path that goes all the way around the fortress there. I don't know if we're going to have any experience with that. We're going to make our way in instead. Um, let's go towards the ruined structure. We follow the path westwards away from Mampang. Narrow rope bridge leads across south across the ravine here. Just make a move. Slopes are too exposed place to rest. You follow the path as it curves around the slope of a collapsed mountain, picking your way over the fallen stones and tumbled boulders. It was clearly a major road before, but it's long since fallen into ruin. Cold night lingers on. The wind is too strong here to sleep. Follow the trail along the mountainside. Finally, the road ends outside a ruined building. The path beyond the building is nothing but rock and ruin. Approach the door to the building. It's not locked, but the frame has warped, and now the door is stuck. Opened by a mere crack. Okay, let's just see if sus works here. Sense danger. Craft a spell, and a steady voice begins to speak to you. This place is haunted, the voice tells you. A terrible, cruel-minded spirit lives here. Oh, it's a haunted house. I don't know if this one... Hmm, Lorag lives here. I know this is bad, but I kind of want to see where this goes. Peer through the crack. Place is clearly long abandoned. Look over the building. You lean back from the doorway and look over the structure. The building is two floors high with a tiled roof that has partially fallen in. Its main door is small and set between large bottle glass windows. This was clearly a grand house once. A metal bracket sticks out from the wall above the door. Perhaps it once held a sign. Pull the door open. Door is firmly wedged between the bent frame and the earth below. It will not shift as much as an inch. Um. Okay, we 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 really gotta commit if we want to go inside the haunted house. Stop. Reaching up to the stars, you create the magic, but the spell cannot seem to find purchase on the door. It seems the hinges have seized and rusted so badly. The spell no longer recognizes this opening as a door. Oh god. Okay, lever it with the sword. Nothing happens and the door does not budge, but at least you do not damage the blade. We have to just destroy this door. Fireball. Blast the door. <laughs> Hurl the fireball at the tavern door and it explodes in the charred fragments. Dust and stale air drifts out of the dim interior of the building through the doorway. Which way now? Ruined Tavern. The Game 1 provision explored the peaks and the ravines of the Zanzunus and found one new clue. The Archmage remains unaware. You pick your way up through the buckled door frame. Inside you see a large room dotted with tables. Grass peeks up between the floorboards. The roof has collapsed in one corner, and ivy trails down the broken beams, settling on a long counter. Check behind the counter. You lean over the counter, but there is nothing here except a row of barrels, all split open long ago with an axe. There's a rack of bottles that still seem intact, however. It must have been an inn. The 
It sits beside a well-trod road, so travellers must have come this way at some point, but it has long since fallen into disrepair. A mug sits on one table, its handle missing. Across the room, there's a cramped passageway. Look at the bottles. You look along the rack. Most of the bottles are wine or exotic ales, but one label catches your eye. Fire water! But the bottle is dry as a bone, as are all the others. Oh, that's a shame. Hmm. Okay, let's look around. Got an art of mold for a piece of paper and a few coins. Pick up the coins. Hunching over, you pick up the coins and examine them. They're very thin bronze, green with age. On one side is a simple picture of a bird of prey, talons outstretched. On the other, there is a profile of a hook-nosed woman with a stern expression. There is writing along the edge of the portrait, but you do not recognize the language. Are they simply ancient, or from a faraway land? When you travel to the past, you have never seen a coin like this, or another portrait of this woman. Look at the paper. You only managed to make out a few lines. The beckoning finger welcomes you, sorcerer, to the last in, the last resting place before the fortress. A hot meal is two bronze pieces, and comes with a cup of ale. Bread and cheese are one bronze piece. Seems unlikely the price is still valid, however. The beacon you found in the past is in ruins, so it won't help you rebuild this place. Hmm... Explore the hallway or leave. Are we going further in? That knew we were a sorcerer too. That knew we were a sorcerer. I think we should just leave. I, I think this is gonna go end really badly. <laughs> go in. No, keep going. Yeah, it could reveal us to the Archmage. This place knows that we're a sorcerer. I don't like that. No one should know we're a sorcerer right now. Oh, go into the hallway. You make your way down the hallway, it leads to several back rooms, but most have collapsed, and now only the nearest two are accessible. One is smaller, only containing a single bed. You look around the empty hall and discover a handle in the ground, a trap door leading to some kind of cellar, perhaps. Back rooms are almost certainly mere wreck and ruin. Oh, I don't go into the cellar. Raptor groans as you open it. A stench of mold wafts up. You descend the ladder, nearly fallen as an old rung snaps beneath your foot. Light filters in through cracks in the ceiling. Okay, cast sun. Cast sun. We need to see. Cast the enchantment till the sun jewel starts to give off a magical white glow. Corners of the room jump to vivid life. Look around. Peer around the gloom. The floor is dirt with mushrooms peeking true. And in the corner, a tree has managed to grow. It only reaches your chin, but you spy a few very small apples hanging from its branches. Let's pick an apple. Grab a single healthy looking apple from the tree and stow it in your pack. Examine the mushrooms. The mushrooms are scattered around the cellar, glistening in the dim light and glowing slightly. There's a large cluster in one corner, which you squat beside. Mm. Let's pick some for later. They are more entrenched than you would have expected. A small tug doesn't budge them. Okay, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. <laughs> okay, climb back up. Go to the ladder to climb back and I only notice the extent of the damage you did to the rungs on the way down. There's nothing to step on. You're stuck down here. Okay, I, I have a spell for this. We've collected artifacts and we're gonna use them. Hover in the air. Look into the constellations overhead, you craft the spell. A medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. Float on up. You float back up through the trapdoor and settle to the ground on the floor above. Sigh relief out of the cellar. There's still the back rooms to explore. Check the large room. The rotten door of a large room yields to your touch. Brackish water seeps from the wood. In the room beyond are many beds, but they have been stacked against the wall. A chest lies open, its lock smashed. Look in the chest. Find nothing but splinters and dirt inside. The lock was smashed open some time ago. It has rusted into its broken shape. Check under the beds. 
Lying on your chest, you peer under the stack of beds. Straw spills out of the mattress onto the floor. And there's a pile of rags that you think is a rat's nest. A bottle lies among the filth. Let's take it. You grab the bottle from the brittle straw. Putting it to the light, you see is a potion of fire water. What kind of incels potions? You stand, your ears of dust cling to your short to your shirt. Do I that's uncork it? You uncork the the bottle and the smell sharp gingery makes you cough and splutter. The fire water is still pungent after all these years. It must have been a good distillation. Okay, let's cork it once more. We'll save that for later. That's really good for a spell later. You can get a spell of strength with fire water. Okay, there's one room left. There's one room left. I... Because we haven't had too much bad luck in this place yet, and there is a spirit. Oh, no. On first glance through the doorway, the room at the back appears to be a private bedchamber. As you enter, you see signs of violence. Unlike the larger dormitory, Furniture is smashed, and possessions lie scattered about. Half a mirror still hangs in a frame. Pieces of splintered wood litter the ground. Look at the bed. There's a note on the bed. Read it. You pick up the note off the bed and read it. Horrors it reads. Surrounded by horrors. I have discovered the tavern is haunted. I must flee. If you read this, heed my warning. Run. Run now. A voice pipes up behind you. But it's fake, you know. Turn around. But no one is there. Still the voice pipes up again, this time from the hallway. You worked on that for a whole afternoon, it says. It sounds like a young girl. Oh god. Why did you guys want me to keep going in here? Let's just leave the room. Get yeah, from the room and back into the hallway. In the hallway, a young girl is standing, her hands clasped in front of her. Her flesh is slack and tinged green. One eye is missing, and her patches of hair are like straw. She smiles up at you. But her chest is quite still. She's not breathing. A ghost. Terribly hard to write a note in our condition, you see. But he managed it all the same. He's stubborn like that. The furniture was easier. I helped a bit with that. He stares at you and a worm crawls out of her empty eye socket. It slitters across her face and burrows into her ear. She's not the first ghost you have met, of course. But she's in somewhat worse condition than Lorag was when you met him at the gates of Kare. Who are you talking about? My friend Flidrick, she says. He's around here somewhere, though he sleeps more than I do, but I wouldn't worry. The note said this place was haunted. The note is a fake, but not that part, the girl replies. It is haunted, but we're not horrors. How did you die? Oh, it's too horrible to repeat, she replies cheerfully, but I'll tell you where. And she points a finger downwards to the cellar below. I'm not sure I deserved it. Flidrick dead too. Oh yes, very much so. He died after I did, I think. How long ago was this? I have to say, a long time. I remember the tavern being full of laughter and travelers. But was that after I died? It might have been. I turn away, unable to take conversation with this ghoul much more. Could, could I ask you a favor? The girl says, the worm peeking out of her ear. You may ask. I may not grant what you ask. That's fair, she replies seriously. But it's a simple thing. I have been trapped here for so long, but I believe you can help free me. Then a voice booms from the front room. Stop right there. Just then, a second ghost strides into the hall. He is or was a well-built young man. A hooded robe now in tatters clings to his frame. The skin of his arms is frayed like cloth in places, and a white bone peeks through. You will leave, he shouts to you. Never return. To stay is to invite death. Didn't you read the note? Nonsense, the girl retorts. This mortal can help us. We could be free. Should I go? I, I don't want to help him. This place is incredibly dangerous. We know it's dangerous. Say nothing. 
Ledric ignores the girl and fixes you with a cold glare. Do not be mistaken, fool. You would do best to leave now. Why do you want me to leave? Because the dead and the living should not meet. The girl rolls her sunken eyes. Only because you scare them away. I just want to talk to people, but you chase them away. Is that true? Fledric nods. Yes, but only, to, but only to prevent the girl from soliciting your aid. She wants to leave so badly, but we must not. Will you help us, the girl pleads, turning her big round eye sockets at you. Fledric shakes his head. No, no, you must leave. We are the dead, and you should be afraid of us. What keeps you here? An old spell, the girl says, but a simple one. Who cast it? Lydric coughs. Someone old. No, someone long ago. A spell of binding across the threshold to keep the spirits within. Have you been here ever since? I think so, says Flidric. Though sometimes I think I was alive when the spell was cast. I do not remember if the girl was. The little girl spins in place. Who can say? I don't trust you, little girl. Her face crumples. You are all the same. Someone comes along once in a while, but Flidric scares them away. I just want to be free of this awful place. The young girl flounces away into the common room, beckoning as she goes. Oh! People really want me to leave now. People really want me to leave, but other people- I want to keep going! We're gonna keep going! You follow her, Flidrick cursing and muttering to himself, chasing threads of memory. Once in the common room, the girl points to a musty roll of parchment stuffed underneath an old crate that you did not notice before. Pick up the parchment. It is cracked with age, but still readable. It describes a simple counterspell to the binding enchantment that is placed on the tavern. You could perform it with ease. After Flidrick managed to write the note a few decades ago, I copied out the spell, the girl says. The old one was useless and in the wrong language. Flidrick is becoming increasingly agitated. This is so sketch. I'm not doing it. Lydric breathes a sigh of relief. The girl pouts. The corners of her mouth begin to droop past her chin. The room is cooling suddenly. The young girl begins to elongate, limbs blending into the shadows of the room. Lydric backs away, his ghostly form even more insubstantial than usual. Useless mortals, she says. Your kind are good only for one thing. Her voice grows jagged as she advances on you. Um, attack with the silver sword. You draw your short silver blade and stab at the girl, who howls with fear and surprise as the edge cuts into her flesh. How, she screeches. How is that possible? You begin to transform into something quite different. Attack again. You strike again as the girl's transformation into a death rate is completed, but she is still weak from so long imprisoned in this place. You cut through her ragged form, the gash drawn wisps and fragments of air from her form. Flidrick begins to sob openly as the girl disappears from view. I think we just killed the demon. You return, still shake, to the front room of the tavern. All that remains of the girl is a blonde wig, discarded by the door. <laughs> Sleep here is now an option. Oh, God. Take the wig. It's a mix of human hair and spun fiber. That's not a green wig. That's, that's not good for like our like translation spells. Do we spend the night in the haunted house? Sleep here. This is a safe, dry, sheltered spot to rest. You lay down your pack and curl up. At least you've eaten already today, so you do not eat, need to eat again to avoid hunger. Let's close my eyes and try to forget our troubles. Dream. What is left of the night is filled with visions. You are falling and falling, and the more you fall, the more you continue to fall. On and on, down and down. Jib-jibs are bouncing past you, peering from all sides. Their maniac eyes all but popping from their heads. And all the while you hear distant laughter from the east. Archmage remains unaware of you. You get to your feet, the thin sunlight falls through the doorway. Let's speak to Flidric. Flidric mopes by the threshold of the door. 
Haven't you done enough, he says, as you approach. What happened here? You demand. I do not understand what I have seen. She killed me. In this room, she tore my body to shreds. Perhaps she pursued me here. The spell of binding was to trap her, but I trapped her in with me. And once dead, I was also bound. Were you a sorcerer? More of a scholar of magic, but yes, I lived at the fortress in the mountains, teaching magic. I do not remember much of that life, though. Uh, why did you not warn me what she was? I tried, he replies sadly. All I could remember was how vile this spell was, and you ignored those pleas. She's gone now. I hope so, I hardly believe it. Okay, let's see. Uh, did- Could you leave now as well? To what end? Haunt another patch of ground? No, leave me be. Perhaps with her gone, I will be able to find some measure of peace, or at least oblivion. The ghost sighs heavily. And leave me be, Flidrick says. At least now I can rot with a clearer mind. Okay, see you later, Miss Mr. Ghost. Flidrick does not look up as you go. Manpang will wait, wait no longer. Uh, we, we, we seem... We seem to be okay. Step through the tavern door once more. The only way is back. Ah, well that was a surprisingly calm adventure in the haunted house. Suddenly you feel a wave of nausea. The ground beneath you shifts. The sun slides... slides sideways. Uh-oh. Steady myself. Try to steady yourself only to fall. The world rushes past you further than it should. You hear a woman's voice singing gently above the sound of lapping waves. What magic is this? Oh, this is the first map. Waves lull and wash towards the shore. Lapping water, you lie on a bed of stones, looking up at the brightest sunlight. Where am I? This is not High Zaman. A feeling of dread creeps over you. What kind of trap is this? How far have you traveled? Stand up. You pick yourself up to your feet, woozy as though you've been asleep for a long time. Greetings, murmurs a voice, warm and welcoming. You've traveled a long way together, you and I. Who are you? You call, turning your head but seeing nothing beyond the washing sea. I have many names, she replies, but none truly describe who I am. The sea washes at your boots, as though inviting you to step forwards. You must go back. You shall, the voice assures you, you shall. A gentle wind tugs at, tugs at your coat. You are standing on the shore of the Kakabad Sea. Barely a half day's walk from Annalant. We have a shore and a cave. Crunch towards the shore. In the glint and water, a boat slowly rocks to and fro. In the boat sits a woman with a loom. Uh, what should I call you? I have many names, she repeats. But one will do, so call me Libra. I am the goddess of justice. We have walked together for a long time, you and I. You kept your presence hidden. The woman is clearly a goddess. She nods. There are many times the warp serves only to support the weft. She answers. I walk. Yeah, I walk with my spirit guide. You tell her. The fox runs nearby as you speak. I am the goddess of justice, or the goddess of the long peace. You are my ambassador, and I follow you. And you must bring peace to the land. Then aid me. Help me. Waves wash up and down like long breaths before the goddess answers. I bring you here to deliver a warning. A long road, to road together has almost reached its end. Your voice is filled with sadness. I have kept you safe many times. Saved you. But I can do no more. <laughs> Just let her speak. I know you do not understand, she continues. But you will soon enough. When you enter Mampang, you will understand. The walls around the citadel are more than those of physical stone. It is a cursed place, guarded by sigils and long knives. You mean you cannot enter? Right, but perhaps you do not understand the cost. Annalander, for as long as you have walked, I have walked beside you. I have granted you waking dreams, dreams of your future. Dreams from which you, you wake to walk a different way. Let her speak. Waking dreams, the goddess continues. The kind that seem real, until they disappear as though they have never been. She shoots the shuttle across her loom once more. But no more. Once inside the walls of Mampang... Your future will become precious once again. The word strikes a knell of fear into your heart. Tell me what you mean. 
A weave can be made and then unmade, and made again in a different fashion. The final garment does not know how many times it was stitched, so it has been, been, so it has been with your journey. She laughs. Or perhaps you consider yourself to simply have been lucky to have survived so far. A large wave strikes the shore, and as it drains, the boat tilts and begins to drift away. The woman makes no move to stop it, merely continuing to weave. Let her go. You steady yourself and watch as she drifts away. The thought of the long journey back to Manpang begins to sink in your mind. Let's go into the cave. Step away from the water toward the mouth of a dim cave. Inside, the stone drips salty tears. These tunnels must be flooded at high tide. Uh, look around. The, wall, the cave walls are jagged and irregular, formed by lashing waves and the shifting rocks of a thousand years. Here and there, crystal seams wink from deep within the frozen folds. Let's go in. You push deeper into the cave, climbing over fallen stones, fall, following the line of the deepest darkness up to the towering cliffside. Somewhere overhead are the low hills around Cantopani, and a short distance from that is your home. You climb higher still, upwards into the rock, when something in the distance begins to roar and moan. You're not alone in the darkness. Oh god, why did the goddess bring me here? You open your arms to cast a spell as a great wind begins to rush through the tunnel, gathering in strength and force as it tries to push you back. Your arms are pushed apart and the power unbinds before it can form. Fallen. As you begin to fall, the stars reach down to catch you. It's okay. We're back. Back on the cliff path. Was that all real? The taste in my mouth. There's still a taste of salt in your mouth, but nothing more. You shake the vision away and look around yourself once more. You've been walking these paths in circles for days now. Time to make progress, surely. Real or not, you must keep moving. Okay, yeah, we just fell through the world there, but we're back in book four. The LSD really got you, man. You follow the path southwards once more. The chasm yawns open on your right-hand side. As the sun climbs towards the zenith, the winds pick up a little. A narrow rope bridge leads... Okay, make a move. Yep. Narrow rope bridge. I'm going up. We're going the Mampang. The path splits here, snaking around the edge of a mountain while a large branch works its way downwards towards the stone tower. Up we go. Trail winds through the mountain. You follow it until, uh, until a sight ahead makes you stop. Higher up the rocky cliffs perches a strange structure made of twigs, branches, and moss. Let's look at it. Looks like a huge bird's nest perched on a wide stone ledge. If you were to climb the rock face to it, you could easily fit inside. Nope. <laughs> no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> you put the nest out of your thoughts and keep going. <laughs> no. I do not want to get caught by the birdmen. You head down a slight incline. Mampang looms into view distance, into view once more. It's as though these mountain passes had been carved to ensure no one approaching could forget the citadel's looming presence. Keep on walking. At the bottom of the hill you pause, before you lies a deep crater, as though an entire mountain peak had been scooped away. I have to find a way across. Thin heat beats down from the empty sky. Uh, yeah, we have a crater here. We gotta, we gotta get through this. Once we get through the crater, I think we're in the fortress. Climb over the rim of the crater. Then you skid and slide several feet down the rough slope. Finally land in what appears to be a path. Check myself over. You're uninjured! Hey! A path leads down into the crater here. Then our trail leads north and south to the rim. Hey, thanks for 100 bits earlier. Thank you for 200 bits, even. The path down to the crater is wider and more beaten down than you might have expected. This is not the main road to Mampang, but this trail must still see some use. Time to continue. Okay, into the crater. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. Follow the trail until it becomes lost under thick scrub. Lucian, thank you for the five gift subs, my man. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna follow the trail. Let's go to this house, see what's going on. You follow the trail. A thin plume of smoke rises to the east. Let's look at it. From what you can make out, the smoke seems to be rising steadily, but thinly. It is more like mist than smoke from a bonfire. You slip onwards through the crater. Let's check out the house. See what's going on. 
pass by a low stone building in the wakes. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. Go inside. With a hand in the frame as you step through the list and doorway. In we go. You enter the crumbling building. It's missing its roof, so you're exposed to the sky. Search the building. With great care, you search the rest of the building, but find nothing of interest. The building is quite empty. But carved on one wall is what appears to be a scratched message. Let's read the message. You read over the message. Third spell that the Throbin doors is spell of invis. Okay, well, invisibility. Spell of invisibility is the third spell of the Throbin doors. Okay. Let's pause to pray. The doorway beckons, but you are not ready to move on yet. The open sky framed by the edges of the building quiets your thoughts. You close your eyes and raise a prayer to the fox. You feel a great sense of calm overcome you. You are close to Manpang, but can still know a moment of peace. Let's move on from here. There's nothing more to be found. You slip outside of the age building and back into the light. Third spell is invisibility. Do I have a pearl ring? I don't think I do. Pearl ring is what we need for invisibility, so we need to find a pearl ring when we're in Manpang. Step out onto the trail and look around once more. Suddenly you hear the stampeding of boots across the gravel. A troop of guards is approaching from the east. Hide. No, no, no! You watch tense, but there is no doubt the guards are heading this way. Hide. You waste no time and dive off the pad to the scrub, hurrying away to, through the bush until you're out of sight. You stumble through the thick scrub. You hear the guard patrol stamping away in the distance. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. It will be dark soon. Short distance ahead, you spy a large black bundle hanging from a tree. The bundle is long, at least six feet tall and jet black. It sways slightly as it dangles from the branch. As you get closer, you notice a chain running from the bundle to a stake in the ground. You also notice the bundle is somewhat hairy. It's a bat. It's a bat, and that's not a chain, that's drool. Move on. Move on. The chained bat has not yet stirred. Perhaps you can slip past unnoticed. Sneak past. Tighten in your pack, you begin to creep past the creature. Sleep soundly as you pass a tree. Then the creature snorts, distance distracting you for a moment, and you step on a branch with a crack. Freeze. You stop, frozen to the spot, spot, hand at the hilt of your legendary sword. The bat's head swivels this way and that, and its beady eyes come to rest on yours. <laughs> let's, um... Let's just deal with this <laughs> real quick. You turn the starlight into alignment around you, widen a powerful electric force into your hand. And you unleash it in the bat's body. The creature jerks and smokes with energy, but we're fallen to earth, a mere dark husk. The trail runs in both directions through the crater. Okay, let's carry on. You emerge from the scrub by the low stone building you saw before. Yep, that's fine. Soon it'll be dark once more. Do not return inside the building. If it's dark and we're approaching the city, that's ideal because we'll have the cover of night. Well, let's press on. The trail passes a deep crack in the rock, which extends southwards, growing deeper and wider. Smoke issues upwards. Look over it. Fissure is like a deep wound in the ground of the crater, as though the earth had sp had shrunk and cracked apart. There's no way across the fissure, but the path leads into either direction past it. No, nope, no, I'm not going in that. No, nope, that... <laughs> Keep moving. I don't like that. That's just where, like, a monster's gonna attack us. You make your way up the curved, dusty rim of the crater. An open pass leads forwards and up. The skyline is suddenly dominated by the looming specter of Manpang. Clouds rumble as they roll across the dimming sky. Spellbound by its presence, your eyes follow the lines of the citadel's walls. Narrowed spires twist upwards towards the sky as if in agonized prayers to the heavens. Sharp angles and jagged points protrude everywhere. Demonic gargoyles line the outside walls. Okay. Try to look away, but you cannot. As though the towers have gripped your eyes. 
The sight would be enough to break the courage of any brave soldier, and its effect on you is much the same. You feel a knot of fear bury itself in your stomach, but you cannot shake it. Despite shivering at the sight of the citadel, you feel yourself compelled to step forwards. We're walking up. We're going in. <laughs> Just, thank you for the hundred bits. So when do you lose your leg? <laughs> oh, he's gonna come and collect before long, don't you worry. <laughs> Clamber up the far slope of the crater until you're on the main road once more. Let's keep moving up. You creep forwards into the narrow rock pass. This is the only corridor of the Manpang. There's no other way. You make your way slowly forward as the narrow walls close in on either side. Okay, look ahead. The path stretches on in front of you, curving very slightly as it approaches the rising citadel. The road is barely wide enough for a cart, and the mountains tower on either side. An avalanche could bury you in a moment. And are there birdmen up there, waiting? Stop and listen a moment. You still your breath and listen for any movement, but hear only the wind whistling through the pass. Make a move. No obvious traps and no way around. The only way is forwards. You move cautiously along the pass. It's barely wide enough for two horses to ride abreast, but the walls on either side loom high and threatening. Starlight pools around you. There is magic here. You're upwards. Looking upwards, you see the cliff edges look smoother somehow, as though loose rocks have been moved away from the cliff edge. There's powerful magic in the sky. Hmm. No, I can't cast far. If far for some reason. Sus is gonna be less and less helpful, I fear, because there's just a lot more danger around us. There is danger ahead and be above, the voice says. You must make yourself safe. And it's it's words spoken, the enchantment fizzles away. Okay. That's worrying. I wish I had an invisibility ring right now. Read mines, there's no mines here. Nip causes speed. Nif creates a stench. Zip! Cause teleportation! <laughs> Let's try it! You bind the magic, trust into luck as the green ring of green metal on your finger begins to gleam like a serpent's eye. Close your eyes as your body is wrenched away. You reappear a few feet further on? <laughs> I mean, I don't think there was anything there we had to worry about, but... Okay, we saved a few steps. Good ring. <laughs> the end of the pass is almost in sight. Thin shadows stretch along the high rock walls. Wait a moment. Pause for a moment. Nothing happens. You slip through unnoticed. You avoided all of Manpang's outer defenses without being noticed. Did we? Was there something in that pass I should have been concerned about? Oh, <laughs> well, you follow the path between sharp peaks. Let a night begins. You should try and find a place to sleep, especially on an empty stomach. And then the pass opens and provides you with your first clear view of the Citadel's gate. After 24 days of walking and hardship, you have arrived. Mampang. Here it is. The Dread Citadel seems to be at peace. There are no patrols of birdmen, no marching guards on the walls. They are not expecting your arrival in the least. It seems you have covered your approach flawlessly. Stars turn in the empty air above you. Okay, we can enter now, or we can try enter in the morning. I... I don't know what way is best here. Take a moment to drink in the sight. Manpang's walls are towering, and they march away on either side. Guard turrets jutting against the pitch black sky. The fortress is the, si is the size of a small city. Somewhere inside is the crown of kings. Let's make a move. Gates are sealed for the night, but perhaps you can find a way to sneak inside. I like the idea of going in over the cover of like, during the cover of night. There's an east road that leads very far away. There does appear to be a side door. Maybe we can get through? 
We gotta sneak in. We don't want the Archmage to know we're here. You follow the path past the main gate and around the curving stone wall of the fortress. The moon climbs into the sky, filling the world with thin silver light. The path opens out here into a wide plateau, directly beneath a guard turret. Under the cover of darkness, you should be able to make your way without being noticed. So good right now. Follow the path further along the curve of the mountainside. Far below, a river rushes at the foot of the deep chasm that opens two steps to your left. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. Look at the side gate. The side gate is no main entrance, but it's still impressively large. While the fortress is built from blocks of stone of a size you haven't seen around the ruin since the ruin steps down into the backlands, it must have been carried and laid by enchantments. No creature could have assembled them on the edge of this precipice, with such a narrow space to work. At the end of this path, a side gate is set in the wall. Okay, I could look for climbing holds, but I think there's going to be guards on the wall, so I think that's like a less good of an idea. Move towards the door. The side gate is much smaller than the main gate, and it's probably used for patrols. Look at the door. You approach the door and sizing it up. It seems solid enough. You would not be able to smash it, uh, it open, even though you, to, you you could do so silently. It does not seem to be a lock. It must be barred on the other side. There's a stone overhang on the doorway. You could perch there, but it wouldn't be high enough to climb over the wall. I can climb up on it. What can I do here? Climb up to the overhang. You pull yourself up in the ledge above the door. It's only wide enough to support you and will take some balance to stay up. I can knock on the door from here. Knock on the door. You swing the hilt, the, the flat of your legendary sword downwards and there's a resounding slump. From behind the door you hear some muttering and cursing as footsteps approach. Hear the bar being lifted. Wait a moment. Oh ho ho ho! You stay silent as the door opens and a black elf in patchwork armor pokes her head out. Seeing no one, she steps through the doorway, looking behind bushes and around the corner. Am I going to be able to slip inside, slip down? Drop silently, the guard's still searching behind the bushes. Slip into the door. Oh no. Like a shadow, you slip into the doorway. You bolt the door behind you, breathing a sigh of relief. You've made it inside Manpang. Except there are two more surprise guards standing a few feet away from you. There's no time for anything but your sword. The three of you all stare at each other in utter shock for a moment, then spring into action. You suffer a deep cut in your shoulder as the first guard lands a lucky blow, but you skewer him for his trouble. One guard is left standing. At least we've almost killed them all. Yeah, he, he's very badly injured. Oh, just cut him down. Cut the guard down. You sheed your legendary sword, steady in your breath. The door rattles as the guard locked outside complains to be let in. You dash for the doorway and then gasp with relief. You're inside. Oh god, we snuck in. This is a small side yard with further walls between it and the bulk of Manpang, but it's still inside the citadel. The shadow of Manpang falls over you like a cloak. It's as though the sun itself has dimmed. You feel suddenly more cold and alone than ever. But you have no choice but to continue. A voice in your head whispers, Good luck, before fading into the murmur of waves. You've entered the Citadel of Manpang. Here, no decision can be rewound. This is the end game, lads. This is it. We cannot rewind anymore. <laughs> I think he just broke the rewind button. Yeah, it's red now. You can't rewind here. You can rewind to outside the gate, but you're not allowed to use it anymore.
This is nothing but a small enclosure between the barracks and a smaller outer gate. It's most likely used for a training exercise and the like. A small fire crackles in a central brazier, and a few guards sit around it. Don't go over to the guards. They're gonna wonder, who the fuck are you? Look around. The side entrance was perhaps designed for the servants and lower classes who once served the sorcerers of the Citadel. It's clearly long since fallen into heavy disuse. A stack of crates rots in one corner, leaning over a heavy inner door that has perhaps not opened in, been opened in hundreds of years. Another door in the wall to the southeast seems more commonly used. The guard by the fire... Guards by the fire talk in low voices. Okay, look at the crates. The crates have been discarded over many years, with those at the bottom rotten to a putrescent pulp. Those on the top are more or less intact. They rise up almost to the level of the inner wall. Look at the barracks. I don't want to go in the barracks if I can help it, because that sounds very dangerous. The door to the barracks is hanging open. Peering in, all is quiet and dark. Soldiers at the brazier murmur to one another. Move on. You need to find a way further inwards. There's crates, there's an old door, and there's a small door. God. Well, we've avoided this main courtyard at least. The small door leads into here, which I assume is the barracks. I want to chance that old door. That old door looks like it might be best. Step over to the door, almost invisible, within a low arch and the heavy stone that shields shields off inner manpang. Looks like it has not been opened in centuries. The hinges have rusted into red metal fists. Look at the door. The door is ancient. The handle is a large iron ring set on a rusted rivet. Surely it will not simply open if you turn. What magic have we got? We could float? We have to think twice now as well. We can't just do like joke hot and like throw a fireball at people anymore. Um, we need to think carefully from this point. Zob is unknown. I don't think Zob is a spell. I could just use DOP. Open locks and doors. DOP. You guide the stars and design around you, and the door rattles hard but does not unlock. It seems to have been enchanted against such a simple magical approach. Perhaps the door has a counterspell built into it somehow. Hmm. Let's- I'm gonna try floating. Maybe this will let me fly over. A couple of guards are moving towards your position. Float up onto the wall. Just then you notice two guards looking your way. They have not yet noticed you. In midair. In the darkness as you are. But they might if you keep rising. They cancel the spell. Cancel the spell quickly before anyone sees you. Oh, God. How do I open this door? Guard's like, what the fuck? Who's this floating man? And this dude just turned on no clip. Could just turn the handle. When at that moment a guard from the fire... A guard from the fire calls out to you. You there, keep away from that. Turn the handle. Told you to stop, the guard shouts. That door is... It's too late. Tiny needles flick outwards from the handle of the door, burying themselves into the, your palm. You feel the cold sensation of poison ent enter in your veins. Your arms begin to stiffen. Too late, the guard concludes, turning away. Your hand is frozen into place on the handle. Open my pack for something to use. A vial of holy water? <laughs> Knock back the water of holy water. Does anything happen? You feel no different. 
Pull your hand free. Feel the poison crawling over your body. It has reached your elbows. Cut off my hand. Pray for aid. You close your eyes and raise a prayer to the fox. But can the fox hear you in this terrible place? Nothing seems to change. You feel the paralyzing poison creeping up into your chest and across your shoulders. And finally, you feel the blessings of the holy water. A healing force seems to flood your veins. And the cold in your hands and over your heart abates. Gasping and grateful for your life, you lean a moment against the stone wall as your eyes slowly refocus themselves properly. Oh my god. There's a counterspell for the door, but what is the counterspell for the door? I don't know. It's not Dop. I can summon a goblin. I can just cry. Sense danger, it, it is dangerous. That's That doesn't tell me anything. Just throw a fireball, but I don't. I think it's enchanted. A fi simple fireball is not going to work. <laughs> we we actually need to be careful now. We cannot rewind anymore. Step away from the door once more. What's the clue I found? There's no way from the outer yards of Manpang to the inner city. It is sealed to all. Okay, you leave the shadow of the door and step into the yard once more. Your weight returns as you settle gradually back down to the ground. Oh yeah, we were, we were flying there at some point. Guards are still gathered around their brazier. Don't walk over to the guards. Uh, uh, I... Just go to the small door. Oh god. You enter the shade of the barracks. The sound of gentle conversation and snoring echoes from the various rooms that lead off this hall. A closed door leads south. Listen at the closed door. You pause to listen at the closed door to the south and you hear the quiet sound of singing. The language you recognize, it is the common tongue of Anilant. So there's someone who's awake in there. This is, this is incredibly dangerous as we journey through here. I'm gonna try it. You stride into the room. A horned humanoid creature stretches out on a bed, but he's clearly not sleeping. He glances in your direction, opening a pair of exceptionally large eyes. They cover half his face, but the pupils are like those of a cat. Look at his face. You look over his face with glowing dread. This is a sight master. What is a sight master doing here inside the walls of Mampang? Blinks very slowly. Cast a spell. Incapacitate him. Illusion of worship. Cause fear. I can cause fear or depression. I think I think causing fear might be better here. I want him to be scared of me. Reaching up to the constellations above, you create the spell, pulling the black face mask out of your pack and putting it on your face. The creature on the bed sits bolt upright in alarm. Sergeant, he exclaims, face turning pale and white. But you're, you're... He begins to shake. Tell me how to enter the walled city. I don't know. If you're a ghost, can't you walk through the walls? Isn't that, isn't that how you found me? Beg for your life. I cannot, the creature replies. I cannot, my life is forfeit. The Archmage took my soul and I am but a shell. It breaks down to uncontrollable sobbing. No longer willing to look at you. Look at the Sightmaster. The creature on the bed is clearly broken by what he's done. He has no ally, but most likely no threat. Can 
Okay. They'll find a body if I kill him. They'll be alerted. Search the room. Find a cloth skull cap with your pocket. I don't think I should run him through. I, I, I'm, I'm careful if I leave a body. There's got to be something in the barracks that's going to help me. I got a cloth skull cap at least. You leave the wretched creature staring with his huge powerful eyes at a blank section of the wall. A prisoner without chains. It's still night. We got to get through here before, before morning uh, comes. Creep along the corridor. A powerful smell emerges from the smaller door on one side of the corridor. On the other side is what looks like a dormitory. Don't inhale it. Go either down the car either way down the corridor, but lingering would be a bad move. Okay. They're asleep in here. That's where the beds are. Do you think it's possible for me to get, like, a disguise or something to get inside? Because that's what I'm thinking at the moment, and maybe that's the reason the barracks are even an option. But I'm worried where I go for that. That's the toilet there. If I have to guess. I'm gonna chance this. This is very dangerous. You slip into the room, which is lined with cots. The beds are all occupied with snoring guards, with only a few exceptions. Search the room. You begin, slowly, carefully make search of the room. I cannot help blundering in the darkness. When the guard stirs in his sleep, you back quietly, quietly away. Don't sleep in a bed. There's a back room. There's a back room. What's in here? You step through the door into a small dressing area. Benches line the walls under racks of hooks. Look under the benches. Only a few buttons and ancient fluff, but inspect the rack. Is there a uniform? You paw through the cloaks, finding parts of uniforms. A hat here, a cloak there, a piece of shoulder armor, but nothing you could use as a full disguise. Pinned to the wall, though, there's a shift rotation crawled in a rough hand. Read the notice. The list of names is large, nearly the size of a ta town's entire guard is signed to the main gate and the side walls. Several groups are down to patrol the passes on the crater, while the others patrol the outer walls. Just as you had suspected, none of these guards seem due to go inside the inner wall. Sneak back out into the main dormitory. It's not enough for a disguise. Don't sleep in a bed. Sleeping in a bed is like the worst thing I could do right now. It's almost morning. Gotta make a move real quick. I'm really worried now, because I don't... I don't know. Ugh. We need to get through here. Small door. This is bad. Stride into the latrines. The smell is horrendous. The room is filthy. Hundreds of flies buzz around in a hole in the ground. From the look and smell, the place has never been cleaned. The grill in the back wall provides the only ventilation. Cast a spell. Do I have how? I do not. L doesn't even have an option. Someone in a goblin is not... <laughs> See the future? That's kind of vague. There might be there might be something more immediate that helps us. N? Nif? Great more of a stench. People really want me to use the goblin. Why do you want me to send the goblin down the hole? <laughs> Are you guys sure about this? Do it for the meme. Do it for the meme. I th 
Guys, we don't have rewinds. This is our only toot. Oh, God. You pull your last goblin toot from your pack and throw it on the ground, casting your spell across it. The toot erupts into a column of smoke, and a moment later, a goblin warrior is standing in front of you. Search the toilet. Rummages this way and that and eventually pulls something out inside a clenched fist. Make the goblin clean it. Tries to wipe it on its tunic but with little success. A moment later it pops the object into its mouth and swallows. A moment later the spell ends and the goblin disappears in a puff of smoke. A key drops to the stone. Filthy with foul muck stuck between the tines but a key nonetheless. You pocket it. Look to the grill. Standing on tiptoes, you peer out of the grill in the, hole in, in the wall onto the mountain path outside. The rocky slopes seem wonderfully safe to you now. What is this? So where's the key for? Look into the hole. Too dark to see much, however, thankfully. No, just leave it. Stumbleback leaving the dark hole unexplored. You leave gratefully. Okay, I... I have a door. I have a key. Would the key work for there? I don't know. I don't know. We're running out of time to check, though, because it's going to be morning soon. We got to get out of the barracks. If we go the front way, I don't think that's going to help. We have to, we'd have to get across this courtyard. Hmm. I don't... I'll try use it on the door. Steal a disguise. We didn't have an option to steal a disguise. Walk silently down the corridor. Let's try use the key on the door. You've been awake all night and are weak or four. That's fine. You walk back over to the old door, but are uh, wary not to touch it this time. Try the key from the latrine. You give the key one last wipe and slip it into the lock. It clunks heavily as toot meets pin. Then you turn and the tumblers fall over, like stone golems rolling in their sleep. And then just like that, the ancient door is unlocked. Oh my god, the goblin in the toilet worked. Open the door. The door is unlocked, but it's the trap disarmed. Open it. Oh no. You pull the door open by holding the half turn key. The ancient hinges groan and grumble. Flakes of rust fleck in all directions. Be sure to attract the attention of a passing guard. Slip through the door. Keep, keep, keep pulling at the door. You give the edge of the door one last heave and with a squeal, it opens an another few inches. But you're drawing the attention of all the guards in the yard who turn and begin to run in your direction. Calling to each other as they come. Look at the guards. Stop to look at the guards. They have not drawn their weapons. In fact, they are pointing at the open door. Move aside, one shouts. Don't get in our way. We're going through. Go through. Try to slip through, but the guards are, are, are on you. Piling you back as they push through the doorway themselves. We're in, one cries from the other side. Quickly, get that door closed before he sees. Slip through. You hurry quickly through the doorway before the guards can slam it shut. For a moment, one stares you in the eye, and then the door is shut, and the guards have disappeared into the long grass inside the wall, whooping and cheering with delight. We're in, lads. I hope the Archmage doesn't know. The other side of the door is thick with oversized wheat plants that grow as high as your head. Impossible for the door to open more than the crack of jar, and once you are through, the way of the plants on the door slams it shut. Look around. Look around the field. The plants here are three times taller than anything you've seen before. No doubt forced to abundancy by controlling magic. Place my feet the whole of the citadel. The outer yards are long gone, and I've left nothing but a trail of broken glass stems. Let's move away from the wall. Wading through the long wheat like this will be hard work. The air moves a little around you, still icy but fresh. Okay. 
<laughs> Gotta go through the field, I guess. Go here. You walk on through the long grass. Then something large slitters over your foot. Hopping back, you see a large snake disappear into the wheat. Back away. Take a step back from the snake. The stalks close around you. Where did it go? A few clouds scud across the sky. Keep going, keep going. We gotta get through here. You stride onwards through the field of wheat. The stalks nearby shiver, and then the snake you saw earlier bursts up. You twist away as it rears up and goes through your neck, and your blade is out before it can disappear again. You track it with hawk eyes. You have fought larger serpents than this one. Oh. Can we fight it? You draw your legendary sword and set your stance against the creature. Get him down. Get him down. Service moves have become sluggish and pained. Kill him. Ah, it's just a normal snake, you know? It's almost the size of you. <laughs> Stalks break and crack around as you walk. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. There's ruins? There's a building there. And there's just more fields. Let's check the ruins. Pace on through the tall, swaying stems. You're picking your way over slow, scattered ruins. Wheat and grass stalks stick amongst the rock. The walls that remain suggest a curved tower, perhaps a guard turret. Or the rubble. Pick your way through the center of the ruined shape. Low walls form a rough circle, though what remains rises no higher than head height, and the grass grows long inside. Wait a minute, a circle? Uh, examine the rack. Examine the rack, but the weapons here are all rusted and chipped. Even if they were not in such poor condition, the workmanship marks them as inferior to your legendary sword. Cheap iron blades, these must have been standard issue for whichever guards were stationed here. It'd be hard pressed to find such a shoddy made weapons even at a rural market. How old are these? Search around in the grass. The way deeper into the long grass, peering at the, gra at the ground while searching, you step on the broken tip of a spear. It lances through your foot. The metal tip, along with a small spirit of blood, pokes up from the top of your shoe. You sit in the grass to yank it out. But the pain was perhaps a necessary price, however, as in your administrations you spy a trapdoor hidden in the grass. Open it. Damp dirt fills your nostrils. There's a short ladder leaving da leading down. That's how the guy's gonna claim the leg. He's got a piece of it now. Go down the ladder. You climb down the ladder. Your fingers press into the dirt as they grasp for rungs. Hidden chamber. You found something here. You climb down into a cramped chamber, dug directly into the dirt. A small bed and table are pressed against the wall with no room to spare. The wood of the bed frame is thoroughly rotten. And the table is gutted with holes. Some paper and assorted junk are scattered across the table. Read the papers. Most of the papers are faded from damp and age, but even the intact ones are in a language you do not recognize. The writing is full of loops and whirls, a twist and script that causes your head to swim as you try to puzzle it out. On one of the sheets, another hand has been annotating the text. What are the annotations? Cramped, precise writing in far in never newer ink fills the margins. Comprised of living or animated rock, starlight does not provide power. A living animal is the template, but it's not part of the construct itself. At the context of the text, the notes are largely meaningless. This hovel is an odd place. Is an odd place to find with the notes of a scholar. Okay, I I don't know what that means, but people remember that. It's going to be some kind of clue to a puzzle later. Search the table. Most of it's writing materials, along with scraps of wood. But among the clutter, you find a small tinder box, dry and intact. It's far newer than the rest of the table's contents. Someone must have dropped it. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Strike a light. To strike a spark in the tinderbox with to make a torch, you'll need something to burn. <laughs> okay. Burn the piled papers. <laughs> Grab a handful of the papers and light the corner with a strike of your tinderbox. In the dancing firelight, the walls of the small room leap into life to reveal more of the lupin. Curl and script covering every surface. It's still unreadable, but down here in the dark it is oppressive enough to itch at your eyes. All the text. 
Trace the words around the edges of the dark space. As you do so, they seem to resonate and ring in your mind, even though you do not speak the language in which they are written. Do we keep reading? Or do we put out the flame? Follow the text. The words lead you on a dance, around, this way and that, up and down. You feel your body moving, riding, twisting. Follow the text. The cursive poem your eyes are tracing reaches its peak, until quite suddenly, a voice is speaking in your mind. I am in the library. I am a prisoner. Knock twice, then pray. You will be welcome. Then the scrawl and text ends, as though the writer's inspiration ran dry. But they were too tired to write anymore. Okay, that's really good. So there's a there's a prisoner in the library. We need to knock twice and pray. That's how we get in. Oh, did the line on the bed do anything? You lie in the bed, which immediately collapses under your weight. A cloud of rotten wood flings itself up into the air, and you choke and sputter on it as you stand. At least no one was around to see it. So we found a clue. Get back out of the ruins. It's most definitely Tom Riddle. <laughs> Obama, thank you for the hundred bits. Climb gratefully back up the ladder into the chill mountain air. You leave the ruins behind. As the sun climbs the sky, the winds rise. It's a building over here still. You move onwards through the long grass and suddenly you stop. You've seen a prone form lying in the grass up ahead. Look at the figure. The figure is a strange creature with long flat bladed arms. A little like the curious farmers you saw in the fields of Lower Carry. The figure is fast asleep, an empty wineskin by its side. Hmm. Is there a spell, maybe? I did get that skull cap. Maybe I can read his mind. Spin the constellations of the shape around you, putting on the skull, skull, cloth skull cap as you do so. Thoughts rise up from the sleeping figure. It's dreaming of scratching its nose. Keep listening. The dream intensifies. It's now cleaning the inside of its ear and gently stroking across the top of its head. Both actions are giving the creature ecstatic pleasure. You remove the skull, ca skull cap, feeling somewhat sullied, and the spell fades. <laughs> You dirty bastard. Uh, move around the figure. Okay, so to the north, you make out the shape of a stone spire rising above the stalks. The sun bakes the ground. I want to get to that. If I can. I want to see what this thing here is. Walk on through the field of wheat. The sun has reached its highest point now. Spire. You stride towards the tall, swaying stems. The spire stands in front of you, as high as an ancient tree, but impossibly thin. How can it stay upright? <laughs> Masterclass of uh, Irish engineering. <laughs> Dublin spire, here in Mampang. It makes sense, it's a fortress of evil. The place is an opening just large enough to enter. Look up at the spire. The spire is built from tiny stacked stones into a low-pointed tower. It's clearly old and somewhat poorly maintained. Yeah, it sounds about right. There's a low door at its space, though it hardly seems large enough for a person to enter. You venture inside the dim space within the narrow spire. Let's go. Weak light filters in from above, but the ceiling is shrouded from view. There is no floor, but the grass underfoot is pale and short. At the center of the room is a small shrine, a cut stump of wood on which stands a tiny clay idol. You search the space. Find nothing except a rotten ladder bolted to one wall, most of its rungs missing. Approach the shrine. A hefty tree stump it has been carried here, carefully cut and sanded. The idol on top is unpainted clay. Look at the idol. The idol is small enough that you need to squat to see it. It is roughly made, with pits and defects. It's human shaped, clutching a sword that points towards the ground. It lacks a face, and it's unnaturally cold to touch, as though it drank your warmth. I'm just gonna just pray to the fox to just actually heal up a bit. I can pray at the shrine. You kneel down to pray at the shrine. 
Your mind empties and you hear whispering from far below. The earth shifts slightly as the fox recalls from the presence in the narrow room. Words are coming unbidden to your mind. Okay, do we... Do we stop or do we keep going? It's Lorag again. Careless whisper. This can't be bad. Whisper the words. You murmur the words in your mind and they grow thicker and faster, turning from trickle to torrent. There are prayers for suffering, for safety, for rain and, s and dry sun and dry lands. There are, wor there are words for a ruined world and the worlds for a breaking bud. There are tumbling seasons and birds in flight and stars in the sky. The spire in which you stand seems to extend in height as though its tip touched the sky and its base lay at the center of the world. Spire's getting bigger. Keep praying. You murmur onwards, but despite the extent of the space your prayers have created, no voice enters it. No voice replies. This place is empty. Your words dry up, spent, as the earth shifts again. The spire is once more silent. Wordlessly, the fox moves away from you. In its place, there is nothing, only silence. But your max stamina increased. Oh god. Let's eat something here. Getting the hunk of cooked meat from your pack, you pack, you fill your empty stomach. Okay. I don't think I can scale the ladder. The fox is just gone. But we did get more stamina for that. I'm gonna leave. You leave the spire. You're in the middle part of the day and yet the citadel is still cold. Let's get out of this field. We worship the spire now. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. The grass waves and wafts around your feet. This could be a bucolic paradise. If it wasn't for the loom and ghoul of the inner tower to the east. The sun is beginning to lower, and the air begins to cool. Okay, you move onwards through the field of wheat. Stand in the shadow of the inner wall by a heavy metal door. The door is closed. Open the door. You try the door, expecting it to be locked, but it's merely stiff. Slip through the door. The door is open just wide enough for you to slip through. We're in, boys. We made it past the wall. Door closed behind you, you are inside the city. Time to explore. Looking around you, you are surprised to find that this part of Mampang is more like a city than you expected. There are merchants, laborers, and swaggering guards, washing hands from hooks outside the stacked houses. Of course, there are far more wicked glares and knives tucked into belts than even in Kari. The sun disappears, heading towards the horizon. Suddenly, you feel hooked fingers catch your arm. Turn around. You turn around and catch a glimpse of a hoary old beggar pulling at you, but then something happens and you lose sight of him. A moment later, the buildings of Mampang that you have traveled so far to reach have disappeared. Oh god, we're back in book two now. You stand in a humid climate. Tall plants lean around on all sides in a thin, watery sunlight. Leaks through some kind of glass ceiling, choked with weeds. Libra? There is no sign of the goddess. The beggar is still here, however, but no longer holding your arm. He stands taller and seems better fed. That's better, he declares. Now we can talk more freely. What have you done? Moved us elsewhere, the beggar replies. This is the favorite little plot of mine. A forgotten corner of Carrie. The Lost Gardens of Briar. Even the gardeners who work here can't remember the way in. It's on all the maps, but no one can find the entrance. My own little fortress. Bunny, thank you for the thousand bits. Thank you very much. Just thank you for a hundred bits earlier. Apparently the site master had a jewel of gold so you could cast God, live, and learn. Oh no. Well, we missed that then. That's okay. Okay. So... This place is hidden from the Archmage, you observe. Quite so, the old man replies. The Archmage would chew a death sponge mushroom and then eat my brains if he had the chance. Best for us all if that doesn't happen. The old man smiles. Come, let's walk a little, shall we? He begins to saunter between the trees and you follow. Who are you? My name is Throbin. The beggar bow bows most politely. You notice he wears a circlet of finger bones on his head. 
Some have called me necromancer, but they only mean that debt has never stopped my work. Uh-oh, you're dead. Sometimes, not entirely, though I rather think I soon will be. Well, he adds, spreading his hands, soon can be confusing, of course. Perhaps we should start from the beginning. I gotta get back. I must tell you, if you attempt your mission, you will die. I do not fear debt. You should in Manpang. <laughs> in Manpang, debt can be quite final. The reach of the gods is limited there. There's not always a way out, and you will die. Throbin points at a nearby flower. Do you see this one? Purple thornweed. Only grows in one place. The slopes above my home village. Where is that? I grew up in the same village as the Archmage, you know. A small place called Kariyama. Maybe you've heard of it. He sweeps away, his fa face hidden from view. This way now. He steps between two plants and disappears. We've been to Kariyama. You push your way between the plants and find the beggar waiting. Only now he is no beggar, but a tall, handsome man, wearing a long cloak embroidered with runes of power. There you are, he booms. I was told to expect you. Where's the old man? Safely in my future, he replies with a smile. Please excuse any confusion. I use these gardens for conversations quite extensively, but I have to space them out. One cannot have things overlapping. Now then, he smiles. I believe we are, we will, will be, talking about Manpang and your impending death. Not gonna die. You most certainly are, he replies. <laughs> Often, I shouldn't wonder. He points up. The dome is gone, and it's now nighttime. Stars shine overhead. I like these gardens for one reason above all. Can you see what it is? Kate, thank you for the 20 gift subs. Thank you very much. That's incredibly generous. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Thank you kindly. Constellations. Exactly, he sighs with evident pleasure. Look up there, he declares, pointing. This is one of only two places in Kare where the stars of the Zed spell can be seen. The other is by the North Gate, but that spot's rather too busy. What do you know of that spell? The mention of the Zed Zed makes your heart your, you stop short. The secret magic, the most powerful knowledge unknown to all. Zed, he intones, is the great discovery of the necromancers. A spell powered by and fascinated by debt. Some taught to prevent it debt, but it does not. Quite the opposite. The stars of Zed cause a debt of the most significant final kind. What kind of debt is that? The true debt. The absence. But the secret is too powerful to share openly. Please. He gestures at another path, leading between trees as wide as bears, that fallen together to form an arch. After you. Oh god. You slip under the arch and arrive in a field of bright yellow and purple flowers, terrifically overgrown. Brambles choke the edges of the path. The man does not follow. Move on. The beggar has abandoned you. Seems you must find the path back to Manpang yourself. Onwards. You push forward through the tower and flowers into an area of cracked blue paven and frond fronded shrubs and glass pots. To your relief, the beggar is here once more. He looks older than ever. Now you understand, he hisses. Now you see why you have to die. Don't understand you, man. Tell you all you need to know, he says. The Zed spell is difficult to cast, you see, because you can't cast it at once. You have to cast it at two separate times. Two times, but one casting, got it? Like left and right hands clasped together. He demonstrates linking thumbs and flapping his fingers like a butterfly. Begin now and finish later. No, he says, Winston, slightly as he speaks. I mean, when both castings are cast, they are the same casting. Two castings at different time cannot be at different times. So the time between disappears. He squashes his butterfly hands into a single two-handed fist. This is a spell for traveling in time. It's like saying a car is a machine for pushing the world backwards. The beggar spits a toot and picks it up to admire. Be valuable that one of these days. Give me your toot. Uncoot villainy curses, batting your hand away. Now we best be getting on. We don't want you coming back here when you finally die. When I die? Yes. Robin closes his dirt smudged eyes and concentrates, and slowly the walls of Manpang return. This, this can't be good. 
There you are again, smiles the beggar, who is now back as he began. He lifts a crooked finger. Not a word, there are spies everywhere. One last thing to do. Draw your sword. Mm -hmm. I hate... Don't... I will not. Now is not the time for gallantry. Imagine I was trying to claw your eyes out. Go for your sword. Okay, he wants to stage and act. Okay, draw your blade. Oh no. You obediently draw your blade, throw him in beams with glee, and then before you can stop him, he runs himself deep onto the blade. But it goes to the backlands, I curse you with this, he whispers. And there's fury in his eyes. In the last moments, you see him hurl up his arms, creating some kind of incantation. A terrible force builds around his body, but then seems to only half explode. You are caught at the moment of detonation. Explosion dies away, its force curiously and spent as though waiting, but you feel stronger for it. This is bad. You look around still disorientated, there is no sign of the beggar. The road runs past you east and west, you must keep going. That was the first casting. Yep, yeah, that, that was the first casting I think of it. We still can't rewind. We need to be very careful. If we die in the city now, I think he's something bad's gonna happen. Other than just death. I think it's gonna be worse than that. Okay, there's a bunch of things in here. A bunch of them here too. There's a lot to explore. Let's let's start going north. Continue along the road. The sun is almost set and the sky has turned into a deep purple. It'll be night soon. Pass a side street, leading off into a maze of smaller streets and alleys. Gotta explore. Walk down to a narrow street lined by low warehouses. You catch a scent of grain as you pass one. Night has fallen. You need to rest. Continue along the short alley. At the very least, still no one knows who we are. We have not been detected. Check the warehouse. Slip into a warehouse. Inside, plenty of empty space, some of it lined with straw. Interior is quiet and dark. Search the straw. In one corner you find a brass pendulum. What a stroke of luck. I can't even remember what spell that's for, but I'll take it. I can sleep here. Sleep here. Now when you pack down, you try to settle despite the hard floor. You do not need to eat more today. Close my eyes. Get comfortable and rest. You're protected here and your rest is untroubled by dreams. The Archmage runs and reigns unaware. Gate one provision, enter the Silo of Manpang, descend it into the Ag Argbard Crater, visit the barracks, search the wheat fields, and we're cursed with the Zed spell. That's bad. That bit is bad. So we need to undo the Zed spell now. You pick yourself up and brush away the straw from your cloak. Peek outside. Peek through the doorway. The street outside remains seems quiet. Head for the door once more. You return to the side street near the warehouses. As you turn, the sun breaks over the eastern wall. As you turn a slight corner, you spy three guards walking towards you. One dressed in the finery of a captain. Distracted by conversation, they have yet to spot you. Um, turn around. Turn, hunch in the shield your profile. While you've so far evaded most detection, the guards in the, this part of Manpang are wary of strangers. The conversation with the guards dies as you turn. Odd, one murmurs. Then, then raises his voice. You, stop there. Your neck prickles as you feel the guards' eyes upon you. You hear the, hit, you hear the hiss of a blade being drawn, and a distinctive crackle. Uh-oh. They haven't seen what I look like. I should run. Perhaps you have a few moments in which to escape. A warehouse door is just within reach. Do I do I go back in? I 
Back in the warehouse. You dash into an open, an open warehouse, guards fall in hot pursuit. The interior is full of haphazardly piled crates. You head into the gloom, weaving between the stacks. Hidden, you watch the three guards stop at the threshold, trying to catch sight of you. Still must be in here, one says. They begin to creep along, probing sacks of cloth with drawn blades. The captain stands at the entrance, feet planted wide. Her skin shimmers in the dim light. There is magic at work. This is bad. Wait a moment. You continue hiding, waiting for the moment to strike. The guards blunder through the warehouse, walking down corridors of crates. They penetrate deeper into the warehouse, leaving the captain alone at the threshold. You think I'll be able to take the captain? Head towards the exit or hunt the guards. We have to be very careful here. Mm. I'm gonna try hunt. While the way towards the exit is clear, you're not finishing. The, you are not finishing the dark. You head back into the maze of crates, creeping up on one of the noisy, isolated guy, guards. You turn a corner and spot one. It's back turned to you. Knock him out. You club the guard across the head and wrap your arm around his neck. He struggles, feet slipping as he kicks out. He soon sums down, unconscious but breathing. You lower him to the ground and slip away. As you near the exit, you hear his companion cry out in alarm. You pass crates until you're a short distance away from the captain in the doorway. Her skin is still shimmering in the light. Find anything, she shouts. He's dangerous, the remaining guard responds. Watch out. Lure her away. Grab a hunk of wood and toss it aside. Her head whips around at the crash, but she stays firm. Not going to fool me that easy, she snarls. Might as well come out and face me. The captain peers into the gloom and then smiles as she spots you. There you are, she murmurs. Cast a spell. She has some kind of barrier on her. She might have cast Foth on her. Do we have a counter spell for Foth? Counters. Counters zip, counters fix, counters hot, rock. Foul. How? Counters gum. No. We do not have that. This is bad. Okay, what, what spells have we got? Hang on a minute, lady. I gotta look at my spell book. <gasps> no, I thought it was gonna give me zip. Mm. Causes lively dancing. How do we get out? How do we get out? Turn to stone. Control non intelligent creatures. They are intelligent creatures, so that won't work. So there was a spell for making it dark, but I don't have it. Purr? Purr is not a spell. Rock is the only one I can see working. I don't- Zap won't- Zap won't help me. That they, they have some kind of shield. Try Jig, I don't- I don't have the flute. Oh. I don't know. I'm gonna try a zap. Alright. Cast a spell generating a charge of electrical energy with your palm, but the bolt simply vanishes upon touching the captain. She laughs at your attempts. Heft in her blade. It seems she's protected from magic somehow. The captain laughs at your spell casting. You think I'm not prepared. I'm a much stronger sorcerer than you. Shimmer around her is an effect you have seen before, not a force field, though. The captain watches you with something close to amusement.
Jake doesn't work, guys. You gotta stop suggesting it. We don't have the flu. <laughs> you need to have an, an object to actually use it. Purr doesn't do anything. It's not a spell. Um, rock is the only other thing that we c we potentially have. We don't have mud. No, you you can only you can only do spells that are listed here. Hmm. This is the only one I can do. Try it. Just charge her. Oh god. You charge the captain and she readies her blade, but magic will not protect her from steel. Let's go. We should have done this first. The captain strides towards you. The captain's smirk never wavers as she cuts through the air. You raise your own sword for a brutal attack and knock her to the floor. She bleeds on the stone. She keeps an eye out for her companions. Gentler hit. Captain steps back. Little, little, little strike. Thinks better of her own attack and defends instead. We're doing really good so far in the fight. And we did it. No stamina lost. You thrust your blade through her neck and she falls. The remaining guard arrives only to find you standing over the corpse of the captain. Without a word, he drops his weapon and flees. While he may be looking for reinforcements, you have time to catch your breath. That's bad, though. The Archmage might be aware of us now. Search the body. Blimberry potion that will come in handy. You also realize that uniform is not too badly damaged and about your size. Put it on. Unceremoniously, you strip the body. You gather up the captain's uniform and quickly put it on. You now pass as a captain. Uh, pick up the sword, too. Okay, we already explored the warehouse, so we can just leave now. Step out of the alley once more. The Archmage is very well aware of us now, because the guard lived. That's bad. That's real bad. I don't know what to do from here. I can't rewind anymore. You make your way along the quiet, debris-strewn alleyway. There's nothing here but silence and the faintest smell of death. The early morning sun makes the air glow. Look at the buildings. These are people without hope. Uh, the buildings here are clearly inhabited, used only by Manpang's lowest strata of society. These are people without hope. Suddenly, a door bursts open next to you. A woman sprints out of it and slams it closed. Leaning against it, she takes a series of heaving breaths. Look at her. Is dressed in a loose cloth skirt with a bandana tied to across her forehead. A notched cutlass hangs from her belt. She looks at you after catching her breath. Can I help you? She asks. Can I help you? Seems unlikely, she gasps. I just emerged from a small disagreement with some goblins. Nothing to worry about, really. The name is Rani, by the way. Disagreement. Goblins and I were just discussing certain irregularities in our finances. I see. She grins. Fine, I robbed them. I ran circles around the silly creatures and robbed them blind. She pushes herself up and away from the walls. Now before you have to report that to your superiors, Captain Sir, I'll be going. Be seeing you. With that, she dives away into a nearby alley and is gone. We might have been able to talk to her more if we weren't in disguise. Because she's dismissing us because she now she thinks we're a guard. That's interesting. I can return to the street. Oh, there's a lot going on right now. It's just rather unremarkable here. Let, let's go over to these warehouse things. Return to the main road. The road leads away towards a ruined portion of the citadel. A few clouds drift across the sky. The sky. There's something going on here. There, there, there is a lot. Just having a look at the map and just seeing what there is. Road ends in a tall wall of obsidian black bricks, tall enough to keep out a giant. But the wall has crumbled, brought it, brought down by the piercing gripweed vines that covered its length. 
We could scramble over the fallen stones and in inside easily enough. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. Go over the wall. Scramble up onto a block and peer over the wall. Beyond stretches an empty region of lapping water, from which tall, isolated, gloomy towers arise. Strange noises reach you from across the wall. Okay, scramble up and over the broken wall onto a narrow strand of stone on the edge of a watery pool. Towers rise on all sides, connected by spidery paths. As the sun climbs towards its peak, the winds pick up a little. Sand is scattered over the edge of the pool. We give me some sand. Scoop up a couple handfuls of usable sand. Path between the towers awaits. The path. We leave the shade of the wall and follow the stepping stones out across the water. Everywhere the sidings of ruins abound. Weeds crack the stones, turret roofs and buttresses have collapsed into heaps. Why is the Archmage allowed such ruin? Surely the rumors of his death cannot be untrue. What is this place? It looks like no part of Manpang you have yet encountered. The air itself is somehow distant. There is tension here. The air itself feels tightened, as though the world is stretched thin here. A taut drum skin pulled over too wide of a frame feels as though the tiniest step might unleash a powerful rupture. Look at the stars. You look up for the stars but can find nothing. The starlight seems to bend and divert before it can reach you, so it'll be funneled away. What is happening in this place? The path splits here, with the shortest way leading up to an arched doorway in a nearby tower. Look over at the nearby tower. It's a squat and ugly, with a low, slightly squalid archway leading inside. But you must keep moving. So, there is a tower here. Some of these towers, I believe, have bridges between them. So, like, this tower can lead into this tower. Uh, let's start exploring. These are all circles, too, so this is worrying. The middle of the day is unforgivably hot. You cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower without knowing what you might find. Once inside, you immediately break out and smile. This tower might be gloomy, but it's certainly a relief after the ruin inside. Look around. With a quick peek around the room, this way and that, it's curiously dark. Pay special attention to the corners, hoping to find something interesting. A colorful spider, maybe, or some nice juicy moss. You don't see anything, and after a while start to feel a bit let down. The atmosphere of this place seems genuinely good for you. What a charming place! Hmm. I don't like it. Oh no, you open your arms to cast a spell and end up falling over backwards and collapsing into giggles. Such a shame there's no one here to enjoy this place with you. It really is quite delightful. Leave. You head for the, you head for the door but get distracted by the, the way the, the view of the world outside moves left and right a little as you sway from side to side. You're soon standing on the spot and just swaying. Leave. Why would you leave? This empty chamber is fascinating. You turn around in the spot a few times to get the full view and fall over. Pre <laughs> I don't have a god at the moment. Leave. You have another try for the far door. Stepping out into the open, you feel a slight headache coming on, as though you drunk too much ale. We got out. We got out. Step back out, out onto the path and follow a short way. Path splits there. The wind picks up a little spray from the water and splashes in your face. It stings where it touches you. Look into the water. Black, reflectionless, as though infinitely deep. Just move on. The air seems to fizzle and crackle with secret energy. Which way now? Okay, you're at a crossing. You're, you're crossing the stepping stones over the dangerous waters once more. Near a junction, a low tower to the west is set into the wall of the citadel, and a tower blocks your way north. Your path seems weighted down with sadness and oppression. It's not a place to stand still. Uh, let's try this wall tower. I think we're gonna have to explore quite a few of these. Approach the tower built into the wall of the citadel. There's no door, at least not on this side. There's a sound like scratching. Listen. Do this more closely. The scratching is mixed with a gentle mewling. Cast a spell. You gotta use purr. <laughs> it's 
Okay. You move the starline to order around you. The meowing grows louder. Then a portion of the wall seems to tumble away to reveal a room in the motion beyond. You step through the opening. It's a room of cats. You find yourself in a room stuffed full of cat-like creatures. You're almost too distracted to see the wall seal up behind you. This chamber is small with a low ceiling and is laid with rugs, beds, and furs. Mews purring and hissing from all over. There must be a few dozen cats in here. Look at the outer wall. The wall through which you have entered has shimmered back into visibility, but you notice that the cats are able to pass in and out quite freely. If you accompany one, you might be able to make it through. A small stream gurgles in the corner, which the cats gently lap, careful not to dip so much as a toe in the water. Let's play with the cats! You spend some time with pl playing with the cats. It's a rather refreshing experience. Let's pet a cat! You bend down and scratch a playful tabby behind the ears. You watch one athletic looking tabby pounce on a mouse, which turns to smoke as it is caught. Let's pick up a cat. Cats clearly have an unhappy existence here, so you decide to liberate one. Pick a tabby cat. On contact, the beast transforms from a delicate tender friend into a frantic ball of claws and angry fur. Just suit it. You stoke it with strokes and kind words, and the evil little creature goes for your eyeballs. You drop it like a hot coal, and it dashes off into the pile. What's the point of this room? Is there a, like, there's clearly some kind of spell I'm supposed to cast here, but like... What is it? Talk with animals, yap! Okay. Uh, grabbing the wig from your pack, you pu pull it onto your head and weave your spell. A sleek black cat sidles up, rubbing against your legs. Hello, he says. My name is Cardamom. How long have you lived here? At least four lives. Four lives. You not have many lives. How did you get here? We've always been here, he says with a shrug. There's plenty of water and mice always come through. So we do not worry. What, what can you tell me about the seven serpents? What can you tell me of Mampang? Cat looks at you with blank eyes but says nothing. Cardamom flicks one ear. Well, to be honest, he remarks, you seem rather dull. Cardamom winds between your legs and wanders off. The spell, spell wears off as he goes. Cats of all shapes and sizes fill the room. They lounge, hunt, scamper, and play. They cast it again. Fancy a game of swindle stones. Can I just cast that again? Talk to a different cat. Cardamom looks up at you and yells, Leave me alone, he purrs. Don't you have anything better to do? Okay, what, what other spell am I missing here? There's gotta be some point to this tower. It can't just be the cat tower. How find safe passage? Cast purr again? I don't know if I can do purr. You have a sense that a few more cats are spilling out from the pile somewhere, but they may have been there anyway. The uniform is getting gently covered in fur. I think that's just cats. Try law. So, how spells works, because there always seems to be a few people who don't understand the system every time. Uh, you can only pick letters that are here, and you have to craft the spell that way. So some people are saying do law. There's no L. You can't cast law. Um, that's how it works. Just, just, just so people know that. Stop. What, what, what am I looking for? That's what I don't understand. Like, what, what, like, what is the top? It's top, apparently. Consulting the constellations overhead, you bind the spell and the blonde wig in your hands begins to shiver. A single hair detaches itself, starting to shine and glow before extending and bury itself into the ground. The top spell has been added to your spellbook. 
moment later, the ground beneath your feet has begun soaring upwards, taking you and the cats with it. Unfortunately, the ceiling does not move and is very much in your way. The last sound you hear is the pitiful wail of a hundred injured felines. Oh god! <laughs> you and several cats has been squashed. You feel the cold veil of death surrounding you. And a moment later, you find yourself moving. Oh no! Uh oh. Here we go, lads. You do not cast a spell, but rather it casts you, pulling you open, only to scatter you into the winds. Then you hit the ground in one piece on the road outside the door to the wheat fields. It is where you met the beggar, but he is nowhere to be seen. You've lost one point of maximum stamina. Move quickly away. Turn your cloak up and move quickly away. The last thing you need is to draw attention to yourself. The road runs past you, east to west. You must keep going. But we, we got a new spell, at least. Top. Requires a golden hair. When cast upon a strand of golden hair, this would get a tower of significant height and wide enough for the caster to stand upon. We did learn something, at least. Rewind? You cannot rewind. That's not how it works anymore. We don't get rewinds anymore. Restart the game. <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta make our way back across. Wait, do, do I have to pick up my inventory that I had before? Because I had a brass pendulum that I got from the warehouse. No, I get to keep that. Interesting. So I keep all my items that I had. Okay, we need to go back to the towers. Soon it'll be dark once more. Okay, now I just fall and you need to rest, especially on an empty stomach. Just keep moving for the time being. We'll find rest later. Collect up some more sand. Move on. Okay, so we're not going to the cat tower again. Let's try this other tower here, the north tower. The path across the water ends outside the next tower, and despite there being a door, you cannot go further. It is surrounded by a curious shimmering shield. Um, touch the shield. You run your hand over the smooth force field. It's definitely magical in nature. It has a subtle, it has a subtle give and deep strength of a force field bubble. But how is it so large? And how has it lasted so long? And who is casting it? Okay, what spell are we casting? Hmm. Sorry, I'ma watch the YouTube vid. I don't want spoilers, but this will be the YouTube vid. This is literally everything on YouTube. Is this? Um, let me see. Okay, so this one has a force field. He's talking about chat, is he? Oh, okay. I mean, you can just turn off the chat, sure, you know. Um, this one has a force field. I really do not know what spells I'm supposed to be looking for each time. Like, create quicksand? Find safe passage? And just zap it. Zap it did not work before. You can raz it. Use the counter for Foff. Do we have a counter for Foff? What is the counter for Foff? I, I, I don't know. Was it mud? People are saying mud. I mean, we got some sand. Try it. 
Okay. Yeah. No, that, that's actually right. You cast a spell scattering sand around the base of the tower, but no whirlpool forms. Rather, the force field begins to shimmer, and then steam and, and smoke, and finally it disappears. The tower is now open for you to explore. A counterspell, then. But the spell of the whirlpool is negated by that of the force field. It's going to be very difficult to remember. Okay, step inside. Is there nothing to stop you going inside the tower? What was it that was being so fiercely protected? Inside of the tower is Spartan. In the middle sits a table on which a piece of paper lies. A pile of yellow sand is scattered around the table's feet. Look at the paper. The paper is littered with scrawled notes, a few simple star geometries as any acolyte of magic might learn, and it begins of a technical discussion of counter magic. And you're reading. The paper continues with sketchy detail, though an interesting conclusion. Counter magic is a fact of the universe, thoroughly proven. There is no magic, no matter how strong, which cannot be countermanded if correctly identified. Even the great artifact itself, once thoroughly understood, can be overcome. Time to move on. Let's go. Which tower are we feeling? I feel like this. Yeah, there's a, there's a way around here back to this one, so we'll go we'll go east tower. Cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower without knowing what you might find. The feeling of safety descends on you like a cloak, as though you've been standing in a storm and now walked into its eye. The space feels protected, simple, and calm. Look around. You look around the empty space but find nothing, until in one corner you discover a small etching on the floor. It reads simply, Can't see me here. You open your arms to cast a spell but find nothing, so you stand below an empty spot in the heavens, if such a thing is even possible. At any rate, you are quite without magic here. Okay, well let's, let's sleep here. Then you pack down your ground and you try to sell despite the cold. You've eaten nothing today. Eat something. You eat the last hawk egg, feeling much better for it, and you get comfortable and rest. You're protected here and your rest is untroubled by dreams. Wait! Oh my god, because we... We killed the captain, we took the disguise, but we rewind it. Which means the Archmage now does not know about us. Because yeah, that didn't happen. That guard has never chased us. And we murdered the cats too, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing stopping you from moving on in any direction, but as soon as you step outside, you feel the clouds of Manpan gathering overhead once more. The path to the south, but it's crumbled into ruin a short, walk a short way along. The walkway leads off to the east. Let's go to the walkway. You make your way across the stone walkway, arching high into the air above the swirling waters that pool below, until you reach the next curious tower. The sun breaks over the horizon. This tower contains a single bare room. There is no furniture, but a rancid stench fills your nostrils. Search the room. You search around, checking for traps and switches. The stench in the room is making your eyes spin. And you take one step towards the center of the room, and then the floor disappears. Fallen. Your, your arms flail as you tumble down. You hit a stone floor, bruising your side somewhat. Above, the light of the room filters down, showing sheer high walls. You've fallen into a pit. What's more, the smell is even worse down here. Look around. Looking around, you see you're in a wide pit, with walls reaching far above your head. The pit is dark, with the edges in shadow. The smell is so powerful, it's hard to concentrate. Tears are welling up in your eyes. There's a small bundle near the center of the pit. But when you consider it too closely, something moves. Something where in the shadows. We have to see what's in that bundle. It's probably going to be something to get out of the tower. Investigate the bundle. You walk towards the bundle, weak from the spell. You squat for it, only to freeze. A growl comes from the shadows and a large beast emerges. Skunk bear. The beast rears its thick striped tail, quivering and razor claws displayed. Draw my sword, don't laugh at it. You level your blade at the creature. The monster roars and two more walk into view. The proximity of the beast causes the smell to worsen. Your head swims and limbs droop. Okay, the spell is Nif. What is the counter for... There is a counter for Nif. Definitely Nif.
Cast a spell. Huff, maybe. Yeah. Will it give me Huff as an option? It will. Huff. The Niff Huff pack count as well as when I record it in your spell book. Okay, nicely done. Look into the stars, you craft the magic, placing your lips to the horn. No wind appears, but the smell lifts. The skunk bears are a tad disorientated, buying you more time. A counter spell then, so the magic of wind counters the pattern of smell. With what little time you have, you scan the dark walls closely. There's a ladder, black metal rungs fixed into one wall, and it's hidden in shadow. Escape. How many skunk bears out there now? Do we need this bundle? Is the only thing. Yes, yes we do. Okay, grab the bundle. You scoop up the bundle, narrowly avoiding a vicious swipe. Now we need to get out. Don't look through the bundle yet. Do we climb the ladder or do we cast a spell to get out? Mm. Cast a spell. I can, I can cast Zen. If Zen works, it might be more reliable than the ladder. Zen. Hover in the air. You move into the starlight to order around you and the medallion begins to glow as you rise gently up into the air. You float up and out of the pit, landing safely on the edge. The skunk bears roar with primal fury. Your weight returns and you settle gradually back down to the ground. You can look down to the pit or hurl yourself back in. <laughs> Let's go. Round two. Open the bundle from the pit. Inside is a strange collection of objects as though some curious religious traveler had died down here. A white wax candle and a scrap of paper. Read the paper. You cast your eyes over the scrawled poem. The first is a fire, the second of stone, the third is unseeable, the fourth is unknown. The third is unseeable. The Throbin door scrap we found before said that the third was invisibility. The third door is invisibility. Second is stone, that's rock. First is fire. Is it hot? Am I le We're learning counter spells to counter this, I think. Hot rock and invisibility. What's the spell for invisibility? It, it, there is one that you can cast with the pearl ring. We have to learn these counter spells. Yaz. Okay, so it's hot rock and yaz. The fort is unknown. We don't know the fort, but we know three of the spells now. That's pretty good. Okay, edge around the pit. There's enough space around the edge of the pit to car move carefully around. Okay, we're, do we're doing pretty good so far. Stand outside another tower, pat snaking this way and that around you. The wind picks up a little spray from the water and splashes into your face. It stings where it touches you. It keeps giving us the option to look into the water and throw a stone in the water. I'm going to throw one in. Drop one of your pebbles in the water. It sinks without a trace and without a ripple. The air seems to fizz and crackle with secret energy, but you must keep moving. Okay, so we haven't we we have to keep track of the towers we've done too. Um this way seems to have two towers that are just ends in like a dead end there. If there's maybe a little path there. We could go into this tower first and just, like, yeah, well, let, let's clear this tower off. Pat winds between crumbling towers and dagger-like buttresses. The air stirs a little cold but fresh. Tower. Step into the tower and sense the presence of magic immediately. A moment later, you begin to feel giddy. Something is happening. Look around. You look around the room. Aside from two doors, one opposite the one you came by in, the room is empty. The fire door is getting smaller by the minute. And the ceiling is bearing down your head. The whole room is tightening up like a net. Retreat. You turn for the door, but you're already too late. The door is now too small to crawl through. The room is still shrinking, and it seems to be no escape. Shrinking stops just in time for you to still fit. There's no way you'll be able to escape through the doors. Okay. What's the counter to big? That's what it is, yeah? 
Try to ca throw your arms wide to cast a spell, but the room has shrunk far enough that there isn't enough space to catch the starlight. This is the end. Caught inside a tower like a wasp in a jar. Look around. Turn your head left and right best you can, looking for something to aid you, but you can find nothing. Wait. You wait, hoping the effect of whatever spell has trapped you will fade, but it does not. Draw my sword? That was a bad tower. <laughs> Wait, you raise the blade to run yourself through, but the hand bashes into the wall of the tower. You don't have enough space to get the blade to your neck or chest. You have to drive up the blade up through your groin, or else you could drink poison. <laughs> oh god. I don't have poison, drink poison. Oh no, I do have poison. <laughs> Wait, nothing happens. The poison barely has any flavor. It's always been diluted to weakness. Whatever the reason, you're still stuck here. Stab myself in the groin. As you pull your arm back, you manage to put your hand through one of the walls. The tiny br bricks feel soft as butter. Oh god, we're not dead. What's going on? It's an illusion. It's an illusion. Push the wall. You push at the wall, it gives bending outwards a little. The stones seem feeble. Punch through the south wall. Uh, you ball your fist and swing back your arm and punch hard at the south wall. After three, four hits, you have knocked a fist-sized chunk out of the doorway. Keep punching. You keep punching and the doorway grows bigger and bigger. These miniaturized bricks really do seem to be weak. A few more blows later, you are true the wall. But looking out, you see the pat and the other towers have also shrunk. Or else you have gotten bigger. Let's leave the room. When you slip outside, you feel the magic on you fading as you leave the tower. Either the world expands once more, or more likely, you shrink to your normal size. Did I- wait. But- In that illusion, right? I still drank poison. I st did I have poison? Because that- that's still very real. <laughs> I might drop dead soon, I don't know. Step back on the path and follow it up a short way. A few clouds drift by across the sky. You stop just by the ruined entrance of the tower to the east. Okay, the ruined door of the tower shows an empty chamber within. You're too big for it to take effect. The potion was diluted. Okay, thank God for that. Okay, let's check this south tower. As the morning moves on, the wind begins to rise. You enter the next tower nervously. The room you find is filled of statues frozen in various poses. An icy hush fills the air. This is a gallery of some sort. These are petrified people. This is rock. This is rock. Slip between the statues. You step further into the room. There is no furniture, and from the dust, it seems no one has been here in a long while. The statues make that... The room hard to navigate. They clutter and clutter the floor. I already have this counter spell, don't I? What was the counter spell for rock? Was it foul? You weave the enchantment, but your weight does not change. Instead, stone begins to flake off the skin of the statues. Let's watch. You watch in amazement. It's though a strong wind is blown through the chamber and shearing the stone to shreds. As more and more flecks of rock fall, something green and fetid pink is revealed beneath the stone. Oh. We might be making an army come to life right now. Look away. You turn away, and suddenly the rotten smell is enough to tell you all you need to know of what lies inside the statue stone holes. A rock spell, then. Successfully countered by your enchantment. Corpses! Oh, thank God. Stand in a room of the posed dead. In a tomb for so long, they stay posed. The gallery of stone becomes a gallery of grey flesh. Thank God they're not alive. Let's look at them. Dead men bend to scoop up unseen children. Blank-eyed women stare at each other across the room. One is her mouth open mid-speech. 
One corpse still blocks the door. Let's search the corpses. You search the corpses, nearly gagging from the smell and softness of their flesh. You find nothing of note. Perhaps they were stripped of their valuables before they were turned to stone. Perhaps they had nothing to begin with. Who knows how they were lured to this place. Shift the corpse. At the shell of stone, the corpse is easy to move. It's an unwelcome task, but you swallow your disgust. The way forward is now clear. Corpses stare at your back as you leave. Okay. We've cleared a good few towers now. We're doing good. We've made it true. We haven't done that one yet. We didn't find a way to solve it, but we've done, like, this little sweep. Let's make our way back here. Okay, so this one is the big tower still. I still don't know how to counter big. Uh, hmm. Small. Yeah, there's no spell for smallness. You gotta move on. I don't know how to counter big yet. People are saying Yob. I don't have a giant's tooth. Like, I, 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 simp I simply do not have that, so I don't think I can do that. Uh, we can go into this one. Try this one next. Let us reach its highest point, the North Tower. You approach the next weird tower. Uh, wondering what you will find this time. This tower seems quiet and empty. The only curious feature is a crack that splits the floor in half. It lies between you and the door on the other side. Look at the crack. The crack is perfectly straight and is more like a cut than a crack. As though someone had split the tower in two across its middle. And slid the two halves apart. Throw a coin across the room. Pull a coin from your pack and toss it experimentally across the chamber. It travels halfway, as far as the crack no less, and then bounces off something you cannot see. Is it a wall? It's a barrier. What do we got? An invisible wall. People saying you sus. Sus is not an option right now. How is an option? Do I try walk across it first? Hmm. It do doesn't seem to be dangerous, at least. Yeah, I already know how it's counter. Cross the tower. You stride across the empty tower until you reach the edge of the crack. You pause before stepping across. Okay, maybe I can cast something different here. Some people are saying try pop. Create an explosion. Um... I don't- that doesn't seem like it should make sense, is the thing. Gob, we don't have the goblin anymore. Huff, we already have Huff's counter. A stone breaks glass. What an explosion with a stone. Try it. Okay, nope, you guys were right, yeah. Stone breaks glass. It's only the constellations overhead, you bind the spell, but as the pe pebble begins to glow, something quite strange happens. The pebble disintegrates, and the crack in the tower disappears. The tower suddenly looks quite whole. A counter spell, then. So the spell of the barrier is countered by that of an explosion. The wall pop counter spell has been recorded in your spell book. Look for the crack. You look across the floor for any trace of the crack, but it's disappeared entirely, leaving nothing behind. If you're going to cross, you should do so quickly. You could turn back or across to the far door. Go to the far door. See the crack shimmer back into place as you leave. Hurry over another walkway, higher in the air than you could have expected, towards the next tower. The sun has begun to lower and the air begins to cool. It says that a lot. <laughs> uh, Bastion, thanks for 100 bits. I owned this from long ago. All the towers like the most interesting part of the games. Nice. They enter the tower. Five other figures step in 
from identical looking doors placed evenly around the walls. Uh, look at them. You watch the newcomers from the safety of the doorway, and mostly they do the same. But one rushes quickly across the room, and another lifts his hands and calls out a greeting. There is a spell called Six. And if you include me, that's six people. Return the greeting. Return the greeting of the stranger who spoke. One of the other rushes away through a fire door. Two others cross into the middle of the room. Anyone fancy a game of swindle stones? Yeah, so this is this is six. Can I cast six itself? No. I can cast sun. I'm gonna replica creature, but I don't have that artifact. I don't think it works. Uh, zip. <laughs> Causes teleportation. Maybe? Let's try. You bind the stars into a pattern around you and the ring of green metal on your finger begins to glow and glitter. You're suddenly torn through the very air. A moment later, you reappear. Just outside the tower. You race over to the next tower before the wind can pluck you from the walkway. The sun begins to dip, heading towards the horizon. This chamber is empty save for a few crates stacked against one wall. Thick dust covers the floor, with no footprints visible. A storeroom. You step into the room, uh, kicking up a small cloud of dust as you walk. The air inside is shimmering, and suddenly you are blinded by a dazzling glare. Shield my eyes. Shield your eyes, fear an attack, but instead a calm voice declares. Do not fear me. You have nothing to fear. You are welcome. The voice is Lilton, beautiful, calm, familiar. My friend, the voice continues. Surely you know me. And then you know her voice and you fall to your knees. It's Libra. Yes, I am Libra, she replies. I have come again to help you, but at great risk. We must speak quickly and then you must go. This could be a trap. Because Libra did say, before we enter the tower. One of the spells, I think, is God. And it's God is an illusion of worship. Where is it? God. Any creatures or humans nearby will take an immediate liking to the caster and will offer aid and information. This illusion spell can only be performed if the caster is wearing a jewel of gold. Okay, so she's casting God. Cast a spell. I don't have the jewel, that's okay, because I I might be able to cast the other spell. I don't need to cast God itself. I need to cast something that, that undoes God. If it lets me do sus, I don't think we have- we don't have a counter spell for this one, and, like, suspect. Maybe? Craft the spell and a quiet voice begins to speak to you. The back of your neck prickles even before the spell is complete and the voice all but hisses in your mind. Do not trust her. The message in tone, the magic gives out. Okay, well it wasn't sus. can cause depression. But I don't see the logic and because there's always been a bit of logic to each one that like remotely makes sense. Other people are saying try nap. Can I do nap? Cause of sleepiness requires a brass pendulum. I mean we do have it. Okay. Yep. Reaching up to the stairs, you create the magic, bringing out the pendulum. As you swing it, the atmosphere of the room warps. 
There's no effect on Libra at first, and the light is blurred away until it's gone. Counterspell then, so the enchantment of sleep matches the spell of worship. There's no logic sometimes. Yeah, because everyone's just looking them up. Ah, no, guys, actually, yeah, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even suspect you of it. Don't just look them up. That's un that No, don't do that. I don't like that at all. I'm not gonna listen to chat again now. Cause yeah, there was kind of like a logic before, but people were just saying, like, I thought I'd just try that because I've never used that spell, I've never had a pendulum. No cheating, Lance. Looking it up defeats the point, exactly. We gotta, we gotta work it out. The light vanishes, revealing a goblin standing in the middle of the room. He's wearing a lar long blonde wig. He raises his hands. This is not what it looks like. <laughs> I can see that now. The goblin gulps but says nothing. Draw my sword. Alright, alright, let's not be hasty. I ran away from the other tower. The goblin holds the wig up helplessly. Don't ask me where I got this from. Threaten the goblin. You threaten to skewer the goblin, he shrinks away. But the spell around him is quite powerless. Please don't hurt me, he says. I know nothing. He cowers, expecting the worst. I kind of want his wig. And if I kill him, I can get his teeth. <laughs> <sighs> Your blade is swift and merciless, running the goblin through the gut. The goblin collapses to the ground, blood leaking from his stomach and wit askew. I search the room. Oh no, I already have a blonde wig. Can I not take his teeth? You search the room but find nothing. It's truly empty. The goblin's pockets are equally empty and you do not need another blonde wig. But why? Well, you leave the pitiful creature behind without another word. Okay. Uh, we can go straight into this tower here. Or we can try and make a pit stop at this tower. Uh, I think we're going to have a bit of safe passage here. To go back into this tower and here. Because this tower is now just completely empty. We don't have to worry about the goblins. So let's go southwest. The path, of the, the path passes the base of another tower. Uh, set in the side of a central mountain peak itself. Even the peak of Mampang is dwarfed by the endless mountains of Upper Zaman. Stretching away northwards like a turbulent grey ocean. Okay, let's make a move. Tower. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Okay, the interior of this tower is quite empty, except for a brass sphere in the center. Capped with black cloth. It's a brass sphere. We did just have a brass pendulum. Look at the sphere. The sphere rotates slowly, smoothly on some invisible gimbal. Perhaps it's slightly floating. Look at the cloth. The black cloth is draped over the top of the gently rotating sphere. There is nothing remarkable about it. I can remove the cloth from the sphere. You whip the black cloth away from the brass sphere. Nothing happens except you uncover a dull grey-white circle set into the sphere. It is as though the bo whole ball encases whatever this thing is. Okay, the only thing I can think of that this is, is far. Because far is one that, like, it's like a sphere of crystal. This is a brass sphere. Sense danger, there's probably some danger. You wind the constellations into alignment around you. A steady voice enters your mind. There is magic at work here, declares the voice. Though it is not the one you can feel happening, and not one that will do you harm. Its words deliver the voice fades. Okay. So this one won't hurt us. Look at the white sphere. Look at the over the white circle. There is definitely something buried inside the sphere. Something that feels like dry wood or too warm stone. Takes a moment to place. It is bone. Hmm. Knock the sphere. And it bobs, you knock the sphere gently and it bobs away from its socket and back again, continuing the turn. Open the sphere? 
Hunt across the surface of the sphere for some kind of catch but find nothing. Whatever is inside seems to have been molded into place. There's something bone inside it. It's a sphere. Zob. <laughs> Try to bind an enchantment, but you're missing an item that it needs, and so the spell dissipates around you. Zob is a spell? Zob is not. A, but that says unknown. Okay. Can't do Zob yet, but apparently that's something we're supposed to try. You can see the future. Far. Sell into a sitting position on the ground, take out the orb of crystal. You cast the enchantment, and suddenly you find yourself somewhere quite new. You are standing outside a large doorway, though it is an em empty of a door. You reach into your pack and take out a black skull cap. The vision fades. So if I find a large door with no door, we use the skull cap to make the door. It's good to know. Yob, summon a giant. Yap, talk with animals. Try it, it doesn't take any stamina. No, no effect. I have no idea what this one is. Sus. No, we did sus already. Sob again. Well, you were cast and fails. Sob is a real spell too. Interesting. We don't have the item for that either. Resurrect the dead. Sharpen my blade. It makes you cry. I I have I have no idea. I can cast Zap. But I don't think Zap's gonna do anything. There's nothing here that seems to make logic or like it's stuff that I can't do. Yaz. Rise because it's a bone? I don't know. It's all holy water. I had to down it earlier. It's like. Work anyway. Fun with the spell, but it does not seem to work. You're missing a vital item. Yeah. Uh, I can't do anything there. I have to just leave that. As you turn to go, a voice and tones in your head. Three. Who's there? Rush is met by nothing but silence. What? <laughs> What does that mean? It's a countdown. Counter to invisibility. I don't have a counter to invisibility, I think. Oh! No, you mean this one's the counter to invisibility, because it says three. Maybe it's associated with the third door. Maybe? That's a bit of a stretch. Maybe that's some way of reminding you that you need to get this one. We need to figure out what that one is then. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to try and come back to it. Sun lowers towards the horizon. 
dark soon, look around. So the tower itself is a simple clear space, there is something disorientating about it. Perhaps it's because there are so many doors, between 20 and 30 at a rough guess. Worryingly, in the middle of the floor lies a skeleton. The skeleton, you look over the skeleton, it seems perfectly intact, curled up as though asleep. There are no signs of injury, no shattered bones or twisted limbs. Fragments of cloth remain here and there. Look more closely at the fragments, you can see they are not the robes of a sorcerer or a merchant, but the rags of a peasant. Some kind local of Mampang, perhaps. Under one flap of cloth, you find a simple bronze ring. That's fallen from a finger joint. Take the bronze ring. It is of no use for magic, it will not be worth anything, yet it may be useful somewhere. Hey, look at the doors. You turn your attention to the doors set at regular spaces around a space. There are about 60 or 70 of them. You can no longer tell which door is the one you came in from. Uh oh. The room of doors, how should help us find safe passage? Okay, uh, look in the constellation above, you craft a spell and the calm voice begins to speak to you. There are many more doors here than there appear. The voice informs you quietly. In fact, all the doors are here. I will lead you to an exit. With that, the room begins to move into an alignment you can understand. The effect is quite giddy. There's still something else here. Though, surely, because if I just leave the chamber... With the aid of the spell, you feel fairly confident which door is which. Time to put it to the test. I want to go back into that. There's something else in there. Yeah, I want to go back into it. We, we know that we can use how to get out of it, so I'm not too worried. Okay. Open a random door. You go over to a door at random and pull it open, but the towers and courtyards have vanished. You find yourself looking out across a deep, dro deep drop, the winds tugging at your cloak. Far below, birds circle at the base of a crevasse, and what looks like a lynch bug is at work, building a nest of spit and stone. Step quickly back and immediately lose track of which door that one was. Open another door. Pick another door and pull it open. You find yourself on the path through the northern passage of Annaland. The sight masters are gathered around, discussing something in hushed, low voices. But the sight masters. The group are arguing over how, what they should do to defend the wall. It seems they have no superior officer, and no one is in charge. I cannot help noticing how empty the settlement is, as though everyone has retreated. This is no illusion and trick. You are looking out through the door of the hut of the chief mage, in the northern passage of Annaland. I don't want to approach them. Going through the door is dangerous right now. I would say. Maybe it's magic of teleportation. Close the door once more. This is this truly a door to Annaland. You cannot afford to step through it. You move back before you lose the way to return. The door is lost amongst the others. You pick another door and pull it open. You find yourself in an empty low hut. Forest noises drift in from outside. A girl's voice sings it to itself somewhere nearby. Uh, listen. The tune of the song is wistful and lilting. The words are, When will I see you again? When will you next take my hand? We drifted apart, but you're still in my heart, my hero of Annaland. Look around. You remember this hut, of course. A quiet, dark place on the edge of the forest of Snada, where you spent a night and made a friend. This is a lazy uh, hut in the third book. It seems more strongly built than you last saw it. Its owner has shored up the walls, fixed the roof, and fitted holes for hooks for pots and pans to the walls. Step outside. Step forward, making for the fire door. But as you move, you realize the doorway you are leaving is in truth not more than an internal door frame, leading to another room of the hut. With a clear sense that if you step even a fraction further, your link to Manpang will be lost. We have to step back. You pause just a moment more in the hope the girl will reappear, but she does not. 
You lean away before you lose the way to return. Before the door can fall shut, it explodes open again and the girl rushes through. There you are, she cries. I knew you'd come back. I knew it. She grins so widely that her eyes half close and her legs disappear from view. Lizzie? She races across the floor and wraps herself around you. Can't help noticing that, for reasons best known to... But best known to the backlands, she's a few years older than when you saw her last. I knew you'd see I'd see you again, she says. We hadn't finished business. Where are we anyway? She steps back and looks down at the skeleton. Who's that? This is Mampang. She shrugs, never heard of it. The fortress of sorceress. Oh, she looks sober for a moment. I thought the fortress was abandoned. Though this place looks quite abandoned to me, I suppose. Um is she just here now? We find a way out of here. Sounds like a good idea. She throws open a door. Oh, it's a house, she remarks, before stepping through. It's full of flowers. A moment later, the door swings shut. Follow her. Oh, no. You must have remembered incorrectly as you find yourself in the bottom of a deep, rocky cavern. The chamber rides with hissing, snapping snakes. They feast on the corpse of some creature. Shaggy fur covers the floor in tufts, and a scorpion sting is discarded to one side. Okay, step back from that door. We lose track. We're losing track. Keep opening the doors. Find yourself in the dark crypt. A creature of white light drifts around in small circles, as though moving on the extent of its chain. Step back. You step away before you lose sight. No return. Open another door. Wait, where are we? We're at the base of the tower again. Wait, what? How did we? We moved up here. Let me just read over that again. You pick another door and pull it open. You find yourself stepping out an iron from an iron door, which slams shut behind you. It takes a moment to realize where you are at the base of the inner tower. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't want to be here. We haven't learned all the counter spells. We haven't learnt them all. Darkness closes in. You should find a suitable spot to sleep, especially on an empty stomach. This is the east side of a wide courtyard that sits below the central tower of Mampang. Guards mill this way and that. A short distance away, a wide set of steps lead up to, t to tower doors. An iron door leads south of the courtyard, and a door leads away into a nearby turret. No, 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 no. <laughs> You crane your neck to look up at the inner tower. The very top is hidden from sight by the lower floors, which jut out and seem older and in worse repair. Despite the impressive doors at the top of the steps, no one goes in or out. The place seems as closed off and remote as an island. The door is marked with a small brass plaque. This is the office of the commander of the guard. It appears to be locked up for the night. Look about the steps. Looking at the steps from here, they seem wide enough to ride an oliphant up to the Archmage's doorstep. Don't sleep here. I can open the iron door. Open the iron door. You open the iron door, two birdmen stand on the other side, facing away from you, blocking the way. You can most likely march straight past. And make a move. Steps to the inner tower right in front of you. There is nothing stopping you climbing them and making your way inside. <laughs> we haven't learnt all the counter spells. Like, if we just waltz on up, we're gonna be in trouble. We're still disguised. It's too soon. Yeah, we haven't even seen all these other towers. Presumably, like, like there's other counter spells. Rewind. We cannot rewind. It doesn't work. Leroy Jenkins it, but we don't know the spells. 
We've no idea. Yeah, okay, go go back down. Wait. I want to go back to that room with the doors. Can I march back down? Can you go back? I don't know. Slip out of the iron door and pass the birdman who raise a quick salute. The other side of the doorway is a narrow alley. Listen at the narrow door. Lean over to press your ear against the narrow door. You hear high-pitched murmurs through the old wood. Peek inside. See a low table scattered with fetters. This is where the birdmen are. I don't think I want to go in their quarters. Stand away. See that one of the birdmen with the iron door is watching you intently. He looks ready to question you. Let's move on. Let's let's get going. There's the low room here. These all seem to have some kind of interior. Or we could just quickly slip out. I'm gonna quickly slip out. Pause by the squat door, the moon sets, more stars appear. Look at the door. Where's my chest height and it's hanging open? Small bell with a pull string is set above it. Ring the bell. Some scuffing sounds from within. Wait. After a few seconds, the door opens a fraction more. Well, come in then. You can't see who is speaking, but they have a very squeaky voice. Duck into enter, you discover that everything in this room is tiny. Chairs at knee height, a three foot long bed, and seal them to match. Precarious is sitting in one of the chairs is either a very small ogre or a hairless, ugly dwarf. Read it. Greetings, you declare. The creature blinks twice and turns its head, finally noticing you. Well, it demands, come to laugh. The guards are all the same. Look at the creature. This is some kind of mutant, but a fairly unremarkable one. Its main appearance is one of stockiness and grumpiness. You still haven't found the librarian, too. Yeah, we, 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 I don't know where the college is. Oh, uh, uh, like, what, what that has to do with. I think it was a college they mentioned. What are you? Nibdum, Nibdum replies. I'm here because the Archmage finds my condition amusing. Library, that's it, sorry. Uh, why does he find your condition? I'm a mutant, a failed experiment. Created by the Archmage. It scowls. The Archmage was trying to cross ogres and dwarfs. He wanted something strong and loyal as an ogre, but small enough to fit into the mines. What happened? Look at me, the creature answers with disgust. Can't you see what happened? The passage outside ends in a door. Just walk through, Nibdum replies. You're a guard, aren't you? You know the Archmage. Harley, he's the one who forced me to live in this pint-sized room, though he rarely visits. I haven't seen him. It runs round in his court cut short. What? No, not recently. He's been holed up in that tower of his. He's plotting something. In the central tower. That's right, up the steps and through the throbing doors into the sorcerer's spike. Good luck if you go that way. Thanks for the chat, Nibdum says. I don't get to talk to many people these days. He stays in his chair, smiling ever so slightly. Oh, thanks, Nibdum. So throbing doors are up there. Do well to find somewhere safe to rest. Turn along the narrow alleyway. The door? The door is unmarked and appears unlocked. The wood is warped and rain sodden. Night air is cool and good for walking. There's a room here, too. The door opens easily and you step inside. The stone walls form a cool, quiet space. Look around. This was clearly someone's quarters once, but they have long since cleared out, leaving nothing behind but a dent in the straw that lines the wall. Look in the straw. Go through the straw a little, then pull your hand back sharply as something bites you. You look down at your fingers and see two large red welts growing on your forearm. If that is a rat bite and so be it, but if it's a spider, it could be quite serious. Stab that straw. You stab the straw a few times, and after a moment, a yellow striped snake slithers out and darts away across the stones and under the door. Time to move on. Okay. Just a snake. Turn to the alley, the bite in your hand itches furiously, but then the welts begin to fade once more. Looking ahead, you see doors leading off on either side of the alley. You better sleep when you can next find somewhere safe. Turret at room might be safe. 
Should I just sleep there? It might let me. Oh, but having been bitten here once, you have no desire to sleep here. Time to move on. Okay. I think it would be safe now. Archmage remains unaware. Found two new clues. Getting very tired. I would pray for aid, but I don't have any. The alleyway turn runs to the right, but on the left is a low iron doorway. Door, the door down to the city is locked. Try a key in the city door. Try your key in the turn. Your, your keys in turn, but nothing fits the lock. Your way has a tiny at, grill at eye level from which floats a rich smell of what might be burnt meat. Look right. The alleyway is narrow and disappears out of sight between the outer and inner walls of the fortress. You can approach the door and make your way down the alley, but there is no way back over the palisade. Um. So I I can't get back down. Somewhere beyond the walls, the sun breaks over the eastern wall. You stand by a solid metal door set in the stone wall. You don't fancy your chances of breaking it down. Door. Door is dent and scratched as though people have tried to break it down before. All the dents point outwards into the alley, so it was inside I tried to escape. Fortunately, perhaps, the door is firmly locked. There is a tiny grill at eye level. Hmm. Can I knock? Knock on the door which bangs loudly. What? Comes a muffled response to the tiny iron grill. Who is this? Let me in. I'm from the guard. From the guard. Oh, finally! I hope you have someone new for me. It's been rather boring lately. Remember to stay on the left. You hear the grind of machinery and a click as the door swings forward on its own accord. Short wide corridor is in front of you. There is no sign of any guard. Who's there? There's no reply. Whoever you were talking to seems to have vanished. Walk forward. You make your way cautiously forward. The middle of the room seems very exposed, but the walls might be set with any number of hidden traps. I don't like how it's asking what wall I want to walk. He said left. Oh, who was it that said to go to the left? There was someone. He just told you. Oh yeah, no he did. Sorry. I, I was thinking the serpents. Sorry. I, th I was mixing up something else I thought we saw. No, the serpents were like... I think that was something else. <laughs> Who just said that? Who was that character? Keep to the left. As you walk down the corridor, you hug the left wall as you were told to, told to. Halfway down, a huge flail swings down from a hidden chain. Fill in the rest of the corridor. You hear a resounding laugh, echoing from a chamber through a low arch at the far end. The chamber. You duck through an archway and nearly gag from the stench. Dried blood paints the walls, floor, the walls and floor, and scattered around the room are grisly instruments of torture. Standing in the middle of the room is a bowed, ugly ogre with a huge grin and a dozen scars. He wears a ragged black hood and carries a whip. Oh god. Enjoy my surprise? He asks, voice lisping. No. Ha! He beams with evident satisfaction. Gush. This is a nice and dandy place you have here. The ogre beams a tooty grin. Shanks. The ogre jabs a friendly finger at you. Wash you on, any wash. Hmm. What? Hmm. I'm here to release your prisoners. He's not gonna like that. I'm just looking around. At wash, he snaps. At the great torturous chamber. Where are your prisoners? I'm actually lost. At the great torturous chamber. Well, you've seen it. now you've seen it. Don't step out of ranks or you'll be back. Sh Starts to bustle you towards the door. Wait, tell me about the throbin doors. 
Uh, Cherish traps which spells, Agamemnon replies. Can't be oshpend wish out killing you. Can't be opened without killing you the trap with spells. Let's translate this. Let's translate them. <laughs> you waste no more, more time in this horrible place. But that doesn't help me. There's a doorway to your left and the alleyway runs out of sight to the right. The door down to the city is locked. It's still locked. Oh no. There's no way back. Make your way along the alley, looking about furtively. Luckily, the few creatures you see don't challenge you. The sun moves into view overhead, thin and weak. Better keep moving. If I check the clues that he gave me, I think it's just a secret... Yeah, that's the, the door to the library is an illusory wall, knocking twice and then touching with praying hands will open it. Groban doors. But locked by fearsome magic. Archmage may be dead. Third spell. It's invisibility. The poem. Is, is pretty much everything we need. We just don't know that fourth spell. Minimites prevent magic, silver weapons. Pay respect to Nap. You were given advice. Pay respect to the torture master. Oh, we did do that. You wear the breath. Don't lighten your way with the blood candle. So we're doing good. So far. Um, let's go back up the alley. Yeah, the alley's turned slightly here, following the curve of the cliff. At the far end you spot two Birdman guards, standing by an iron door. They have either not noticed you, or your disguise is keeping you safe. And our narrow door is on the right, a little further along the alley. It's a good idea not to stand along too long, in case your disguise does not hold up. We have to keep going inwards. Yeah, we best just not hang out in the open. So most of these are just like, don't stay standing here. If you stay here... <laughs> you're, you're fucked. Okay, move on. We can go to the iron room, or the low room, where we can approach the guards. Okay, let's try go to the low room. We have to investigate everything we can here. You close the door behind you. Glad to be away from the guards' prying eyes. The chamber you enter is rough, as though carved from a spur of rock. The ceiling is open to the sky. As you enter, three birdmen... Look up from the dice game, staring at you intently. You're reminded of an Aniland phrase, hiding from snatta cats in a strangle bush. Oh god, these are some mean looking bastards. Wait, they were playing a dice game. Let me play Swindle Stones, greet them. Swindle Stones, Swindle Stones, Swindle Stones. No, the, it, it's, it's not going to let me. The birds continue to stare dumbfounded. What spell would help me here? Uh-oh. You open your arms to cast a spell. The birdman's whacked your elbows painfully with his halberd. Not a chance, it hisses. One of the silent ones points at you, and he, as he lifts his arm, you notice a curious SS-shaped mark under his arm. Ask about the mark. What is that mark on your arm, you demand? An injury the birdman snaps back from killing humans. Uh, um, birdman is the Gestapo. <laughs> Uh-oh. I could just leave. <laughs> mm. People are saying draw my sword. As for directions? Which way is the commander's office? Why would you need to know that? The birdman replies curiously, clacking a talon against the table. 
I'm a spy reporting back. I want to avoid the commander. It's not your business. It's so difficult to tell who to trust. A lot of people don't seem to like the commander or the archmage. It's the thing. I want to avoid the commander. You reply with a sly smile. The birdman pauses a moment and laughs. Everyone has something to hide when observes. The commander's office is through the iron way at the end of this hall. I suggest you turn back to the lower city. There's nothing but guards up around here. I can't return to the lower city. Let me pass. The birdmen look down their beaks at you. They do not move. I don't want to take out my sword. Just leave. While you declare, I believe in you. The birdmen stare, but do not make a move to stop you. You exit the room, grateful for the stupidity of the Archmage's troops. Step out into the alley once more. Move on. Birdmen are just chilling. Let's leave them alone. I have to keep going this way. Okay, the two Birdman guards stiffen at your approach, gripping their halberds more tightly. Just walk past. You saunter by and reach for the door. The halberds snap down into a, snap down into a cross, blocking the way. But I was in here. Talk to him. Greetings, you say. What do you want? The birdmaid says, clipping her words. I need to pass. You're on official business, are you? I have a message for the Archmage. I'm an ambassador from Kare. I can make it worth your while. I'm an ambassador will not work. Probably news has reached him at this point that the goblins have killed everyone in the city. A message for the Archmage. No, the Archmage. No one sees the Archmage. What a crock. She continues to laugh even, even as she slams the butt of her halberd into your groin. Then you're flying backwards. You land on your back, the impact forcing the air from your lungs. Uh, you open your arms to cast a spell, but the bird maid prances forward to step on your wrist. This is a fortress of sorcerers she clucks. I don't think I can't recognize magic. Oh no. The bird maid holds the blade of her halberd to your neck. Her companion rises herself, rubbing his now cracked beak. They truss you up and toss you through the iron door into the courtyard beyond. Well, we we made it true. Unscathed too, bound and gagged. Oh no. Not not so unscathed. Bound and gagged. You are dragged by your ankles by two guards who mutter about the trouble caused. They gossip the passing companions about you. The tale of your exploits will soon spread through Mampang. This will make it more difficult to blend in from now on, should you escape. This is bad. That's just spell. You try to cast a spell with your arms tied, you cannot reach the style that you require. Should they tie you at any point, they will ha you will have a chance, but not before. Hopelessly, you are dragged into the office of the Commander of the Guard. Oh no. The room is windowless, but lit by half a dozen lamps scattered about. Kartuum, commander of the guards of Mampang, sits behind a wooden desk covered in scattered parchments. It's Lord Farquaad. <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look like him, doesn't it? Um... Look around the room. The office is well organized, without the usual the tree, the tree, treat us and debris you've come to expect from the rest of the citadel. The only personal touch is a portrait of a beautiful woman above him. You don't recognize her. The Kartuam. You look over Kartuam, somewhat surprised to see he is human. Un unlike the orcs and dark elves that make up the bulk of the guards. His square features tell you he's not from Analand. He might be a renegade from the lands of the east of Kakabad. Who is this? Kartuam demands. His high-pitched voice is an odd contrast to his grim face. An odd one, the guard says. He caught him up to no good. 
Is that so? Cashroom squints at your disguise. I am the Analander. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Um. I'm a new recruit. Pretend to be confused. You furrow your brow and feign confusion, stumbling around the room. The commander narrows his eyes. What's the meaning of this? He says to the guards. Is he a jester? I don't know how to get out of this. Knock the painting off the wall. You can you contrive to stumble into the portrait, knocking it from the wall. The commander leaps up, tenderly picking up the broken frame. Fools, the commander growls. You must have struck him too hard. There are quite a lot of guards here. Uh, this is getting real dicey. This is getting real dicey. If I try cast a spell, it's probably not going to let me do it. I don't want- I don't want to let him know that I have magic. Seize the commander! <laughs> oh no. You yank one arm free and leap towards Khartoum. The guards will not fail the protected leader. They soon have your arms twisted up behind your back. The commander is grimacing. Get this one out of my office, he demands. Remove his head and bring it back to me. I need somewhere to keep my pencils. Uh oh. This, um... This isn't going well. Your head bumps over the cobblestones so you're dragged up to the rough wooden block. A massive man, shirtless but masked, lounges in the shadow of the wall with an axe. The guards call him over. Welcome, he says, spreading his arms. Always nice to see you. you <laughs> oh, wait, hang on. Welcome! He says, spreading his arms. Always nice to see a new face. What would your name be then? I hate to have a face without a name. I am the Analander. Well, I'm no one. You don't say. I've never met no one. Soon you'll be nobody as well. <laughs> he chuckles pleasantly. Suddenly the man falls silent, looking up at the tower above, as though something had caught his attention. Um, look at clue. Do we have anything about the executioner? No. <laughs> no, there, there, there's nothing here. Oh. This really matters right now. Look up. You turn at once, but see nothing but the... But the sunlight gleaming off a high tower window. Yes, my lord! At once, my lord! The large man says to the empty air. Then he turns back to you. The order's given. It, well, it doesn't look good for you. He scoops you up and positions you on the block, securing an iron band around the base of your neck. <laughs> I don't have a god. Pray. You close your eyes and whisper a quiet prayer. The executioner hefts his axe, its edge gleaming in the sun. Look on the bright side, he remarks, blade quivering in the air. Not every day the Archmage comes to watch me work. The axe comes down. <laughs> You've been executed. <laughs> I just killed a man. Oh no. Well... Let's cast the Zed spell. Hey, Zed. Back we go. The spell finishes in a blinding net of starlight that winds around your body like a sheet. Oh, God. Okay, let's move quickly away. Elise! Can we go find her again? Or is that just going to teleport us back into the barracks?
The Archmage saw us die, but we've gone back in time. See? So he may not he may not know us now. Worry about the spells first. Yeah, true. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna try explore to the right then. Let, let's see what's over this way and we'll come back to these towers. I'm ending it with that one with the doors. I wanna find Elise again. You follow the main road around the corner. You pass broken buildings, fall into disrepair. Some still show shine, signs of habitation. It passes by a large gate. The sun is almost set and the sky is turned to deep purple. It will be night soon. Uh, before you use a stone facade that stretches the length of the street, two men in heavy robes sit on the steps. The building. Arch windows are placed evenly, though several panes are missing. Worn steps lead to a door that is rather small for such a large building. The iron studded doors are thrown open, and you, gl you can glimpse a courtyard within. Let's head up. Walk up the steps. One of the men lifts a hand to have to have you hold your place. I haven't seen you before, but you're welcome, welcome indeed. No food to give, you wish for that. F, our God forbids it, but there is plenty to be earned, in a sense. But what is this place? This is a monastery, or we can head inside. Um, what is this place? Oh, we are dedicated to F, the fortuitous. He gestures up the stairs. Feel free to enter. You'll have to excuse us. My companion and I are a little busy betting on the patterns of the crowds. We could get a new god. Maybe. You nod and make your way through the gate. This is, this is the temple over here. Oh! You step into the yard of the monastery. Much quieter here, and a sense of calm peace ex exudes from the building, as though protected from the evils of the citadel around. A short flight of steps leads further inside to a wide, busy hall. Nearby, a monk watches you with gentle interest. Hey, how's it going? It's my first day here. Welcome to our place of contemplation, she says. You have the eyes of a lost soul. Are you a monk here? I am, she says. I've been in the order for many years now. Are you happy? Happiness comes and goes, but I never content. And that is as a follower, as a follower of F should be. Hmm. Yeah, what other churches do you have about here? I'm just kind of curious, uh, like, like, what my options are. <laughs> uh, no, the goal we win from all the games is what keeps us afloat. Wait. Do these guys gamble? The goal we win from all the games. Clever. Is it not? I think it shows the wisdom of worship in F. A good understanding of chance is necessary in life. The monk smiles and pulls out a scrumpled sheet of paper. Well met, the monk says. But now I must return to contemplating these creases. May your next nudge come from F. You nod your thanks and turn away. Cries and cheers come from inside the monastery building. Oh, now this is a church I can get behind. It's the gambling church. <laughs> oh, dear. You climb the steps into the monastery building. This place seems rather busy for a monastery. Monks and citizens crowd along long tables. A commotion is coming from a crowd to, crowd to one side. Wide doors lead deeper into the monastery itself. Small iron-lined windows dot the walls, allowing a little light. Around the courtyard. Most of us monks are gambling or betting in one way or another. One stands on one leg, while another counts seconds. Opposite, two monks are standing under a tree, guessing when a particular leaf will fall. Along a far wall, surrounded by many spectators, is an intricate race course for rats. A race course for rats. Ooh. What spells can we cast too? Let's see. Um, sus isn't gonna really help. I don't think there's danger in the monastery. I don't know what spell actually we want here. Talk with the animals. <laughs> like... Talk to the rats who are going to be in the race. Maybe. Grabbing the wig from your pack, you put it on your head and weave your spell. There are no animals around you to talk to, but from the rat race course, you can hear a tiny voice. I win again, it squeaks. The cheese is mine, you bumpkins. <laughs> most people here are gambling. Several monks supervise the betting of various sorts, but most are participating. 
Okay, uh, make a move. Pile of dice and crumble of Ben comes from a side chamber. Outside, night has fallen. There's only one room for me. You walk over to a long room with a wooden table in which several games of swindle stones are being played. You find a monk who grins at you. Fancy a game, he asks. We stake ten. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> there is a god. He hands you ten gold pieces from his pocket in F's honor. Now a game. <gasps> Welcome to the rest of the streamlines. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> We've done it again. Ah, uh, dear, so two threes. I'm gonna bet three threes. Four threes, you sucker. I don't have a single three. Call it. We're back in the game. Your addiction is tearing this family apart, Daniel. <laughs> I'm gonna start with two threes. Oh, no. No, 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 no. He's on to me. These guys are wiser. One, four. Two, fours. Three, fours, you sucker. Got him immediately. Where are we going? Where are we going? One, three. Two, three. Your god is mine now. Continue. The monk nods with great pleasure and hands over ten gold pieces as you take back your stake. A fine match, the monk declares. Another. Let's increase the stake a little. Ten gold more. Here we go. Do you have a fate? I have the only fate I need. I'm gonna bid. Two fours. Three fours. He could, he could have three fours. Possibility. I gotta go four threes because I only have two. Oh no, don't don't lose in this high stakes game. No. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm gonna need more to get me through. Two, two threes. Three twos. I don't want to bid four twos. I have to call. I have to call. I have to call. I have to call. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. No. No. One three. Uh, do you think there's two threes, sir? He doesn't have a three. He doesn't have a three. Oh! <gasps> he fucked up. He fucked up. I'm still in the game. I'm still in the game. One, three. Two threes. Both of us have to be threes. It's unlikely. Call it. Oh, come on. One, four. Fuck. 
He's going to call it no matter what I say. He's won. He's won. Think about it. If I call two of anything, he... He's not going to raise it. If I call two fours, he'll match the call. The only thing I can do is call him and hope that he doesn't have a four. God is dead. Can you lend me more money? No. Cap does not wish to be generous. His generosity defies the action of luck. True luck does not always favor play, he agrees. Get up from the long table, the monk bidding you goodbye. You return to the courtyard. Step back into the main courtyard. Step out of the calm oasis of the monastery and head back into the dust and grey of Mampang. The road stretches a short way in both directions. Okay, uh... Go to the square. Follow the road, which gets better, which gets better kept with every step. You're approaching some kind of central square. In the moonlight, this corner of the square is quiet. A quiet, wider road leads west into a rundown area of the city. I kind of want to check out what's over here if I can. Because I've explored a little bit of this area before. The market is shuttered up for the night. I can I can sleep under a stall. I think I'm gonna have to. Should be sheltered here and hopefully out of sight. Lane, you're packed down, you tried to sell despite the cold, you've eaten nothing today. Eat something. You eat the apple feeling much better for it, then you get comfortable and rest. You can protect it here and your rest is untroubled by dreams. Because we rewind it, the Archmage is still unaware of us, at least. That's the one saving grace in all of this. You're woken roughly by a stall owner kicking you out from under your stand. By the time you scramble away, you've sustained some bruising. You head in several directions from here. So exploring here isn't even an option. A bit busy here. Let's go to the east side. The buildings on the eastern edge are a little more ramshackle, and arch leads to another smaller yard. An alley runs past it. A pillory sits to the north of here. Two clouds drift across the sky. Let's just make a move. Cross the square, explore the fringes. I want to explore down here. I want to make my way towards these other towers. You enter an alley littered with refuse. Uh, buildings either side are leaning or collapsed. In the dim half-light, you nearly trip over two men who are leaning against a wall. They straighten and turn to you. Seems we have a visitor, one says. His eyes are closed and so are his comrades. These are dead, the de deadly red eyes of Kare, whose very gaze can burn. Just passing through? No, you're stopping here, I think the man replies. A moment later, you hear the crunch of footsteps. There's another now standing behind you. Ignore them. You attempt to stride past them, heads held, head held high. But as you pass, one trips you up with a sneer. Clumsy oaf, he says. Uh, can y'all see where you're going? How dare you kick my friend's foot here and not apologize? Apologize immediately. Mm -hmm. Just get up. Try to get up and are kicked roughly to the ground again. Roll aside. This escalated somewhat. You d dodging a glance and blow from the red eye's heat vision. He fires again as you scramble to your feet, but it misses, hitting his companion instead. He howls, falling to the ground with a smoking hole in his chest. The red eye is too stunned by his mistake to react, allowing you to get close enough to fight. You approach nervously, but although the red eye stares at you, he cannot burn you. Seems they are weaker here than their carrying cousins. Hit him hard. Oh ho ho! Well, that was cutting it close. Okay, well, we got him. He's 
strike is more than, than the red eye can take, he falls to the ground already forgotten by the bustle of the alleys. Okay. Kill them. The red eye lies dead at your feet. The back alleys of Manpang are a hostile place, it would seem. You continue along the road. The lane leads off. As the morn moves on, the winds begin to rise. Looking down the lane, you see a large tavern, but it appears to be closed at the moment. You must keep going. By the alleys. You follow the road to a junction where a collection of nestled, winding alleys lead away. As the sun climbs towards its peak, the winds blown between the buildings pick up a little. Peering down them hints at a maze of twisting paths and shadowy nooks. There's a small fire here, which a few figures sit glumly around. Look at the alleys. The alleys are a rat's nest of buildings and winding streets. Uh, they seem to go on forever, and yet curve immediately away out of sight. Look at the buildings. The buildings surrounding you are old and poorly built, in stark contrast to the, mar to the martial efficiency of the rest of Mampang. Most are sagging and leaning, but you can see shadows moving in the windows. Despite the grim setting, people still live here. A rat scurries over to your foot, then stands nearby, boldly staring. Look at the people. People gathered here have a cluster of tents to one side along with packs of gear. A small fire burns in a dugout pit and they sit around it chatting over a bubbling stew. People are saying like yap? Why are people saying yap? Did I miss something? The alleys are a rat's nest of buildings. Yap is talk to animals. The... Was there a rat? Where where is the rat? Well, the rat. A rat scurries over your foot and stands nearby, boldly staring. Oh. Hey, yeah, you're right. He's just looking at us. A yeah, good catch there. Yeah, I, I just kind of glossed over that. Pulling out the green wig, you put it on and cast a spell. Hello there, the rat says. You all right? How do I get through the alleys? Oh, easy, he says. Just look for the bronze dome. Massive it is, even for a tall one like you. What direction is it in? Direction? He looks puzzled, you think. Can you point the way? He shakes his head. Follow the smell of bronze, that's what I do. You can smell bronze, right? Thanks, Rat. Okay, so look for the bronze dome. What are the dangers of the alleys? Lots of nasty types hiding in there, he says. And some of the old buildings are dangerous. Plus, you might be stepped on. Actually, never mind about that last one. <laughs> What's on the other side? More of the same shrugs the Rat. Mud and stone. Best be off, he says. Or those blokes catch me for the dinner. Well, there he goes. Okay, let's explore the alleys. Several alleys lead off from here. Let's go in. You head into the alleys cautiously, trying to follow the, the vague hints you have been given about the route. The sun has reached its highest point now. The paths turn this way and that until you reach a fork. Look down one of the alleys, it seems no different than the one you follow here. Indeed, it looks exactly the same. The second alley looks all but identical to the first. I mean, the bronze dome is to the right, so try go right. Your instinct suggests for the right road, but you'll have to keep moving. You must surely be reaching the edge of the alleyways by now. Walk a considerable distance. To your surprise, the alleyway emerges suddenly into the crossroads with a fire pit where you start it. Hmm. Okay, let's go back into the alley. You disappear into the alleyways once more, following lanes that seem to switch back and twist in on themselves. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. After passing several blocks, you begin to develop the sense that there is more land here than can possibly fish. Stopping the turn around the spot, you see no movement. The buildings are empty, their shutters hang loose, and a gentle smell of decay drifts across the streets. Keep walking. Uh, you move cautiously onwards. The alleyways look all look the same. You stumble around a corner and come across upon a small open square in which a single building lists slightly to one side. Look at the house. The building is made of haphazard stone blocks roughly piled on top of one another into a slightly listed structure. It is, however, most definitely a house. Curious, you approach this build. This is this place the cause of a strange of the strange disturbance to this area. The house. Oh. 
You approach the house, a narrow two-story affair that, like most of Manpang's buildings, is showing signs of tumble and decay. As you approach, you notice the front door is hanging ajar. Listen at the door. You put your ear to the front door. There are no sounds coming from within. Let's... Mm. Call out. Hello, you call into the house. There's no response. Knock. You knock firmly on the door. It swings open further, revealing a shabby hall. No one comes to greet you. Let's walk in. You walk inside, wincing at your own in in a You pronounce that. In impropriety. Impropriety. Okay, the front hall is sparse but cared for. Your feet sink into a colorful rug. To your right there is a kitchen with a few embers in the heart. Some stairs are nearby. There are several vases of flowers, all fresh. This place is clearly not abandoned. There are a few ways to go. Um... Don't like this. You head into the kitchen. It's clean and spacious. Dried meat hangs from the rafters, and a bundle of fruit sits in a basket by the door. A piece of paper lies on the table, which is scarred from cutting knives. There are more flowers here. Don't read the paper. You pick up the piece of paper. It is a series of directions beginning from the crossroads, turn left, second right, third left, first right, and so forth. A guide to the alleys, perhaps. Well, we can just remember that. Thir turn left, second right, third left, first right, yeah? I don't want to rob him. You leave it behind. Most likely there's more meaning and use to the occupant of this house than you. Back to the hall. You return to the front hall, you could try upstairs. Yep, the upper floor is, a, is one large room. Two double beds sit at opposite sides, with trunks at the foot of each. A rug is in the center, with a few toys scattered about. A small table sits by one side, with a small box on top of it. Uh, the flowers here have been chosen to match the paint on the walls and furniture. Mm. Examine the small box. The box is locked with rattles when you shake it. Put it down again. There's something here. Mm, there's something here. Sus isn't even an option this time. How would just tell us just leave the house or something? Like there's no, there doesn't seem to be any imminent danger. Well, how is not helpful. Dop, open locks and doors. Does cause slowness. You can see the future. You settle into a sitting position on the ground and take out the orb of crystal. You cast a spell and suddenly you find yourself somewhere quite new. You see yourself sitting at the kitchen table of this very house. You were chatting amiably with a plump woman, some bread and dice before you. So that's the future, so there is someone here. And play Swindle Stones. So, the person is friendly. Oh. You turn to leave only to hear a door opening downstairs. A muffled woman's voice comes from below. Forgot to lock it again. Those children. You hear her moving around in the front hall, humming to herself. <laughs> Just leap out the window. I need to announce myself. You march down the stairs, almost collide with a plump, middle-aged woman. Her eyes pop open, seeing you. Hello! <laughs> the woman is in front of you. Who are you, she demands. What are you doing in my house? I mean you no harm. Her eyes narrow. Then why are you here? There's nothing worth stealing, after all. I live in the worst house in Mampang. Well, it seems comfortable to me. And you must be as dirty and as ragged as you look, she replies grumpily. 
It used to be a nice area, you know, but the neighborhood has really gone downhill. Your lot should do something about it instead of going around harassing ordinary citizens. I'm not a guard. I'm not a guard. Of course you aren't. If you were a guard, you would have knocked me down by now and stolen the cheese from my kitchen. She peers at you, but you are an odd one. What are you even doing in this part of town? Why don't your clothes fit? I'm not from Mampang. I've never heard such a thing. Her eyes narrow. The world outside the wall is dead and dust, she asserts. You can't be from outside. Mm. I'm trying to win her favor. We gotta be careful here. There's a lush and verdant world out there. I don't believe it. Outside. How do we even look alike? You must be some kind of mutant on the inside. Still, I'm glad you made it back from the horrors out there. No wonder you barged in like you did. I bet seeing a house a house or a street is strange for you. Come on, straggler. She heads towards the kitchen, calling for you to follow. The name's Molka, by the way, she shouts. We made a friend. You follow her into the kitchen. Sit, sit, she says. You sit while she bustles around, picking up a piece of paper from the table and stuffing it into her pocket. I'm not sure whether to be honored or frightened of you, she titters. Would you like something to eat? Or perhaps play some dice and chat? I do love a good good game, but I have a scant time for it now that the children are getting older. I need something to eat first. I'm terribly hungry, you tell her. Can you give me anything to eat? Of course I can, she replies. Fussily serving you some bread and cheese. And watching as you tuck in. You wanna play some swindle stones? No steak. I like to play for the pleasure of playing. Do you barbarians do the same? I need money. You must not enjoy the game, she replies, somewhat sadly, and puts her dice away in the pocket! Oh! Volka opens the cupboard and a dead rat tumbles out. She tuts before putting the rat back onto the shelf. Oh no. Okay, uh, may I ask you some questions? Um, where are your kids? You mentioned them. Out playing, I assume. The scamps like to dash around the alleys and so forth. They always find their way ho home somewhere. Natives. Uh, are you a widow? Yes, my husband died just after the twins were born. At least I think he did. He was always exploring, trying to find ways out of the citadel. Convinced there was a better life to be had beyond the walls. One day he went out and didn't come back. I had a wife after that, but she left. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, she says, but to be honest, it's been so many years, I hardly remember what Ida was like. <laughs> it's been so long that she's just kind of forgotten her partners. <laughs> oh, dear. Have you ever wanted to leave Mampang? To be honest, no, it seems terrifying. Barbarians and wastelands. Not like that. I'm sure you think so, having lived there, but I've grown used to civilization. The waste out there will be too dangerous for me. Well, you are a nosy one, Mocha remarks, her voice full of humor. Show her the bronze ring. Taking out the bronze ring you found in the empty towers of the abandoned quarter of the citadel, you place it on the table. Mocha gasps and snatches it. Where did you get this? Do you recognize it? Brett catches in her throat and she nods. I know it well, she replies sadly. I put it on my husband's finger. Are you sure it's the same ring? Yes. Oh, she, ta she, takes, she shakes her head at the question, but does not tr trouble to reply beyond a simple yes. You get up thanking Molka for the hospitality and you head into the street. Take care, she calls from the hallway. May you learn the song of the sleepless ram. Oh god. There's nothing else here. I think we messed that one up. You hear Mocha tidying up as you leave her house. You walk onwards. Once more you tumble out into the crossroads of the alleyways. Oh no, there could have been more there, but we're never going to make it back to that house. 
Even if we try to go back in there. Because they whine so much, it's a different spot now. I didn't want to- I, I thought there would be another option to tell her how I found it. Oh god. Well, we can't rewind. Yeah, we, we don't get rewinds anymore. We can't do it. We have to go to the east road. We pass by the alleys and follow the road as it heads towards the rising wall of Mampang. After a while, the path opens out into a stony clearing. The sun is almost set and the sky has turned the deep purple. Soon it will be dark once more. Guards walk this way and that across the space. Make a move. The LWH with strange, strange crowds fill in the square. Okay, you, you cross into the middle of a small square. Guards move this way and that across the flagstones. In one corner of the square is a tent from which rich smells are rising. Look at the food server. Food server at cellar has a low tent with a cooking stove. A few of the square's wandering populace pause to buy it to eat, but continue on their endless circuits. It's not a good place to hang around. We don't need to eat because we had a meal there. Let's go to the door. You turn to see that the guards in the square have noticed you, but your disguise appears to reassure them. You are not stopped. Look at the door. You feel an incredible energy rising from behind the door, as though something was chained to there. Try the door. Try the door. It is merely latched against the wind and not locked. Which way now? You step through the door into a curiously quiet area of stone. Low towers rise from a dark pool of icy looking water, with paths snaking across it from one to another. The whole place is worn and ruined. You cannot help but shiver. You are back amongst the haunted, powerful towers of the abandoned quarter of Mampang. Night has fallen. You need to rest. Okay. Uh, we'll look in a tower and then we'll try sleep out here. You could explore deeper or escape back to the relative safety of Mampang. There's so many towers. And yes, I can't rewind. For people saying I should just rewind, you can't do it anymore. You leave the shade of the wall and follow the stepping stones out across the water. Everywhere the, si everywhere the signs of ruin abound. Weeds crack the stones, turret roofs and buttresses collapse into heaps. Why is the Archmage allowed such ruin? Surely the rumors of his debt cannot be true. The moon rises. You reach the base of a stone tower with a curved archway at its base. The path splits around it. I'm gonna sleep here real quick. I'm gonna try to. Send down your pack, you try to stretch out despite the wind. You do not need to eat more today. Close my eyes. Close your eyes and let tiredness overtake you. You roll over trying to sleep, but you cannot seem to rest. After a while, you get to your feet and begin to walk through the darkness. Crumbling walls and broken towers move past on either side. You're walking past an old crumbling building when you hear voices. Stop to listen. You listen closer, leaning against the wall. It sounds like a distant crowd, too far to even be on the other side of the wall. Where are those voices coming from? Knock on the wall? You rap the wall and a chorus of tiny screams ring out in response. Call out. Who is there, you cry. The voices die for a moment, then resume. You fail to hear any acknowledgement, but the voices are so distant it's hard to tell. Go over the wall. Looking over the wall, you spot a missing brick. A green-gray mold has covered the gap, coating the interior with fuzz. Look at the mold. As you lean down to peer at the mold, you realize the voices are growing louder. Look at it. You squint, peering at the mold. It is unusually shaped, varied in color with, peak, with peaks and valleys. Tiny bumps dot around the mold, along with the taller outcroppings that look like spires. But then something else catches your eye. Movement. Hundreds of tiny specks swarm across the surface of the brick, making circuits in all directions around the mold. What could they be? I... Don't know what this one is. You watch the hypnotic patterns in the mold moving this way and that. They seem to grow as you stare, becoming first veins and branches and finally streets and roads. The world around you is filled with grey, and the air turns to fuzz and smoke. Then you are sitting in a valley of soft grey grass. Look around, you get to your feet and take in the scenery. The hills around you are a riot of greens and purples. Blotches of strange growths make dancing patterns, and everything is covered in fine fuzz. Look up. 
Overhead is in is the pitted underside of the next brick in the wall. It is rather like being in a cavern, open on one side. The place you came from is indistinct. Everything out there is so large now it is nearly impossible to discern. The hill you are sitting on obscures most of your vision. Perhaps you could better get a better view from the top. I'm in the mold, haven't I? I I've become part of the tower. Call out, but there is no reply. Are you alone? Find the hill for a better view. You now look into another valley ringed by hills. Nestled at the foot is an extraordinary sight. Rotten bone the size of a whale. Oh no. A half-eaten meat bone has been pushed into a hole into a brick in the brick in a display of typical manpang manners. Mold has grown all across it, climbing the sides and burrowing inside the rotted meat. Even from here the stench of decay wafts up the, upon the breeze. Cables of mold stretch up from the ground to the tip of the tilted drumstick, and in front of it, there seems to be some kind of altar. Is it a temple? Seems you have been spotted. Creatures are clambering towards you. Blobs of mold with black, beady eyes and no mount or limbs. Uh. Look at the creatures. The creatures are hard to make out from this distance. Uh, but you see them hurrying to and fro their huts. From this distance, they appear to be shapeless blobs, the same color as the mold. They seem like any other village inhabitants. You move along the ground by simply rolling. Hide. You look around for a hiding place, see nothing of use. You eventually retreat a ways down the opposite side of the hill. Your plan is foiled, however, as the creatures crest it and spot you. One rolls forward and begins to speak in a rough imitation of the common tongue. Its voice sounds like a bag of pebbles, so it's a bit hard to follow. Welcome, we are the Gillis, and this is our home. You have been summoned by Mucor's magic. Would you come down to the village? No. But you must, Mucor has decreed it, you see. Please come with us, at least to hear the Great One's proposal. No. The Gillis rolls away. It is futile, then. We will not press you. Please come to the village if you change your mind. The group rolls away, pausing to look back at you once. Explore the hills. Turn away and move off into the hills, sinking deeper with every step. After a while, you find yourself covered, wrapped in the grey fur that fills your mouth and eyes. What? Well, the night passed. You pick yourself up to your feet and try to shake away your more curious dreams. The wind picks up a little spray... I'm alive. How am I alive? What just happened? What was that? You must keep moving. Okay, um... Pat rounds to a tower to the north and splits again. Sun breaks over the horizon. Up ahead is a tower surrounded by thick mud. South of here is another tower, perhaps coated over with some kind of black carapace. Make a move. Move away from the strange black clad tower. Where's the black tower? I don't I don't see it. Go back here. You reach the base of a stone tower. Pat splits around it. Move on. Um Go into here. The early morning sun makes the air glow. You cross the waters and push your way inside the crumbling tower without knowing what you might find. The inner doors you stand in front of are twice your height and look to be made of solid metal. The air is thick with an incredible smell. Smell the air. Smoke melts in metal as though a gigantic smithy lies behind this door. Try the handle. As you grasp the handle, you notice it's almost too hot to touch. Listen at the door. Place your ear to the metal and leap backwards. The door is searing hot. The wooden handle should be safe to touch, though. Open the door a crack. The doors are very heavy, but you manage enough control to only open them halfway. It's by a roaring flame just inside the door. This room must be some kind of furnace. This is hot. So what counters hot? We need to enter. We have to learn this. You slip carefully into the room, which is filled with roaring flames. Can't see the source of the blaze, but it surely is a miracle it's not spread to the other buildings of the fortress. The flames seem to show no sign of slowing down. Either. You're already sweating from the heat. When the flames lick through the whole room, you might be able to pick a path through them. You stand at the room's threshold. 
Cast a spell. Wait, do we know it's Doc? Did we learn this? No, it... <laughs> Doc's not even an option. Dim is an option. I do ha. Counters Doc. Does Doc counter hot though? Does it work both ways like that? We did learn it, yeah. The healing one. I I I just can't counter it. It's not an option. Um Sus will just be like, yeah, there's a fire in this room. We can access all the towers even if we don't go through this one. So we can just leave. Exhausted and scorched, you leave the room alone for now. Uh, let me check the spell book and see if that's how it works. Does it work both ways? Because that means we have a lot more counter spells than I thought would. Hot counters Doc. Where's Doc? Doc counters hot. Oh, so it does work that way. Okay. Requires a medicinal potion. I, I believe I do have a Blimberry potion. So I need to, yeah, I need to hold on to that because we need one of those for the door. Okay, move on. Go over here. Look at the black tower. You reach out and gently touch the surface of the black, of the, the black surface of the tower by the wall. It's hard to touch, smooth and cold. There's even a doorway here, you cannot make it out. This one's covered in black. I had a clue for this one, did I? Um... I don't see it. Third spell, Robin, he's dead. It's just a dark tower. Uh, cast a spell. I don't think I have a clue for this one, yeah. Um... Pep cause strength. I want to be careful with that one. And cast the cut, the 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 purr spell again. Sun makes light. Sun's not an option. Yeah, you only get to do spells that actually show up here. You, yeah, like that, that's really important to know, lads. You can't just say purr, like that one all the time. Be the future, I guess. You sit cross-legged on the ground and put your palms on the orb. Look into the stars. You craft the magic, and everything changes. This is a room filled with skeletons. Crawl over one another in terrible clacking and knocking of bones. Above them hangs a dark, dripping shape. Look up. You look up at the shape and see one enormous, ruined eye staring back. Water pools from an oversized tongue, sparkling as it falls. The vision fades. That's worrying. I don't know what spell I need here. Ow! I could just try smash it. Smash the black coating. You draw your blade and hammer on the black coating, but those spec bits fleck off. You cannot break the whole thing open. Yeah. Um, hmm. Doc, that counters something else. Yeah, that, ca that counters hot, so that, that's no good here. There's nothing hot about the door. Can I just zap it? <laughs> Great lightning. 
Go to Starlight, generate a charge of electrical energy within your palm, then you unleash the energy at the black clad tower. Nothing results against a dull, sizzling smell. What's the counter for darkness? I don't think we have a counter for darkness right now. There is a dark spell. Fog. It's sun, but you can't ca cast it. Yeah, sun isn't an option here. We can't cast sun. Sun is not one. I can cast the cat spell again. <laughs> The black coating seems to trickle away into the ground. The tower door is revealed. What's up with the fucking cat spell? Why is it the answer for these towers? <laughs> Why? Check the poem. Is the clue for that one in the poem? No, the, 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 the poem doesn't mention the cat spell. Okay, look inside. Uh, interior is shadowy and dark. Let's go inside. The black tower. The dim room smells musty, like the interior of an old chest. There is no light. The tiny windows are all covered over with a curious thick black substance that coats the walls and floors. Something seems to spout in slow globs from an outlet set into a raised block of stone in the middle of the chamber. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at the stone block. The position of the block is like that in an altar, but the pipe drilled through it reminds you of alchemical equipment. The thick sludge coming through does not remind you of anything much, however. Hmm... Touch the floor? You run your fingers over the slime on the floor. Your seconds after leaving the pipe, it is congealed into a glassy layer. Cool and smooth, like caramelized sugar. I don't want to touch the ooze, but I need to learn the counter spell. You reach out to touch the ooze and black slime coming from the altar block. It is curiously warm and quick movement, covering your fingertips in moments and seeming to climb as though alive or dr driven by some strange force. Up your hand towards your wrist. You snatch your arm away but find you are already quite stuck. Um, this is bad. Just wait. You wait, there seems nothing else to be nothing else you can do. The black goo solidifies, turning ice cold as it does so. It shrinks as it cools. You feel it tugging one by one at the tiny hairs in your hand and wrist. Then you feel something else. A gathering strength. Close my eyes, I don't want the goo on that. You close your eyes, trying to understand what is happening inside you, but you are definitely growing stronger. Mm. Wait a moment. You wait, unsure what else you can do. It feels as like the fibers of your body are growing thicker with every moment. This is Pep, then. This is Pep, so we need the counter for strength. Wait a little more. You keep waiting, trying to calm your breathing, but it's co coming in ragged gasp now. More and more of the goo is flowing over you. You feel your arm muscles growing in size. My stamina is going up. It's 27 now. I'm gonna tug free. You try to tug free, but the hardened slime is like iron around your wrists. Your heart is beginning to pound hard and fast in your chest. Your breath is growing short. I gotta keep tugging, don't I? You tug again, but nothing happens. The goo flows further around you. What do I do? I'm getting a lot of stamina. Let's just wait, I guess. 
You keep waiting, absorbing the power given you by the curious goo, but you can feel your arms starting to get hot and your heart beat fast in your chest. The slime flows further over you. Do I just keep waiting? Suddenly your heart begins to pound too fast, your breath is short, your eyes are bulging from the sockets, the strength inside your body is going beyond what your frame can handle. For a moment you gasp an ounce of breath, but then it's too late. Your heart has exploded. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Spell is gonna toss us back. Interestingly, I still keep the stamina I had from there, though. I have 28 now. Wait, can I go back in that alleyway then and try and... No, because she has the ring now, doesn't she? I'm not going to be able to find that woman again. Get infinite stamina. We don't need infinite stamina though. Okay, night, night has fallen now. Let's see what's in the center. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. You stride into the middle of the public square where Manpang's inhabitants go about their business. In the center is a huge statue of a faceless man, holding the crown aloft. The Archmage. Hmm. I do need to sleep somewhere soon. Can I try to sleep here? <laughs> you think this is safe? Sleep against the statue. You curl up against the base of the statue and pull your cloak up over your body. Lay in your pack down, you try to sell despite the cold. You've eaten none today, but you have no provisions. Only two vials of blimberry juice. I can afford to drink one. You gulp down a mouthful, you feel a little better, and all traces of hunger are soon gone. Then you get comfortable and rest. The remainder of the night is kept busy with vivid dreams. You stand on top of a tall, black tiled tower. Clinging onto its tiles with one hand, while with the other, you wave something in the air. What is it? You look in your hand to find you are holding nothing in the crown itself. And then you hear a calling sound, and a great shape moves towards you. A birdman! No, a gold crest eagle, shimmering into view. The sight masters have seen you. They are taking you home. That restored stamina. The Archmage is unaware. You wake to the sound of people and tramping guards. And hurry to your feet once more. Okay, let's make a move. I want to get back to over here. I think. Yeah, I want to. I want to explore more of those towers. Okay, make a move. I'll have to fight those red eyes again, but we seem to be okay dealing with them. Just, I'm gonna just threaten them this time. Get out of my way, you declare. I'll have you arrested. The creature laughs softly in reply. What have we here? Asks one of them. Gorg could take my eyes with this overfed oaf is a native of Mampang. Where are you from? Uh, I'm gonna say Christotanti. You are no more from Christotanti than we are. One says, everyone knows the Chrysotantes wear the hair high up on their heads, held in place by pins of bone. I... Been outside Mampang. Oh, indeed, our kind comes from Kara's. I suspect that you do too, by the smell on you. Tell me, did you ever visit the Shrine of Slang? A true god, that one, nestled in the stinking docks of Kara. Slang is your god. He's everyone's god, he frowns. The strangest thing, though, is I can't remember the name of his high priest. It slipped my mind. Can you remind me? Tristan? <laughs> Cast a spell. Just 
Kill him with a fireball. Strikes one of the red eyes, killing him instantly. Two remaining red eyes gawk at the spectacle, they are distracted. Now run. Run backwards towards the square, the way now clear. As you run, you feel a searing pain in your back. The red eyes uses deadly vision. You manage to steal your. Oh no, wait! I want to go back that other way. You manage to stay on your feet, but you feel your back blistering. He shot me. Okay, make a move. At least, at least they're gone from the alleyway this time. Back over the here. Okay, look at the people. Follow the road. We could start going into the alleys again, but I don't have the ring this time. I could go all the way back to the place with the doors. I don't know if we're gonna find Elysee again. I would like to though. We have to go back to that one with the tree, yeah, eventually. the door. Move on. Okay, so that was Pep. Um, that one was hot. Let's go to this one up here. Five stepping stones runs across the dark water and seems quite unsafe. The suns begin to lower and the air begins to cool. The path ends at a tower. Okay, let's move on in. Sun begins to dip. Yeah, we got that a good few times. The chamber inside is bare, uh, except for an empty table at the center. Various items lie around it, as though they had fallen off the surface during some kind of earthquake. Doors face each other on the opposing walls of the tower. Look at the table. Seems look at you. Go over the table and look over it. Look it over. It seems ordinary enough. Its surface is etched with scratches and grooves, but nothing intelligible. Look at the things on the floor. Steering across the table are an odd assortment of things. A broken cup, a bamboo flute, a decent looking broadsword, and a bare bone from a hunk of meat. I kind of want to take the bamboo flute. That is for Jig. You reach down and pick up the bamboo pipe. You play a few cheerful test notes, but as you stand up, you fumble the orb of crystal from your pack and it falls to the floor. Um, that orb has been useful. This is a trade, isn't it? It's too good to be true for so many items to be here. If I, if I pick up that orb, I'm going to drop something else, aren't I? Once again, you, you drop some as you stand, the ring of green metal. Take back the ring. The brass pendulum has now fallen. What what spell did the brass pendulum counter? Hang on. Because I think we need it, that one. That was nap. It counters God. I think I need that one. You drop something as you stand the orb crystal. I can survive without the orb. Take nothing more. Clearly there's an irritable magic on this room. If I can know the counter spell, I can take everything. What spell is this am I even trying to counter? What have we got? I can now cast Jig. Cause lively dancing. Trying to counter it dim or dumb. Yeah, both of those kind of make sense. Maybe. Um, you craft a magic, pulling out your bamboo flute and starting to play. The sound echoes around the space, but nothing else seems to happen. Has there been an outcome from your spell? You cannot tell. But you did not seem to feel compelled to dance. Did it work? 
If I take something from the table, I can try it. Take the orb. Oh. You reach out and pick up the orb, you stand up, and nothing else happens. It seems the magic in the room has abated. The dumb jig counter spell has been recorded in your spell book. Give me the bone. Give me the broadsword. Okay. Feels full weighted and sharp. Got a bunch of equipment there. Step back onto the path and follow it a short way. There's three paths this time. Water keeps stinging you. Did we mentioned the water was a big no. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. Soon it'll be dark once more. You enter the next tower nervously. This tower is gloomy. You begin to feel great weight upon your shoulders as you step inside. The interior hardly seems worth describing this place. Look around. You look around with a sense of hopelessness. In the middle of the space is a skeleton who seems to feel equally heavy and sad. It's sap. It's sap. No. You open your arms to cast a spell, then they droop to your sides. What, after all, is the purpose? Spells never do what they're supposed to do. They're always ruined by some minor triviality, some detail of the rules of casting. You sigh. Your whole journey has been a waste of time, and now they call you the Annul Land. Oh no, I, 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 get out. You head for the exit, but give up after a few paces. There's nothing out there worth finding, after all, just more of the same. You might as well stay here. Think of the crown of kings just over in the nearby tower and completely out of reach. You might as well have stayed at home. Keep inching for the door, don't just sulk. <laughs> you move an inch towards the door. It's only an inch. Hardly worth it. There's an inch more than the skeleton has managed, a slack-jawed idiot. To think, you basically burnt down the whole city just to get here more quickly. Wait a moment. Sit down to wait. Someone had better come to help you, and most likely you're going to die here again. Inch for the door! There is no use denying it, you're closer than you were. I gotta sulk. You stick your t out your tongue and cross your arms. Inch for the door! You inch another half step across the floor. Your body feels as heavy as stone as your heart is barely beaten, as though your limbs are refusing to comply. Look at the skeleton. You look listlessly over at the skeleton. Maybe whoever it was died of boredom or hunger. You can't fault them for it, really. What would be the point in doing anything here? What is the point? Wait. You continue waiting. Something better give t better turn up. Inch for the door! <laughs> Another inch and you're moving out of the eye of whatever spell holds this tower. You find yourself moving a little more now. Sulk. You refuse to move. The king get his own crown back. Inch for the door! <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Once more inch and then you're up on your feet, running, racing out of this hellish tower of nothing and gasping for breath. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> yeah, we have the glowing tower or the east tower. <laughs> Let's go to the glowing tower. You make your way across a stone walkway, arching high into the air above the swirling waters that pool below, until you reach the next curious tower. The sun lowers towards the horizon. This tower is no door, just an open arch leading into shadows. We beat depression! Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Were we warned about this door? Hmm... Look inside. Peering through the arch, you can make out some kind of yellowish light coming from within. Enter. You step inside the doorway and then stop suddenly, half blinded by a glowing luster that fills this chamber. Your footsteps crunch and you look down. It seems the floor is covered with gold, coins, jewels, and emeralds of every shade and hue. Doors lead away in both directions. Don't fill your pockets, this is a dud spell. Dud is an illusion of treasure. So, what's the uh, counter for the illusion of treasure? Hmm. What have we got? Gob. Can't do it. Mud. That counters Foth. 
Sus? Maybe. Saab, we don't have the artifact for it. We can't do the skull cap one. The skull cap one is tell. Far see the future. I mean, try sus. Let's try it. Sus has to counter something. You move into the starlight order around you, and a quiet voice begins to speak to you. There is nothing to be afraid of here, except perhaps your own greed. Yeah, because it's dud. Um. Sob's not gonna work still, I think. Yeah, I'm still missing an object. Might actually be Gob. I, I don't have the item for it. Fire does have to counter something. It does. Yeah. Okay. You see a vision of yourself hoarding the gold, stuffing into every pocket and crevice of your pack. Then you step outside and it melts away. The vision also disappears. Yep. So it's dead. I think it might be Gob, but I don't have the two. Let's move on. Treasure is merely the illusion, of course. You head for the doors. Goblins and gold, they kind of go together. You hurry over another walkway, higher in the air than you expect it, towards the next tower. The sun is now in the lowest corner of the sky, it will be dark soon. Stop at the tower's edge, there is a narrow opening in the dark grey stone. Look through it. The tower's opening is barely wide enough for you to slip inside while wearing your legendary sword. It is a curious design, as though as no as though a normal sword was door was built and the tower itself was stretched. You can make out nothing from within. Slip inside. Squeeze through the narrow opening. The passage beyond does not widen, but a warm breeze trickles tickles your face as you approach a heavy inner door. Not the door. Pause to listen only to make out a quiet groaning coming through the door. Knock at the door. Knock once and the sound booms around the space within. Open it. You move through the door into the narrow, tall room. The chamber is wider than the doorway suggested and it's cluttered. Numerous skeletal bodies lie here, scattered around the base of an altar on a red dais. Overhead, something dark and shadowy looms indistinct. This was... We had the vision of this. This is all the skeletons and there's a weird tongue thing. This is the skeleton room. But I don't know what the spell is. I have no idea what the spell is. Um... Look up. Hanging from the ceiling is a half-rotted head of a great whale. The head is suspended by cruel hooks. Uh, roughly shoved through its flesh. The wounds have turned purple and putrid from time. Look away. Turn away, it's a foul sight. Oddly, there is no stench. Surrounded by such decay, your nostrils should be filled. But there is nothing. Um, I think we just leave for now. Something about the room makes your stomach churn. You circle the walls of the room, looking for a door and a way out of this place. Can't do that one, I think. I don't know what that is at all. There wasn't an option to cast a spell, which is what I was worried about. You step out into a stone walkway that leads sharply down towards the crystal dome. Look into the dome. Pause to peer into the depths of the orb. A thousand shapes dance within, shifting and changing, as though you saw the reflections from the eyes of a hundred different people. The effect, the effect is quite mesmeric. Cast a spell. It's an orb. It's sus. Consulting the constellations overhead, you bind the spell. A steady voice enters your mind. There is no danger here, the voice declares. Only the certain... Only the certainly... Certainty of illness, infirmity, and death. Nobody escapes it. Well. We might as well touch it. You reach out and touch the orb and find yourself elsewhere. 
He was standing at the top of a high tower, facing an old man wearing a shabby looking crown. Beg, the old man declares. Draw my sword. You find yourself dropping to your knees, begging like a whining dog. I will destroy your land. You understand me. You will aid me. Why are you doing this? You open your mouth to argue, but all that comes out is a single word. Yes. What follows is a strange is a kind of nightmare. You are dragged, in, dragged fighting inside, placid outside, down the steps of the turret towards the cell and hurtled inside. We will come for you when it is time, the Archmage declares. You shake yourself. You are back outside the glass dome. This is far. This is, this is the future. I'll count as the future. Oh, no. I meant to cast a spell. Can I walk back? Can I walk back? No. <laughs> One skeleton is reanimated as you enter, but the animated skeleton moves quickly to block your way, lo loosely gripping a rusty iron, so a rusty sword. We cannot touch the holy place, he whispers. It's for the holy ones alone. Back off. You raise your hands and back away. The skeleton nods, calming himself. I wish to talk to you, you say to the skeleton. The skeleton looks this way and that, as though hunting f for you. Who is there, he asks, voice raspy. Who are you? Ioman. What? What does that mean? Traveler sorcerer, Ioman. Do not mock the gods or they will devour you whole, he cries. I have seen them do it. Bony hand lifts to, to the brow of the skull and clutches, though in desperate thought. You've died, you tell the creature coldly. That's why you cannot remember. Don't be foolish, I'm as alive as you are. Very well. What a question, he says. But then, what is this place? How did I come to be here? The skeleton lifts a bony hand to its forehead. Enough talking. Creature is clearly deranged from whatever magic is at work in this room. You nod and move away. Once more, the skeleton waves his sword in front of the altar, so he does not remember you. Behind him, the jawless one is staring upwards at the whale head and shaken. But let me cast a magic a, sp a spell this time. I think. Oh no, it's not Res. I was gonna say I thought this would have been Res. This I think this room might be Res. What counters Res? Illusion of treasure? Dark? No, dark, dark, dark um, counter to heart. Trying to see what I've got. I'm surprised it's not res. I have dud, which feels like a weird one. <laughs> Give him some treasure? You bind the stars in a pad around you. After a moment, golden jewels begin to spew forth from under your sleeves and under the neck of your boots, rolling away across the ground. But the skeletons seem impervious to the lure of the gold. They barely even register its presence. A headless skeleton, missing one leg, drags itself near to the altar, dried skin scraping off as it goes. He stopped making sense a while ago. Yeah, I, I, I'm struggling to understand how they relate now. There's six. Clone the caster. I don't... That shouldn't do anything. Does? No, this just slows the skeleton. It steps towards you. Its foot seems to hover in the air. You can easily dodge around it now. I can walk up to the altar. Stand before the altar. Look at the altar. The altar is a simple stone block with a few missing... carvings of waves and waving plants. Scratch into the stone is a simple glyph, four slash lines, four. Oh, okay, okay. Collect some dripping water. It's holy water. You unstop one of your empty, empty vials and hold it out, filling it from the water dripping from the whale's mouth. Holy water. Okay, so... The counter in this tower is for the fort door. But we don't know what it is. I can pray at the altar. 
There's a clear space just before the altar. You kneel in it and bow your head. The dripping of water from the carcass overhead slows and deepens, becoming the gentle sound of the tide, and you feel the presence of the whale god, Eilmon. But the voice is distant, confused. The sluggish movements of the whale are transformed, weakened and defined by violence. Pledge myself. You bow your head against the cold stone, and you close your eyes and allow the grace of the whale god to enter your soul. Back away. Back away from the altar as the skeletons die once more. They resurrect once more moments later and... And one, mind again blank, comes to stand between you and the altar. Wait, did I, so uh, did I not... I didn't get the whale god then. Behind you, the clatter as the skeleton collapses once again. Okay, I want to cast another spell on this anyway. This is far. I'm surprised we didn't we weren't the, didn't become well anything there. Maybe we had to climb up it. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought that we might have just disrespected it. Top. <laughs> Who knows the logic at this point? <laughs> Top. No door opens in the dome if there even is one for the spell to act on. But the spell does not fail. And it seems as though the images inside the orb fade, and the dome goes dark. The magic of open encounters... The magic of open encounters the pattern of foresight. Move. On. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so this one is four. Wait, so l let me check the clues then. For open doors... The first is of fire, that's dock. The second is of stone, that's huff. The third is unseen, it's invisibility, we don't have to counter. The fourth is unknown. We know the towers that the invisibility one is in, and the unknown is in. But we just don't know how to counter them. I'm getting low on stamina, it's okay, we'll probably die before too long. I wouldn't worry. Um, let's go to the northern end. Pat winds between crumbling towers and dagger-like buttresses. Pat runs up the far wall of the citadel, passing dangerously close to a large circular pit in the ground. Look at the pit. Nope. The pit is large and perfectly circular, descending into the bare rock below for some distance. Seriously, the water all around does not seem to flow into the hole. Okay, throw a gold coin into the pit. You fling a gold coin into the pit, only for the coin to bounce off something you cannot see and land near your boot. Pick it up once more. Feel in front of me. You reach out with your hands, and sure enough, there is a barrier around the pit, invisible, but as cool to the stone to the touch as stone. The only left and right appears to curve slightly. An invisible tower. Feel for the doorway. Feel, feel over the invisible wall of the tower until you find what, what feels like a doorway. Doorway is an open into the pit below. Stepping through would surely mean stepping into open space. You cannot do it. It's fine, it's just invisible. Step through the door. You step through and walk out across an invisible floor over an empty yawning pit. You dance in the air above the fall, and you hurry back to the pat once more. So, what counters invisibility? It's given a sun. Sh shed light on what is not seen? No. Find the way! No, that counters fix. Zap doesn't counter anything, oddly. Ah yes, the magic of levitation reveals the unknown. Oh wait, people said... Was this the tell? Read minds. For some reason, it is. Rather than receiving any thoughts, instead, the invisible tower in front of you flashes quite unexpectedly into view. Tell Yaz's counterspell has been recorded. Okay, go inside. It's now a normal tower. Let's go in. You approach the next weird tower, wonder what you'll find this time. The inside of the tower is bare, and compared to the others you have seen, quite ordinary. There is no furniture or ornamentation, or at least none that you can see. 
In the center of the room is some, some kind of brass contraption. Look at the contraption. The contraption is a, is a brass figurine, heavily stylized. Its arms are raised and it appears to be dancing. Glittering from one upraised finger is a ring. Take the ring. It's a pearl ring. That seems quite valuable. A good find. Ooh. We can cast invisibility now. Wait. Because, was it? The, the, the tell counters invisibility. We can counter three of the Throbin doors now as well. So the spells we gotta cast is Dark, Huff, and whatever that one was. Yeah? And then we just need to figure out what the room with the skeletons is. If we figure out the room with the skeletons, which is number four, we've got it. Okay, let's just leave. Looking back, it's still quite visible. It seems you've disabled its magic. I don't want to risk anything with that contraption. I just want the ring. After all, why shouldn't I take it? I just need to work out what's going on with these skeletons, and like that's the last counter spell we need. Like like this this is the end one. Okay, chamber of skeletons. Um I am a follower to Eilman, you declare. The priest stops and bows his head. I can see the truth of it. Pray pass. He promptly collapses on the spot. Oh my god, actually, is Eilman. Pray for healing? Thanks, Eilman. You stand before the altar. I'm going to collect some more dripping water. Might as well. Pray at the altar. You kneel at the altar and pray to your to your wet god. You feel the bountiful waves of Eilman's grace wash through your body. I don't want to clamber onto the altar because I'm worried this will disrespect him. I'm very worried what that means. I didn't know I was actually following him because I thought that just didn't come up. But it just didn't display it, it just didn't display the name, but we're definitely following him. I want an option to cast a spell. Clamber onto the altar. Climb up onto the altar of the great head now within arm's reach. The slowed skeleton gurgles incoherently, a gasp of horror lent and stretched. Get down. You clamber back down away from the god. You back away from the altar as the skeletons die once more. They resurrect once more moments later. Mind again blank. Comes the stand between you and the altar. I don't know how to do that one. I need a situation where I can cast a spell to counter them. Okay, uh, the illusion of gold is still here. You had an option, option to cast a spell before I went to the altar, did I? We, did, we didn't work out the, the gold one too, did we? Saab is still missing. You can! Okay, I'll, I'll try it again. Hey, maybe we can do Saab now. No. No, actually, no, we worked out- we worked out with this one. It's probably the goblins. Yeah, the goblins are greedy. Okay, let's go back to the altar. Was there an option to cast a spell? Cast a spell. This is what we want. Okay. Um. Please do purr. You no, you guys. You got you. That's not how the spell system works. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to explain this, but guys, the way the spells work is you have to pick the letters that are here. You can't type any spell. <laughs> Some of you seem to really be struggling with this concept. And I'm sorry. 
to have to say it again. <laughs> it's not there. It's not there. There's a P on the other side. That's because the P is a different character slot. <laughs> it doesn't work. I know some of you are like, it's gonna disappoint some of you. But I can't do it. We tried Dawes. Dawes did not work. Dud probably wouldn't work, because that we, we think that's something else. Rock is already something else. God counters something else. What, what is it? I don't I don't know. It's just rock. You can't do res. No, people are screaming res. You can't do it. Do dud anyway. I might as well. Yeah. Illusion of treasure. No, I, no, we did that before. We did that before. Yeah. It has to be something here. God counters res, maybe? It could be that. Does God counter something else? No, God counters nap. We just gotta try everything. Rock. Don't tell me it's six. Uh, you weave the starlight into your design around you and five clones step out from behind you forming a semicircle. The clones begin to spread across the room. One strays too close to a legless skeleton who grabs for him and drags him to the ground. Watch. You watch as your clone is overwhelmed. The headless skeleton is incredibly fast. It crawls up your clone's body, uh, stabbing frantically with a cracked knife. The clone shudders and dies, and the skeleton drags itself away. Keep watching. Keep watching as the drop of water falls from the whale at the seal and striking your clone. He screams awake, gurgling as the wounds once again overtake him. The second dead is quicker than the first. Seeing the danger, your other clones move to retreat, disappearing as the spell fades. The skeletons all die and are reanimated with a steady rhythm. Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's not six. Six didn't do anything. Not Dawes. We're left with Hot, but the Hot already has a counter. They can't have two counters, can they? Rock. I, I thought it would have been six, yeah. I can try Dawes again. And see if that works. No, that just lets it slip past and you go to the altar. He's a very kind god, he just he just lets you keep praying to him. <laughs> um I don't know what the last Throbin door is going to be then. I, I, I have no idea. From everything we've checked here. Try rock. No, but rock already has a counter. Each spell only has one counter. It's hot. It's not hot. Hot has a counter. Yeah, uh, it, they only have one counter each. I mean, six seemed to aggravate it. By casting unknown spells, the fort is unknown. But I, th there was no unknown spells I could cast there. That's the thing. People are saying it's purr. It, no, purr doesn't do anything. Pur purr is not an option there. I've cast every combination I think I can do. Like, I, I, I don't know what else to try. Just wing it, RT. Are we just gonna go up?
You know what? We'll chance it. We're ready. We'll, we can break the Throven spell. Let's let's do it. Let's let's we'll, we'll make. Oh, don't don't rewind. Okay, let's get out of here. I can chance it. We we can we can just wing it. Okay, uh, I'm a follower. I'm just gonna pray again. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Whale. Okay, I mean, whatever... The, Rez is associated with it. That's all we know. And, you know, thinking about it, I think it's unlikely... Wait, no. It's just gonna be Rez, isn't it? No, of course, because these doors have deadly curses that are designed to kill you. Yo, what's it gonna do? Like, it's gonna spew, like, a deadly fireball at you. It's gonna try to turn you to stone. The third spell is invisibility. It's gonna do something there. And then what? It's gonna revive you? Res is the counter for whatever it does. It has to be, because it's not, it's not an aggressive spell. It has to be. It's not gonna attack you with Res, and Res is clearly involved with that. So I think, I think, so what have we got? So I think, I think we can work it out. I, I think I know what they all are now. And I'm, I'm really going to go out on a limb on this, okay? All right, so let's see. So, check the clues. The poem. The first is a fire. Doc counters that. The second of stone. It casts rock. We have the solution for that. It was foul. The third is unseen. Um, that's invisibility. We learned what that is countered by. It's a skull cap one. The fourth is unknown, but Rez will be the counter. Rez is definitely the counter because what's it gonna? Like, how does it aggressively resurrect you? <laughs> it has to be that. So we're ready. We're ready. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if I can get Elise back. But I'm I'm good to go. This is it. I'm going back to the Tower of Doors one final time to see if I can find her. Oh no, it's the Chamber of Sadness. Turn back. Just turn back. I'm not doing that again. I don't- I don't know the counter to sap. It doesn't even give me a chance to do it. I just get really depressed. I'm a follower. We'll just get a cheeky prey in again. Thanks, Alamon. Very kind, like, this is probably the best god we've had. He healed like 20 health. Okay, so to get back, unfortunately, I gotta go through several towers. Um, that does not, there is not an easy way to return. The sap room said you can cast a spell, but last time I tried to cast a spell, though, uh, my character was like, oh, what's the point? And he just gave up. I could just die. Yo, fuck it. <laughs> Let's go. We're facing this. Okay, move on. Alright. Use an item is now, now an option. That's interesting. Cast a spell. Oh my god, it let me. We get one shot at this, guys. We get one shot. The counter sadness. 
I think it might be pep, but the problem is if we use pep, then my fire water is gone. And I don't I don't want to lose my fire water because even if we learn that it's pep, we can never cast it. Goblins. <laughs> teleport, teleport. Oh, we're in the clear. Move on. Okay, I think it's time to fight the Archmage. I I think we can do it. We've learned We've learned all the spells we need, I think, to get through the doors. We're we're just going to race across town. Back to the room of doors. Yeah, I'm going back to the room of doors. I want to see if I can find her again. To the city. Square. Make a move. Go back to the cat room first. Now, the cat room killed us horrifically the last time we were there. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> That was the most brutal death I think we've had. Okay. Just racing. Gotta get back to the doors. Because the doors also take us, like, deep into the fortress, too. Because we don't have the key for, uh, like, like the, the thing there around. Many people are simply passing. There are guards patrolling frequently here. Okay, we just gotta keep making a move. West side. Stars are settling in. Continue along the road. Midnight air. You better try and sleep when you find somewhere safe. Yeah, it's kind of... I can quickly duck in here and see if I can sleep. Might as well. Um... We haven't gone to the broken buildings. Oh! No, it... <laughs> well, I'm ready to sleep for the night now. Pick your way through broken buildings and through the wreckage of fallen homes. Seems the city once housed a lot more people than it does now. Perhaps life is simply ebbing away. Across the ruins, you make out the stalls and tents of the market. It's a quiet, it is quiet for the night. It must be morning by now. We've been awake all night and are weaker for it. Okay. Keep walking away from the guards. Continue walking to towards them, your pace steady and breath even. Near in the three, you can make out snatches of talk. How do you manage it, one asks. If I said the word, how could I do it? No, no, the captain replies. You need to know how to say it, using your will to channel the light. Not just a matter of spouting off a word or two. The guards nod to you as they pass by, but pay you no more notice. Continue along the short alley. Did we ever go up this way? Turn down the street. Oh, that's where the pirate was before. Rainy. Did the cutlass. Just robbing people. Okay. To the doors. To the doors. We must keep going. We're gonna finish this. And we're gonna pick up some more sand too. Okay, uh, how did we get through all these towers before as well? Because the tower we need is in the back. Was it the one with the grey roof first? I think you can just zip through all of them. Really? That's going to be very handy if we can. We're not doing the cat tower again. No. This is the one with the shield. 
What was the counter for the shield? I think it was, yeah, it was mud, wasn't it? That's what they give you the sand for. There we go. Fast spell encounter, uh, encountered. We're all good. We, we've done all of this before. Just some yellow sand. Uh, do we go to the north tower and across, or do we go take, like, take the east tower? I think we took the east tower, because I remember fighting the bears. Yeah, let's go this way. The space feels protected, simple, and calm. Can I just move on? There's nothing stopping me from moving on in any direction, but as soon as you step outside, you feel the clouds of manpan gathering overhead. Yep, that's fine. Edge around the hole. Oh, so we retain our knowledge of it too. That's interesting. So I don't have to go into that fight again knowing that like the, the, the monsters are down the pit. There's a near tower. This one is the one we took to get around before. North tower. This was the wall. How did we break the wall before? It was pop. Thank you. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess we're taking a new route, lads. Gonna have to go to the east. Don't, I don't have it. Yeah. The wind picks up as the evening draws on. This room contains a large table surrounded by several chairs. Enter the room. You approach the table and the pauses you notice a creature sitting so still you had not previously spotted him. They are filling with an assortment of tools and murmuring quietly. Moreover, the creature has two heads. Head for the far door. Head around the edge of the room for the far door and slips through it before anything can stop you. <laughs> Good puzzle. Turn over to the next tower before the wind can snatch you from the walkway. The sun lowers towards the horizon. You venture into the room as black as black as a coal mine. There is no light at all. Even the sunshine at your back does not reach inside the space. You step into the room. The door behind you slams shut. You're now in total darkness. Cast a spell. This is sun. Yeah, this is this is very very straightforward one. And before it doesn't give sun as an option. <laughs> Sun, the fog suns counter spells when recorded in your spell, but we already knew that one. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. Craft the enchantment to the sun jewel, but starts to glow with a magical white glow, but the jewel's light does not brighten. Instead, the whole room clears, its terrible darkness lifting. Here we go. You look around the now clear chamber. The room is perfectly well lit, and you see it laid out with spikes and blades. In the center is a small wooden contraption with arms positioned to capture starlight. This, then, is a grimalkin. You have heard of such things, but never seen one before. Is a machine of some kind. No, I have seen one before. Oh, I remember this fucker in uh, the book three. No, get out of there. Get out of there. Get out of there. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we did see one of those. Okay, we're back in the door tower. Okay, look at the skeleton. Look at the fragments. We can take the bronze ring again. Okay, make a move. Uh, and we can cast a spell. What I want to do is I want to go to the tower next to this one. Because I think I, I now have the counter for that one, don't I? Or do I? For the third one, it was... It's invisibility. That tower was marked three. It's Tell, isn't it? I can counter that other tower if I want. So for this one to get true, I think we just do a quick how. Okay, lead you to an exit. Yep. And now we, we, we can get the official, we can just get this one done. See if there's anything of note in here. 
Empty except for a brass sphere in the center, capped with a black cloth. What was this one? This one was three. I have some water still, guys. Thank you, though, for the concern. I'm doing okay. Yaz, cause invisibility. You gather the constellations to order around you, but instead of turning invisible as you expect it, the sphere in the middle of the tower simply stops rotating, and nothing else occurs. The sphere is now quite still. Look at the black cloth. You can remove the cloth from the sphere. You can look at the white circle. Okay, so it, it doesn't really tell us anything new there. The counter spell, like, the other one is the one where you're supposed to learn the counter spell. But that was the other end of it. Okay. Back into the tower doors then. Okay, and I have... I have the ring. Open a random door. Um... Uh, it's not giving me the option to start opening more doors. We're just looking out over a deep drop. You step quickly back and immediately lose track of which door that one was. Look through the pack for something to help keep your bearings. You look through your pack for something to help you keep your bearings. Pull out the compass. Neil hangs steadily, filling you with confidence. With the aid of the compass, you feel fairly confident of which door is which. That's an odd one. Can we not get her back? We rewound time. You waste no time pulling out your compass. The needle hangs steady, but I don't want the compass. I want to open a random door. Oh no, this is problematic too, because this teleported us into the fortress before. How do we get in now? If I ca cast how, it just tell it gives me a way to leave. Uh oh. This is really bad. Can I teleport? <laughs> Well, here we go. We reappear just outside the tower. Oh no, so we went all this way for her and she's not even here. And it's not taking us inside. How do we get inside the tower now? Do I just walk in? That door was locked before. Oh no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Get me, get me, get me true here. Leave true here, leave true here. I can go back through here. All the light dies in the room. How do I actually get in to counter him now? Because we were relying on that- We were relying on that door to get us in. Leave the room, Grimalkin. Go back to the west. Oh no. You continue along the bridge back to the tower beyond. The night is drawn on. You return to the chamber of the two-headed philosopher. The creature is still here, arguing with itself. You go to take a seat at the table, but something odd catches the corner of your eye. And you look over your shoulder. The door you came in by has vanished. The creature watches patiently, oblivious to any change. We didn't find the library either. Where's the library? <laughs> okay, where is the door? Door is a meaningless cops and abs concept, a absent of a room, the right head says. So my question is nonsensical. No, no, that is wrong. The presence of a door creates a room. Otherwise, it would be a box, the he left head replies. I am an idiot, the right retorts. If that were true, Gated fields will be rooms. In the middle of the table is a candle of blood red wax. We were learned we were warned about the blood red candle. Do not take that. I I need to get out of this room.
Find safe passage. The voice does not appear. Instead, the creature begins squabbling with itself again. Okay. Wait, can I teleport? <laughs> this fucking ring. Oh no. It's only toward to protrude the very air, but you simply appear on the other side of the table. You cannot teleport through solid stone. Spellcast in the right head remarks. A noble science. Sorcerers make for terrible scholars, the left says. They barely have any appreciation for the harmonic cancellation that is the foundation of the very art. I'm going to die in this room. I got I gotta get out of here. I I got I gotta get out of here. Don't have dim. Don't have zap. Sus. That's danger. There's no danger here. Okay, converse with the creature. Take a seat at the table and open your mouth, but I interrupt before you can speak. Finally, someone willing to be educated, the left head says, banging his fist on the table and making the pile of tools jump. Is that a comment about me, the right retorts? What can you tell me about the college, you demand? The place of learning most of it has been forgotten, one head remarks. But if forgotten, does it still exist, the other replies. It seems likely the first replies is though bored. The sands of death had run here, unseen for thousands of years. But they are not forgotten, the other returns, triumphantly, as you have just proved. I'd like to learn from you. Well, I have some thoughts regarding the persistence of objects if you're interested. The left begins with pride. Only m midly objectionable, the right head adds. Sure. You are then subjected to a lengthy, torturous lecture. It is extremely difficult to follow, but you feel as if you learned quite a bit from listening. How do I leave? There, you fool. The right head points with the creature's left hand towards a blank wall. There is no door there. Of course there is, the right says. I am wrong. The door is right there, the left interjects, pointing with the right hand towards a different, equally blank spot on the wall. Wasn't that instructive? The right head says, beaming. How do I get out? <laughs> But where is the door? Why, it's over there, they say, pointing in two different directions. Neither to your eyes presents a door. I'm not taking that candle. What else have I got? Sus? Fix? Far, see the future. You see an unfamiliar man stand in this very room. He reaches for one of the tools on the table, but is unable to lift it. He strains to pick it up, eventually giving up, panting with effort. The tools must be too heavy, or perhaps stuck to the tabletop. Look over the table. Cast your eyes over the table. Tools are scattered across it. Ah, the left head says, catching your eye. That was a fascinating topic. I disagreed about the tool's relationship to its worker. If someone builds a chair, how much responsibility does the hammer have? This is like a fever dream. But where did the tools come from? I do not understand, the right says. I needed them for an example of my argument, the left says. So they are here. Consider a door. <laughs> You begin, initiating a debate about the distinction between entering and leaving. The door is surely two-sided, but quite symmetrical. So entering and leaving are purely in the eye of the observer. But who is that? The left head peers at you. Where are they, you mean? That's a good point, isn't it? It seems unsure. The right head frowns. Every door is built, it replies, thoughtfully. Surely the building of a door constitutes an initial placement observation. But how can one build an empty doorway? If it can be conceived, it can be built, the right head says quickly. But we conceive of much as an of much as negative space and must build the container, replies the left. In the case of a doorway, what do you think? You ask, at neither of them in particular. The issue of doors is a special case, the left head says. The wider issue of the movement of the point of observation and the prin principle of constancy. I'm dying in this room, but like in real life. <laughs> this is the worst one yet. It is designed to torture you. Look at the walls. 
You sneak a glimpse over your shoulder, the dim outline of a door has formed either side of the room. You let them continue to argue, and the doors in the walls grow solid and firm. Then you race for an exit, leaving the heads of the creature too busy arguing to notice. Oh, let's never go that way again. Oh, Jesus Christ. That was awful. Oh, I hated that. Get edge around the hole. I want a game of only that tower. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus, I couldn't imagine anything worse. Oh, the shield around it has returned? Um, okay, we'll just cast some sand again. Mud. Philosophy Tower. I mean, I think if, that, if I was to guess, that one was like Yap or something. Uh, like, just like one of the conversation ones. This is like everything I hate about Alice in Wonderland in one tower. <laughs> During the past day, you almost died at the hands of the talking heads. Okay, move on. Quite badly injured right now. Wait! Ioman, you're a gent. Oh, the early morning sun makes the air glow. Sand off just the path, you see two laborers leaning on their shovels next to a pit. I still don't understand the shorter one is saying. Look at the trench. You glance over at the trench. It's about six feet long and four feet wide and goes down some depth. Just... Just walk on. Keep going. Continue along the road. Yeah, it's all going cool. We got a clue from the heads. I think. The sands of death flow in the inner college. Oh, oh god. Alright. Do we ever get to the college? With the library? That's the Archmage's tower. It's a big boy thing. We didn't go into this build. Maybe that has something to do with it. I did get the ring back too. I can I can go back and deliver the ring. The towers are the inner college, are they? Oh right. Okay, so all the all these buildings here is the college, right? The beggar is an option. What's this? You walk over to the well where an old woman, little more than a bundle of rags, sits. She does not look at you as you approach. Look at the woman. Her face is obscured by a shapeless hood. She rarely acknowledges anyone, not even holding out her head for alms. Greet her. Greetings, old woman. Oh, she's like covered in goop. Her voice, her voice when she speaks is raspy, barely above a whisper. And her eyes, when they meet yours, are smooth, glossy black. There you are, my love. Found you. Now. Spare an old blind woman a coin. Enough to buy a crust of bread, perhaps. Give her a coin. Toss her a coin, a coin onto her lap, and she rocks back and forth, grinning. Oh, love, you have made Javine a happier woman. Bless you for helping me live out my last days. Pauses to test a coin between her teeth, and nods. Now, love, anything else for an old blind woman? Who are you? Well now, my love, most call- Most call me Hergur Fleur! But you can call me Javine. It's my prettier name. Um... And now you're a beggar. I was a healer before, but now yes, now I sit, but now I beg. I sit here every day with little to pass the time. With the torment and I receive from the sight masters. Why'd you stop healing? I couldn't heal once my eyes went, she said. No one has much use for a blind healer, do they? Or a blind anything, if you listen to the sight monsters from Analand. Sight masters torment you. Those bug-eyed monsters delight in my suffering. One lack in sight is a source of much curiosity to them. Half of them want to kill me, and half of them are in love with me. And those halves aren't entirely separate halves. I hate the sight masters. 
I have cause. Every day they pass by, often different groups. Every day they jeer at me. If you really want to help an old woman, find one and cut off its head for me. Are you born in Mampang? No, there's, there's those here who don't believe in the world beyond, but that's where I came from. I lived in a small village on the shores of Earthend. A healer priest from Dadu Yadu was shipwrecked there, and he took me on as an apprentice. I loved him, and then abandoned him. I came to Manpang against the wishes. His wishes, drawn by the promise of fortune in the Archmage's service. Who worked for the Archmage? Everyone in Manpang works for the Archmage, love. The Citadel is his engine and we turn its wheels. We work to further his cause and his army. She yawns with such vigor that she throws a cascade of spittle onto your shoulder. What a lovely chat, Javeen says. I so rarely get to talk to these days, loves. Most guards only spit when they talk. Come back any time, she grins. Especially if you slay one of the Sightmasters. Draws a line across her throat. Did I kill a Sightmaster? Have I? You're... I've killed a Sightmaster, you lie. She peers at you. You're a silver-tongued one, aren't you? you? Know all the right things to say. But it's no good. I'm not stupid. I got sight. You leave the woman huddled by the well. No, I left them. I let them live. That's right. The middle of the day is hot. Okay, um, let's try and break in. Let's go. Okay, being so near the gates, there's a great number of travelers. Yep, we've had that before. Which way now? The north side. Oh, I forgot to check the big building, didn't I? I forgot to give back the ring. Oh, okay, I'm going to give back the ring again. Hang on. And I'm actually going to tell her what happened uh, to her husband. Okay, make a move. Jesus, we've wandered a lot now. <laughs> There's a tavern, but we can go by the alleys too. We're going to go by the alleys. Explore the alleys. We need to find that house again. Look left. Look right. Go left. Yeah, it emerges back by the fire pit. I can spend the night by the fire if I so choose. Wait, no, no, I... I thought I was going to move on and explore the alley again. Okay, crossroads. Explore the alleys. It's pointless to explore until morning. Oh, okay, spend the night by the fire then. Go around the fire, pay you no attention. Close my eyes. Not yet Eden's day, but you have no provisions. Only a single vial of blimberry juice. We need to keep that. Because that's a counterspell for one of the doors. Have a dream. Long night is restless with visions. You're on, lying on cool, moist ground under a tall, swaying tree. There's a nagging pain in your leg. And you look down to see a sapling growing up through your tie. Try to move. You try to move away, but attach to the ground as though the roots of the sapling were your own tendons. We stand in a crowd of others. Analanders flee in a darkness gather in the east. You're all struggling to get aboard a boat, but one by one, people are turned to stone where they stand. Through it all, you feel the heat of Analand burning, should your quest fail. We lost some gold. Yeah, we didn't, like, help a beggar. We lost money. <laughs> that's how that's phrased. Keep walking. Look at the house. This was the house, yeah? Yes, it was. Okay. Knock. Walk inside. Don't steal from her again. We need to go upstairs. And then she kind of comes back in. There's flowers everywhere. It's important. It... it Likes to note that there's a lot of flowers. 
Okay, so she's come back home. Announce myself. I mean you no harm. Why is this the worst house? I walk the alleys. Randomly she puts in. This used to be a nice area, you know. The neighborhood has really gone downhill. Okay, so we need to say we're not a guard again. I'm not from Mampang. There's a lush and verdant world. Name's Mocha. Okay, so ask for something to eat. May I ask you some questions? Okay. Where are your children? They were playing outside. You a widow? My husband died after our twins were born, at least I think I did. He was always tr exploring, trying to find ways out of the citadel. Convinced there was a better life to be had beyond the walls. I'm sorry. I can be honest, but it's been so many years. Have you ever wanted to leave Mampang? It's not like that. Show her the bronze ring. Where did you get this? So, do you recognize it first, and then it gives the option? To mention it. I found it on a corpse. I'm not surprised. He's been gone a long time. <laughs> well. I hope. <laughs> that payoff. Was worth it. For all that. What's the stake? I'm so sorry she replies, I don't feel like playing anymore. <laughs> she doesn't even want to play Swindle Stones. Well, that was incredibly disappointing. <laughs> okay, no more faffing about. Let's kill the Archmage. Time for the end. We've been we've been doing this six hours today. Move on. Big build. Boss fight. Make a move. No, there, there's an archway there. I, I don't care. We're going up. North side. Nearby is a pillar, a lone prisoner shackled in a bustling markets in full swing. Well, you're dead. Sorry, prisoner. <laughs> you walk across the square towards the paved lane on the north side. Unlike most of the roads in Mampang, it is clean and sparsely populated. It curves around the mountain on which the Archmage's tower stands, climbing slowly. The sun is beginning to lower and the air begins to cool. A few yards from the square, a group of guards block the road. They stand casual but alert, shelter in the shade of a nearby hut. Two of them hold snarling dogs on chains. Make a move. You have to move. If you stand here too long, you'll attract attention. I can approach the guards or I can slip round the hut. Which way is better? Hmm. I'm gonna go around. Yeah. We want to get up to this. We sail around the edge of the building. The road onwards is now within reach. The road ahead. Guard post is well placed. A long, clear stretch of road leads in both directions. We'll turn around the slope to the north. Wait a moment. You wait, watching. The guards haven't noticed you. And are mostly concentrating on the road to the square, rather than the road behind them. Slip out northwards. Slip back onto the road, north of the guard post. Oh, walk quickly or slowly. <laughs> I don't like it when it asks. Slowly blend in. You walk up the you walk up the road trying to draw no attention, but you've barely gone five steps before there's a shout from behind. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mr. Guard. Turn around, a guard walks up to you. Taken in by your disguise, the guards give you a sharp salute. All right, one asks. Long shift. 
Ah, uh, yes, been here for hours. Nothing going on, of course. Looking forward to watching the fights at the mess hall. Ahem, sir. Move on. You're about to move on when a passing beggar stumbles into the guard. Watch it, she yells, and shoves him aside. The beggar, clearly drunk, mumbles an apology. Not good enough, the guard snarls, advancing on him. Do nothing. You stand back and do nothing to draw attention to yourself. The guard draws her sword and slices the man's legs from behind. He cries and collapses as he tries to rise. You won't be running away, from, running from anything for a while now, the guard says. The beggar crawls away. Howling. Uh, clap on the shoulder, like, a cost. What does a cost mean? I want, I want to, like, pat her on the back. It's like, ah, oh, Jesus, good one. <laughs> clap her on the shoulder. You clap her on the shoulder. Well, you're an alright sort, the guard remarks, still chortling to herself. Go on through. And if I see you in the mess hall, we'll down a flagon or two. I made a friend. Then you climbing up the north road. Move on. There's no turning back. Top of the road. Road ends in a small wooden door built into a wooden palisade. The door, door appears unguarded. unguarded. You tug on the door, it's locked. Climb the palisade. You haul yourself up using the rivets in the wood to climb. For a short haul, you're at the top and drop easily down onto the other side. Pick yourself up. You stand in a narrow alleyway. The wall's high on both sides. Feel is suddenly that of a fortress. Tightly mangled and harsh, grown like a fungus on the outside of the central tower. There'll be no way back now. The sun is sinking. It will be night soon. Keep my head down. Keep your head bowed low under your plumed helmet. If anyone realize who you are, they will not hesitate to turn you in. The casual cruelty of this place will only grow worse. You are entering the hornet's nest now. The alleyway turns to the right, but on the left is a low iron doorway. The door down to the city is locked. Okay, let's move on. You can approach the door and make your way down the alley, but there's no way back. We're back here. Now, the problem we had before is this walkway here. They caught us before. So, I, I need... We need to find a way to actually get through... Because we can't rely on the door to get this to the other side. We have everything we need to get the crown of kings now, I think. I, I can just make a move. There was nothing in any of these rooms that helped us. This was just the torture chamber. If I can cast invisibility, that will help. Yeah, it'll be a good idea not to stand too long. We had We had this a while back. Alley's end. Okay, you are nearing the end of the alleyway and the guard iron door. Another rather narrow door is near, nearby. It size up the guards. Gas a sidelong glance at the guards by the far door, sizing them up. They are birdmen, tall, strong, with savage clawed talons and beaks like pickaxes. One is missing a wing. They have seen you, but do not approach or call out. Instead, hold them to their posts. How do we get past? Moving on before did not work. You can slip inside the narrow doorway or approach the guards. Can I just... I, I, if I pull my sword, will I be able to fight? We have to try it. Approach this iron door at the alley's end. The two the two birdmen guards stiffen at your approach, gripping their halberds more tightly. Did I try walk past before? <laughs> Jesse, good to see you here. I think my You did, it didn't work. You walked past before. Greet him. Greetings, what do you want? The birdmaid says, clipping her words. Oh no. 
Yeah, they arrested me before. It didn't work. Down to side, soldier. The captured halberds do not move. Captains have authority in the city, the bird may reply. But that doesn't grant free movement up here. Let me pass. Your tone stops them in their tracks. Why? Who are you? This is a bold lie. Mm. I am the Archmage himself. No one sees the Archmage. What a crock. You land on your back, the impact forcing the air from your lungs. Draw my sword. Okay. Violence is the answer sometimes. Let's go. Come on, you bastard. Get him down. Flawless fight. Other from the effort, you sheathe your legendary sword. The birdman regains consciousness. Seeing the body of his companion, he flees without another word, avoiding whatever passes for justice in this place. The way clear, you head through the iron door and close it behind you. I'll never doubt violence again. It was so easy. You emerge from the iron door, and then a night begins. You find a place to sleep. This is- <laughs> yeah, let's just sleep in the courtyard. <laughs> this is the east side of a wide courtyard that sits below the sorcerer's spike of Mampang. Guards mill this way and that. Short distance away, a wide set of steps lead up to the tower doors. The iron door leads south out of the courtyard, and the door leads away into a nearby turret. Make a move. Steps to the sorcerer's spike are right in front of you. There is nothing stopping you climbing them and taking a look at the Throbin doors for yourself. There's something over here though. Step out into the center of the square, trusting to your, di trusting to your disguise to keep you safe. Night is gathering all around you. Thick oily smells drifting from, drift from a building to the north. The most impressive sight here is the deep, towering flight of steps that leads up towards the door in the inner tower itself. On the other side of the yard is a familiar large block of wood. Yeah, it's very familiar because that's where Goofy fucking beheaded me. Okay, make a move. After months of walking, you have finally come inside of your goal. The great seal Throbin doors stand before you. Top of the stairs. That's the mess hall there. Uh, I want to I'm going up the stairs. Let, let, let's go. Um, Ailman, you're a, you're a saint. Up we go. You make your way to the base of the great steps that lead up to the sorcerer's spike. The moon rises. Look up at the doors. You lift your eyes upwards to the famous Throbin doors that protect the Archmage from Mampang, or the other way around, perhaps. You've been told they are guarded by spells. You steal yourself for great danger. Okay. So... And so the, the, this poem is what we're trusting. If this poem is wrong, we're really fucked. First is of fire, dock. Second is of stone. That was huff, I think. Third is unseen. It was tell. The force is unknown. The solution is res. The solution is res. I don't know what the spell is, but it's res. Climb or back away. Your heart is in your mouth. The inner sanctum lies within reach. Up we go. You make your way, w one by one, up the enormous steps. The tower looms above you like never before. The tower looms above you like never before. I don't know why I paused there. Each step is carved with a word in the oldest tongue, spelling out a message for those who approach the dark heart of Mampang. Read the message. The message is spelled out in one pictograph word at a time, one per step. Those who climb must comprehend, enter or else near descend. The symbols chosen are unusual. They are all the same viewed from either direction. Keep climbing. You steady your nerve and continue the climb. Oh my god, look at this. Sorcerer Spike. The doors. You stand by the colossal doors at the top of the stairs. The moon moves slowly across the dark sky. 
A silence descends, as though this was a quieter corner of the city than any other. Perhaps it has something to do with the doors themselves. Certainly a heavy magic ex exudes from them. Look at the doors. They seem simple enough if large. The large wooden panels are covered in ornate carvings. Someone has left a pack here by the door. What's in the pack? Look in the pack. Or if someone else tried to open these doors once. The pack lies discarded just to one side of the steps. It's a little charred. Open the pack. Inside are a few glass bottles. Look at them. It's a set of potions. Blimberry, blessed water, fire water, and what looks like a po poison. What a stroke of luck if you don't have these ingredients collected for the doors. Take them. Okay, trace out the carvings on the door. Okay, cast a spell. We need we need to open the doors. Here we go. The first door is dock. Cast a spell across your potion and it begins to glow and fizz. Pour the potion on the door handle. Is this how it works? The potion sizzles sharply as it slicks across the handle, but it does not boil away in moments as you might have expected. After a moment, it seems to cool. Do I open- this is the first door, so I open the first door, yeah? Or do I just wait? Wait a moment. You wait, nothing happens, there are no explosions or counterattacks. Everything is still. Open the door. You grasp the door handle and turn, only to be stopped short. There is no trap, no explosion, but you have not opened the door. The do but the door is still not open. You survive one of its traps, but surely there will be more. Okay, so we turn the handle. You've not opened the door, but the door is still not open. So, next is the second spell. Foul is next. This counters the petrification. You know, some people just use a key for their door. The Archmage, like, he's got like one of those high-tech bolt systems. Bind the constellations into your design around you, but although you've completed the spell, it seems to have no effect and you do not float into the air as you would expect it. Try the door handle. Tentatively, you reach out for the door handle, but sure enough, nothing happens. It's quite safe. Open the spell. Open the door. Trust the door handle. Now completely safe. The door opens. Then quite suddenly, the door shimmers and disappears from sight entirely. The passageway beyond is revealed. Okay, cast a spell. This one is Tell. Read minds. Drawing the skull cap from your pack, you cast a spell. A moment later, the door is visible once more. Now you can see it, your hopes lift suddenly. The door to the sorcerer's spike of Manpang hangs a crack ajar. A good shove will open it. But you cannot help but feel there is another trap to over be overcome. There is a message on the door now. That was not visible previously. Do we read the message first? Um, if I can cast res, I'm just gonna cast res. If I can cast res, I'm just gonna do it. It could be a trap. It, it, we could just read the inscription and it's like, Hey, you're about to die, little JK. You know, and, and uh, I, I, I don't want that to happen. Res. Take the vial of holy water from your pack and cast your spell. The water begins to shimmer and shine with an inner light. Pour the water on the door. Pour the glittering water over the handle of the door. It seems to soak into the wood without any noticeable effect. Whether it had any effect on the door is impossible to say. I can read the message now. You trace out the message on the door. Words of the most ancient tongue. I am protected by the worst force in the world retreat for. I will take all your yesterdays, and I will take all your tomorrows. It's time. It's a Zed spell. But we've, we've casted it. Resurrection is the counter to Zed. Push open the door. You reach for the door to push, only to feel a crackling of energy as your fingers near the wood. You snatch your hand back quickly. I... I did do it.
It's trying to scare me. Do I... Drink... The potion? Can I cast it? I have a second vial of holy water. Oh, that is dastardly if the last one you have to drink it. Drink the holy water. You drink the holy water, feeling it sizzling in your throat, then it's gone. Okay. I drank a holy water. I poured one on the door. Push the door. There's no other way to know. You reach out for the wood and allow your fingers to connect with it. The effect is instant. A fire erupting from the wood and down into your arms. You. Indeed, you feel refreshed. So your body had been destroyed and then built anew. Your maximum stamina has increased. Step without difficulty through the Throbin door and into the tower beyond. Christ. Down two new clues and another clue has been updated. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in. Takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the dark. You are inside the Tower of Mampang. The only way is forwards now. There can be no turning back. Now the problem is... Does defeating the door undo the Zed curse? Because that's what I don't know. And I may still be missing something. Okay, well it takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the dark. You're inside the Tower of Mampang. The only way is forwards now. There can be no turning back. Keep going. Make your way further along the way- further along the passageway. Footsteps echoing on the cold stone. Reach the base of a wide flight of stairs. They seem to fill the space of the tower, as though whatever lived here was impossibly wide. A few closed doors lead off to other rooms in the tower. Doors. You look over the doors. They seem ancient. One appears chewed. Red knows who lives here. It would surely do you little good to find out. The climb is exhausting and you quickly lose count of the steps. There are no windows and no doors. Nothing to measure your progress by. So the tower is screwing downwards into the ground with every step you take. I think we're gonna have to wing it. Yeah, this is the end. We're approaching it. After some time, you spy a door up ahead, set inside the inside wall of the tower. Let's look at the door. From here, you can barely see the outline, but it seems to be of dark wood with an iron grill. You pace forward. It's every sense on high alert. The cell. The passageway stops by a heavy door. It is clearly a cell with its tiny iron grill. A hook is fixed directly opposite, no doubt to taunt prisoners with the, within, with the side of the key. But the hook is empty. The stairs continue upwards from here. I'm gonna keep going. The stairs continue upwards. That room's a circle. And we gotta fight this Archmage. The stairs reach a landing that curves around the tower. A colored glow spills across the stones from a large stained window shining despite the darkness outside. Look at the window. The window is made of colored panels of glass, each glowing with an inner light. They depict a coiled dragon of some kind, its body snaking out of a chasm in the earth. Where its lower jaw te lower teeth should be stand a row of sorcerers, arms upstretched. Head along the land and wary for traps. Okay, we have to go into this room. The sealed door. There's an archway here, but it contains a recessed stone wall, as if someone had bricked over a doorway. Curious, is this... Is, is this the library? It was knock twice and pray. Is the, have we actually found the library? Inner college poem, The Sounds of Death. Minimites. It's not. It said. I said I had new clues. The blood candle. Not let you away with the blood candle. Okay. 
Tap the wall. You tap on the wall. It feels like solid stone, but one stone stone you tap has a faint ring on to it. Knock twice. You knock on the stone twice and emits a soft hum. Place my hands as in prayer. You push your hands together as though in prayer, then touch your little fingers against the wall. The humming becomes louder and then the wall vanishes. Here we go. We're climbing. You walk inside to discover a large library. Bookshelves line the walls, and more books are stacked on a desk in, in the corner. You pull a book at random to check the title. Twelve Medals of Summoning. Taking a few more, you see that every book concerns magic. You have found the Archmage's personal collection. Can I look around the room? Is this safe? You've never seen so many books of magic in one place. A whole libraries of spell books containing every variant, every minute detail of the art of spellcasting. The Archmage's power must be truly vast, but access to so much knowledge. The library is dead silent and dusty. Clearly no servants come here. This place is for the Archmage alone. Sleep right here? I don't think sleeping is good. Can we read some of the books? Do you think we'll get away with it? There could be something here. This may be our last chance to find something for the Z spell. Use sus. Yeah, I'll use sus. There's no sus. <laughs> There's fine safe passage. Which isn't gonna help us here. Do I get far? See the future. You see yourself reaching for a book and staring at it from this angle and that as though it was a book that had not been written on a flat plane. Then you look up, walk across the room, and discover through a, through a door that in the orb you cannot see. Disappear through a door in the orb you cannot see. So we, we need to pull a book. There's a secret secret staircase. Pull out a book. The perception of perception. Artifacts of teleportation. Magical prisons. Um, prisons, because that might relate to the Zed curse? Maybe? Oh, people are really going for perception. Do you think perception- can we read all of them? If we can read all of them, it's fine. Oh, uh, there was a guy who said he was imprisoned, wasn't there? Read Magical Prisons. You open the book. The first few pages are dry, narrated in a low, soft voice. Eventually, the voice stops reading. Who are you, it demands. You're not the Archmage. This is the guy. Who are you? I am Valakwish, the greatest Archmage the fortress ever had. I swelled our numbers. I, thought, I taught peasants to till the fields with spells of giantism. I built the portal traps of Kari and distributed their secrets among its people. I did many acts of wonder, and you can read all about them in my book. Look through the book. He skimmed through the book. The various things mentioned by the book are indeed included, along with some other anecdotes. Found of the Inner College of Mampang, for instance, for the study of magic. <laughs> Shameless plug. The two-headed creature talked about perception. He did. Could I just... Do I let him out? I... I don't know. You're inside this book. Surely that's obvious, replies the book. And there's only one way you end up in a book. What way is that? You become famous, the voice replies. No one would write a book about you otherwise. The book leaps a little in your palm. Now, dear reader, there's a rhyme at the front of this volume. Perhaps you could read it out for me. <laughs> let's just, uh, let's just close that. 
push that one back on the shelf. Perception of Perception. You lift down the Perception book and open it to find the contents are a single elaborate di diagram. As your eyes, tra eyes traces its lines and its outline, you find yourself becoming acutely aware of hidden meanings and references within the art. Though this book is teaching you how to see what is hidden. Keep reading. Continue to follow the diagram, become acutely aware of your own heartbeat. Oh god, are all of these trapped? I don't want to die after all this. Like, you died in the library. Stop, you'll die. Put the book back. When you put the book- when you look up from the book, you are startled to see you are looking at another door across the room which you had not seen before. Artifacts of teleportation. The writing is crabbed and dense, and you have to lean over the tome to make sense of it. The author writes that spells of teleportation can be attuned to mundane objects. Unlike most spells, the text reads, certain kinds of teleportation do not need a Grimalkin to function. Uh, I'm very familiar with that. This one seems quite safe. Fl flicking further through the book, you discover that some writing has appeared on the page. It now reads, teleportation requires the rotation of elements of reality and separation from other elements of reality. The pivot for such a movement must be a fixed astral point. At the same time, you notice your pack feels lighter. Oh no. Three new books have also appeared on the shelf. Look at my pack. Oh, it's just the Orb of Crystal. Okay. I can... The ring! I don't even trust it. It's still here. Five meshes of holy water! Jesus, we stocked up. We didn't even need to worry about, like, at the door when we were, like, trying on the handle. Like, we could have, like, put it on the handle, splash some on, dunk some over our hair, take a sip. <laughs> we had so much holy water. Look at the new books. Oh, God. Look over the spines that appeared on the shelf. 18 years of spider fist, a tree dies, an astrological shift, and on the heat of magical combustion. None seem particularly important. Astrological shift? Wait. You, gra you grab a tree, tree dies on astrological shift and flick through it, discovering only a dry explanation of the heavens moving. However, the orb slides out from between the covers. How it would fit it inside is unclear. There's an orb in there, is there? Did I just get the orb back? Okay. Um. Eat a magical combustion. This is taking stamina, too. Oh no, just this one. The moment on the heat of magical combustion is in your hands, it bursts into flames. You fling the book away, but not before your hands and chest are badly burnt. They've already began to, begun to painfully blister. Is there anything else here? 18 uses of spider fish. Okay, now these are starting to hurt us. Yeah, as, you, as soon as your finger touches the paper, you begin to feel woozy. Placing the book down, you grab a shelf for support. Poison. With spider fish venom, no less. After a few minutes of violent shivering, you're able to focus again. Only lightly touching the page means meant a small dose. So you'll feel rather uneasy. It's time to move on. I can sleep here. Do I sleep here? Because I think he's gonna know. He's gonna know. Move onwards. You exit the library to the steps beyond. Do I have anything to heal? I have one Blimberry. <laughs> Just town one of those. Ah, go on, we'll treat ourselves. <laughs> there we go. You climb another winding set of stairs up to the next level of the tower. You are high now. The, w the wind outside is roaring past, shivering the glass in the windows. This is the top of the tower. The corridor winds around the tower until it reaches a small wooden door, and then a window casts a dim light across the floor. This is the top of the highest tower in Zaman. This is the garret of the Archmage himself. You are mere footsteps. From your goal. Ready myself. Take a deep breath and ready yourself. 
When you reach out and try to handle the door, it turns. The door is not enchanted nor cursed. It's not even locked. After so many miles, so much hardship and pain, the final door is well weighted and requires nothing more than the gentlest of pushes. Swing open. Here we go. This is it. You climb the stairs to the garret. It is a tiny stone room. The walls plastered with astrological charts. Some ancient and some so fresh that their ink still gleams. In the center of the space is a desk. And sitting behind it. Dun da 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 da. Behind the desk is a wizened old man with long shocks of black hair. He holds a quill pen and looks up curiously as you enter. Yes? Can I help you? It's like, yeah? <laughs> do I just, do I make his worst fears? True. Do I say I'm the Analander or do I just say I come from the crown? I'm the Analander. And I have come to take back what is ours. The man looks back at you sadly, silent for a moment. Doubt begins to creep into your heart. Can this truly be the cruel Archmage of Hyde Zaman? He seems tired, even shy. I see you've traveled a long way, he remarks. You must be tired. Please sit. We may talk as equals for a moment. I will not sit. He sighs, as though he had reached your long... As though he, had he walked your long road alongside you. As you wish. Forgive me if I do not get up, however. Reaching across his desk, he lifts a stopper on a decanter and pours out a glass of thick red wine. I know better than to offer you one, he remarks, as he sips his own. I want the crown. Nothing more. Crown of kings? He nods. Of course. He gestures at his head. I'm not wearing it, as you can see. Tell me. I will kill you for it. The Archmage nods. He seems to be chewing something over. Do you know, Annalander, what it is the crown does? Do you understand its power? I actually don't know what it does this entire time. It Presumably it just makes you powerful. What does it do? The crown is a grimalkin. It is set with jewels of gold and lined with rings of bone, and covers the wearer's skull and cloth. It generates spells of both illusion, worship, and mental insight. This... Oh... I know it cannot be left in your hands. You talk of it like a weapon, the Archmage observes. But the crown does not grant victory. The crown causes the wearer's desires to become the unthinking thoughts, reflex actions, and spontaneous whims of those around. It occupies the free will itself. Stalin for time. But it will not sway me. No, I fear. I, I will not sway you from your task, the Archmage replies thoughtfully. You've come a long way for this crown, I see that. You think me evil, a tyrant, but I must explain this to you. I am none of those things. I am the Archmage of the Fortress of Sorcerers, a faden but noble institution. I spend my days trying to repair the terrible destruction wrought on the lands in my care by your ignorant, reckless use of the beacons of past light. Yet you built the fucking beacons. It's an illusion. You placed those beacons yourself. I did, and left untouched, they would have protected the land for 10,000 years. Did you not notice the towers were all sealed? Past light burns within the power of the sun. It must be filtered, measured, but you opened six beacons wide and threw them over my land, over my people. He bangs the desk as he speaks away, almost shouting. There's a tear in the corner of his eyes. There's no other way. No other way to come here. Because of your precious quest. Tell that to the people of Tinpang. His cracked voice quivers with rage. Give me the crown. An endless. Analander, I cannot do that. Even if I wanted you to have it. Because I do not have the crown. And I never did. Don't waste my time. It's not here. You've taken it. By Gred's armpits, this is like talking to a stone wall. For a moment he seems enraged, but then he calms once more. He points with a bony hand. I am so sorry. I know how hard it will be to accept what has been done to you. But can you not, on some level, feel it? Do you not sense that you are not in control of yourself? 
I'm the villain, I think. But I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> I'll kill you. The Archmage does not flinch away. You've been under the spell for some time. I can imagine how it began. Most likely there was a day in Analand, perhaps near the wall, when you woke up and your will was not your own. And since then you have been compelled to march here, to do me harm. Nothing's been done. Are you so sure? Consider this. Do you even know what this crown looks like? This object that you have traveled so far, so single-mindedly to find. It might have been lying on a table in the first village you passed through and you would not have known. Am I correct? I've, uh, I, I've seen the, um, the cover of the book. This is getting real meta. You, the gamer, were evil all along. You could have stopped playing at any point in time, but your actions caused all this bad stuff to happen. You did this, Daniel. It's my purpose. Are you sure he shakes his head? My good man, you have seen the crown already. You have stood in its presence. But you do not remember. Perhaps you think it was just a dream. Such is its power. But what else but the crown could have sent you on a journey as this, at such terrible cost? Never seen it. The Archmage's voice softens. Another question then. You introduce yourself as the Analander, correct? Correct. He smiles. My friend, are you truly so far gone that you do not even know your own name? No, because we do know our own name. Because we told Elise, and it wasn't the Analander. We do have a name. And we did actually mention it. It was not revealed to us as the player. But we did say it. Elise knows our name. His words echo around the tiny room. Paper chats flutter. Your memories of Analan the king and a childhood mem... Childhood and Chalberry Wood all seem suddenly distant, like vague mentions. Half-remembered overheard stories, mere snippets. Oh, don't do this to me. The crown is so powerful, how could my birdman have stolen it from your king? Continues the Archmage gently now. Think, Analander. Think for yourself just once, before you strike me down. Oh no, don't try to remember. Fight it. Fight this. You shake yourself, trying to lose the words of the Archmage, which has settled into your mind with a thousand tiny hooks. How did this quest begin? Waking in the hut in the Norton settlement, sword ready, dreaming of the crown. Where were you before that moment? How did you come to be on this quest, for which you have given so much? I remember everything. Answer me this. How many sisters do you have? What color are your mother's eyes? How old are you? You shouldn't need to think to answer. Draw my sword. Enough of this, you growl, sword springing into your hand. The Archmage begins to talk more, more quickly, evidently afraid. I imagine your king sent you simply to kill me. Your king is the crown, and he knows that we in Mampang Fortress are the only ones capable of countering its power. King's a good man. I think that was true. I think when he began to use his crown, his intentions were good. But now he looks to the fall to the fall of and the goblins overrunning the Shamutanti hills, and he feels there must be leadership. The Archmage sighs. I am sorry, Analander, whoever you truly are. Your whole quest has been a lie. The crown is an Analand, and you are nothing but an assassin. What do I do now? The Archmage nods, holds your gaze for a moment before replying. First you should rest. We'll find you a chamber here in the tower, away from the hustle and bustle below. Then you are somewhat recovered. You will discover what you want to do. Kill the Archmage. Enough of this. You lift your sword to strike, then you pause. Where did that, the, that demand for action come from? What power put the thought of murder in your mind? Surely the Archmage is right. What compelled you to ca cause so much harm on your journey? You do not move. Kill. No. No. I've lost agency. My character's become sentient. The Archmage watches you. You stand quite still, breathing in and out. A clarity is entering your muddled mind. Perhaps you are beginning to overcome your orders, the elderly figure observes. That is good. One step at a time. You find you are speaking. Thank you, Archmage. I have been lost for a long time, and I am far away from home. He nods. I understand. We will offer what hospitality we can. It's most appreciated, you reply. Bow on your head. The Archmage gestures to the door and you take your leave. No.
Several hours passed in the darkened room. You were lying on cold stone. Get up! You stagger to your feet, an incredible tiredness fill in your body and bones. You are in a small cell. A high grade up allows in a little starlight. Look at the door. Heavy door is a single grill snap shut. Try the door. Try the door. It's locked so firmly that it does not even rattle in the frame. From nearby, you hear a scratching sound. Commander Pancakes, thank you for the five gift subs. Who's there? There's no reply from the shadows. The scratching gets closer. Move backwards. You scramble backwards. A tiny figure approaches on spindly legs. You cannot believe your eyes. It is Jan, the Minimite you encountered outside Biritanti. <laughs> Jan, it's it's not good to see you. The creature stares at you, then rushes forwards and wraps spin spindly arms around your legs. You again at chirrups. Do you have any idea how hard it's been to follow you? You followed me. I did my best. I didn't want you to know. I thought you might send me away, or worse. Why, I thought you left. We Minimites aren't entirely without magic, Jan replies. I stayed far enough away that you could cast yours. Except once. Uh, when? You don't remember, Jan giggles. Well, I'll leave you to remember for yourself, maybe. But I'm sorry you won't be able to cast any now, and I can't escape. They clip my wings. Jan turns around and shows you the ruin of his back. Deep scars pucker the skin between bony shoulder blades. Will you heal? Grow them back, you mean? Of course I will. Limbs usually grow back, don't they? The creature scowls. Don't be an idiot. How did you get here? Flu, the creature replies, bitterly. I had wings when we met, if you remember. Why did the guards do that to you? To stop me getting away. Kind of minimites running around freely, not in a place like this. He makes a mild chuckling noise. And now you're stuck here as well. I suppose we're back together. So, what's your plan? How do we get out of this? You don't have the key, do you? No. Typical of you. I can't cast a spell. I could kill Jan. And that would... That would set me free. Look around the cell. You look around the cell regarding the walls, doors, ceiling, rafters with care. The place seems so quite solidly built. The only opening is a tiny air grate, a little larger than your bald fist, set more than twice your height up the wall. The little creature hops a little closer. Ioman, <laughs> the whale, the whale. You cr close your eyes to pray, but there is nothing. No god, no spirit can reach you here. You're quite alone. He goes over to a wall to scratch his back against it. You really have no ideas, Jan remarks. I suppose we best get comfortable. You know, a few songs we could sing. Like what? Oh really, Jan replies. Sharply. I've kind of given up already. I won't allow it. He stamps his tiny feet on the flagstones below. Okay, look at the grate. The grate will be wide enough to toss a ball through. Beyond, you see nothing but the open sky. Jan is watching you and nods almost imperceptibly. He sits down, glumly. From outside the window, the sounds of chanting and clanking metal drift upwards. The armies are assembling, the Minimite murmurs. Now you've been found, they're leaving for the backlands. We have to stop him. Of course we do, Jan replies grumpily. How do you suggest we do that? Maybe we could shout for help through the window. So why'd you follow me? You're after the crown of kings, aren't you? How are you expecting to get it without a Minimite's aid? Jan shrugs. I thought that was obvious. You've no love of Mampang. Okay, pick up the Minimite. Pick the Minimite up in your hand. He fits neatly into your fist. What are you doing, the creature asks. Voice shaking a little with fear. The stumps of his destroyed wings flicker and scrape against your palm. Can you not allow me some magic? We will die in here if you don't. The Minimite shakes his head. I'm not eating your magic, I just muddy it. I'm proud of what I am. After after a moment he adds quietly, believe me, I'm sorry too. I can throw him through the grate. No, that 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 kills him. That kills him. That tosses him out of the tower. I don't want to kill him. There's teleportation when you need it. <laughs> you feel the energy of the starlight pass through you, but nothing happens. The Minimite looks at you with tired eyes. I suppose it was worth trying, he sighs. Something passes over Jan's face. In the hills, he remarks, you saved my life, I think. I did what I could. 
Dad nods. I didn't think you liked me, he continues. But you could have gotten rid of me and you didn't. It was good to have a friend, Jan. Through the power of friendship will escape this prison. No, Jan replies, smiling ruefully. It was nothing but trouble. Just as I am tr I'm trouble now, the creature sighs. But... But what? There's a way out of this yet, the creature replies sadly. The effect of a Minimite's blood is all about distance. And there's none in the walls here. It's only me. How high up would you say we were? The tallest tower of Mampang. The creature says nothing, but you notice it glance upwards towards the open grate in the wall. There must be another way. I do it for you, Jan replies, but I can't fly. But if you throw me, I'll ball myself up. I won't do it. And you'll starve to death in here, Jan replies. You can only shrug at that. The Minimite slips to the floor once more. There's no quicker way to die. Oh no, there's what follows is a slow agonizing death listening to the sounds of the army of Manpang as it recedes into the distance on its way to war. No. 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 How could it just let you do that? Oh my god. We're finishing this tonight. Come on. Speed run. We're doing this tonight. I can't believe that. What magical artifacts do I need? Blimberry juice. I have blimberry. Um, I have stone dust. What else did I need? I have holy water. What, the, what did I need? Foul and tell. I have the skull cap. I can do it. I know it's him this time, too. Maybe it'll give me that knowledge when I come in. Make a move. Wait, there wasn't another spawn? What do you mean there wasn't another spawn? Could I have spawned at the tower? At the base of the tower. Okay, I'll 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 get back. I'll get back. Do nothing. Clap in the shoulder. There was another portal. I missed it. I didn't see it. Even if we get the crown, we'll still be cursed. That's the current problem. We have the Zed curse on us now, too. I don't know how to get rid of the Zed curse. Like, was there something in his library or something that could help us? You can stop the curse, you have to go to the college again. The college was just his little library, wasn't it? Because we were there. We can go back. Oh no, the tower's outside, you mean? Oh, God. Do we have to go all that way back to the towers? There's an hourglass in one of the towers. Oh my god. Okay, where is it? <laughs> We're doing this tonight. Where is it? Wh which tower is it? Where we gotta go? Do we have to remove it? Oh my god. Just leave it, yeah. Fuck it. We'll find a different way. Size up the guards. Move. 
Fight. Okay, attack the guards. I'm doing this tonight. Not being beaten. Only so much they can do. Continue. I gotta do the doors again, too. Oh, God. Courtyard. I'm watching this while listening to Dancing Queen by Abba, and it really exchanges the experience. <laughs> oh, God. I'm coming for him. Door. Uh, just look around real quick. Look at the doors. Look at the pack. Look at the bottles. I'm taking these again. Okay. Let's open this. I can't believe of all ways to go, we just die of starvation in a cell. Like, I thought it would give me, like, another option. <laughs> Big dock. Open it. Foul. Open the door. Cast a spell. Tell. Push the door. Wait, what? What happened there? Oh, I forgot to do the last spell and it teleported me back. Are we inside now? Wait, what? Did... I'm back inside. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What order just happened? What? Zed was cast, but I'm fine. Start to climb. Okay. I guess if I just- oh, if I just died again, I would've got back. Go. Okay, let's get Jan out in advance. Put your lips to the grill and hiss. Jan, it's me. And who are you? Some tormentor, comes the whispered reply. It's clear the creature has not even looked up. I am the Analander. You hiss, afraid of who might hear. A tormentor decides the creature, just another nightmare. Open the cell door. It's locked. I might be able to open this in advance. Is it? Dop is very much known. There we go. You raise your arms to cast the enchantment, but nothing happens. The starlight seems to simply wave around you and disappear. No doubt it's because of the minimite inside the cell. Can't get him out in advance. Sealed door. We open it. Back inside the Archmage's vast library. There's nothing here that can help us. Archmage's power, Archmage's power must be truly vast with access to so much knowledge. The library is dead silent and dusty. Really no servants come here. This place is for the Archmage alone. Pull out a book. No. Do something else. Move onwards. 
Okay, wait, wait, okay, wait, wait, um, look at the books once more. We need to read the perception one. Time to move on. Search the desk was not an option before. In the middle of the room is a desk, covered in notes. Leaf and Trudum, you can see they are mostly devoted to manipulation of time. The problem's been attacked from several angles, and his notes reference a lot, host of books and sorcerers you have never heard of. Keep reading. You keep reading, curious to know your enemy better. It seems he is chiefly interested in being able to specify the exact distance of teleportation achieved by a time-altering spell. In, in effect, being able to specify exactly when to travel back to. So far, he seems to have been unsuccessful, though he might have t taken other notes with him. Like you, the Archmage seems to have jumped through time. He's also devised a way to manipulate time on a large scale. Large scale. But the details are unclear. Yet that sketch of a tower looks rather familiar. Okay, let's move on. Climb another winding set of stairs up to the next level of the tower. You're high now. The wind outside is roaring past, shivering the glass in the windows. Okay. Try the door. It swings open. Sitting behind it. The wizened old man is behind the desk once more. He looks up as you enter. Perhaps for just a moment you see a hint of a crown on his head. You won't fool me this time. Fool you, the Archmage replies, quietly. Most curious. You were no fool, and I would be a fool not to... I'll be fool not to know that. It must be the Analander. The Analand himself. I do hope you didn't think that disguise would fool me. Please take it off. Welcome. Cast a spell. You open your eyes to cast a spell, but the old man merely shakes his head. This room is bathed in the blood of the whole tribes of Minimites, thankfully, he replies. One place in Manpang where one can have some peace from magic. And it's truly be the cruel high mage of Zaman. Grab the crown. You reach over the grab of the crown, but somehow your fingers close instead instead on the edge of the table, and you find yourself lowering down into the chair. Reaching across his desk, he lifts the stopper on a decanter and pours out a glass of thick red wine. I know better than to offer you one, he remarks, as he sips his own. He begins to talk, his voice is soft, lifting, and persuasive. You find you are speaking. Oh no, thank you, Archmage. I've been lost for a long time, and I'm far from my home. Offer you hospitality, we can. Once or more, you bow and you're back out of the room. Hey, Jan, I don't suppose you have the key, do you? Okay, we gotta go through the motions. This time... Perhaps you've not thought of it yet, Jan murmurs, but you will and you'll be right. Have to stop him. There's no way for Jan to not die. It's all just going through the motions. You try cast a spell even as well. Pray for aid. Heil mom. Troll troop. Aim carefully, you toss the minimite at the grate in the wall. Your aim is true and the creature disappears from view with a fade and scream. You're suddenly quite alone. But you feel the power of starlight return to your veins all the same. Do this again. Stop. Cast a spell and the tumblers in the ancient door turn and fall. A moment later the hinges creak open. You are free, but you are once more alone. I'm going back. Down outside the open door of the cell, everything is strangely silent. The key to the cell is sticking out of the window. Your aniline sword is leaning against the cell door. You snatch it up gratefully. Take the key. It'll be very useful should you be unfortunate enough to be locked up again. Oh shit, we can keep using Zed. We can go back in time.
So if we die against the Archmage now... We just make our way through. The books have fallen from the shelves as though torn down. Several piles lie scattered across the floor. Moreover, a large hole has appeared in the tower wall, with chunks of stone torn from the fabric of the building. What happened here? Look at the hole. The wind rushes past outside, threatening to rip you from the room, and the drop is dizzying. Look at the edge of the hole. You look out over the edge of the hole. The bricks are scratched in some places, chewed in others, but there is no rubble on the floor. It's as though something battered, tore, and bit its way out of the tower. You lean out cautiously. The drop is immense, as though you looked from a mountaintop directly down to the heart of the earth below. From somewhere far off, you hear the chant and hammer of a gathering army. Jump for Jan. Okay. Whoever made the hole in the stone is just what you need. You sit yourself on the sill and then push yourself towards in the free in space. As you fall, you seem to see something flying through the air below you, but it does not catch you. Only the ground does that. Here we go. We're really abusing time now. Zed. Throbendor. We lost another point of stamina. But we're back inside. Okay, keep going. Time to try this once again. Start to climb. Let's get Jan out of the cell this time. I have the key this time around. As you curve upwards, you come to a familiar heavy door. It is the cell in which you were imprisoned. A tiny iron grill is set at eye level, with a hook directly opposite. No doubt to taunt prisoners with the sight of the key. But the hook is empty. The stairs continue to upwards from here. Unlock the cell door. You take the key from your bag, slide it into the lock and turn. The tumblers fall over and the door slides open. Out of the darkness of the cell, Jan patters forward. The creature stares at you in disbelief. You can only smile. Come with me. The Minimite nods. I, th I told you you'd need me, didn't I tell you? Pick up the Minimite and put it carefully in your money pouch. The stairs continue upwards. Gloomy, remarks Jan. At least you know which way to go. Does Jan know we've rewinded time? <laughs> Move on. Here we go. They really hate Minimites around here, he remarks, before hopping over to the wall. What are you doing? Nothing really, the Minimite replies as he hops up to the wall. A moment later, it shimmers immediately out of existence. Okay. Back inside, look around the room. We need to pull out a book. Perception. Time to move on. There's nothing stopping us, you declare. Come on. You exit the library to the steps beyond. Let's get this over with, Jan mutters. Okay, this is the end. Can a Minimite truly block the crown? The Minimite nods once, seriously. I hope so, yes. Otherwise we're both dead. Probably me more than you. And let's go in. Draw your sword, advises the Minimite coldly. You can cut that crown off his neck. You enter the garret room. Behind the desk, the old man is sitting, but his expression is not as it was. His eyes are wide with fear. You are the Annalander, he breathes. You've finally come, after all this time. Bria saw the truth, and here you are. Bria was the woman in Book 3. Feel the power of the crown. Then you feel it ebbing gently away under the Minimite's influence. I've... Give me the crown. I cannot, the Archmage replies, shaking his head weakly. Not after all I've been through. Do you know how long I've been alive? Waiting. Waiting. I've had it in my hands for a month, no more, no less. You can't take it from me. He stares at you. Please. Jan climbs with some difficulty up onto the desk, struggling to balance without his wings, and the Archmage glares at him with a clear hatred. Draw my sword. Draw the Analan sword from your scabbard, holding it tightly in your hand. The Archmage cowers, his ancient hands shaken. Take the crown. 
You reach across the desk and lift the crown from the head of the Archmage. He cowers beneath your fingers. It seems impossible, but you're holding the object of your quest in your hands. The object you have reached for in your dreams in the outpost settlement. Please, the Archmage repeats. Don't hurt me. I'm a scholar. Call back your armies. I cannot. How would could I? He, sh sh he shakes his head in despair. What choice did I have? Your kings have starved my people, cut off our supplies, forced us to bring wagons from the east. You destroyed Timpang and the backlands. The crown cannot be trusted with you. It can only be safe here. Jan turns his head to you. Smash the crown is an option. Do it! Destroy the ring! Throw it into the fire! But after all... Why shouldn't it be mine? Your words mean nothing to me, you hiss back. I have walked past the old, whole old world to reach you and see nothing but the darkness spreading out from Mampang. You are its cause. Your grip on the crown tightens. You gave me no choice, wheezes the Archmage. You forced me to do what I've done. Open the gates, let your people leave. You tell the Archmage, or else I will free them. The Archmage holds your stare, and then a moment later shakes his head. Oh, they will leave. I have an army ready to march. His voice is as icy as a drowned man's bro. Brow. I will indeed open the doors. They will march for me. Crown or no crown. Kill him. You draw your sword and finish him in a stroke. You don't waste time, do you? The Minimite remarks, shuddering slightly. Do it! Cast the ring into the fire! <gasps> oh, here we go! Smash the crown, fool! Smash it! Smash it! <laughs> Almost without thinking, you lower the crown onto your head where it fits, as though modelled for your skull. It's no good, remarks Jan from the desk. With me, ar me around, it won't do anything. Let me think, Jan. The crown is ultimate power. The power to shape the will of the world, to remake everything better than it is, to do more good than any normal man can do. But it is also a loneliness, the loss of advice, of the perspective of others. The world becomes a world of clones. Yeah, this is getting kind of twisted. Let's just pop it back up. <laughs> you take off the crown. It's not for me, you declare. Um, let's just destroy it. You look over the Archmage with horror. He is a mere shell. Whatever power once coursed through his body seems to have drained him. Left him dry and cracked as the soil of the backlands itself. No one can be allowed the power of this artifact you begin. Holding up the crown. It's time, it's time is over. You're going to destroy it, Jan asks. Are you sure? I'm having doubts, old Jan. What would you suggest? Nothing different. The thing stinks of raw magic, the Minimite nods. I think it's an excellent idea, but I'm not sure how you'll get out of here without it. Well, how either of us will. I'll signal the Sight Masters. Once my mission is complete, you reply. From the roof. They're watching far off, certainly, but their vision is good. Then smash it, and this will be over. Yeah, I'll just do it later, you know. Smash the crown. And then you do it. Your heel on the crown shatters the bone circlet. The sun jewels spill out in all directions. The ancient, withered skull cap seems to turn the dust by itself. A veil seems to lift from the room, as though the sun had risen in the east for the first time in centuries. The Minimite sighs with relief. Time to go, you declare. The Minimite hops back on your shoulder. You merely smile as you head for the window. The turret roof. The wind atop the turret is intense. It tries to rip you from the tiles as though under the command of the dread Archmage. Jan shivers, gripping onto your shoulder with embedded claws. 
Down below, you see the armies of the Archmage mustered in the city square. You throw off your captain's uniform. You no longer need it. Down with the army. From here it seems small, unstrained, and ill-equipped. A motley band from a tiny citadel, ill-prepared for a long march west. But the power of the crown, the power to make a soldier of every woman and man along the road, they cannot hope to succeed. You must surely falter and fade away. Wave my sword. Nothing happens. Hope you got a plan for getting down from here, the Minimite remarks. Keep waving. Keep waving the blade. Surely they are there. Surely they'll be coming for you. Surely this was not a suicide mission. And they intended you to return. Just then you look up. Attention taken by a keen sound from the west. It's the eagles. We're gonna make it back to the Shire. Here it comes. Jan looks at you curiously, ears pricked. The sound is accompanied by the sound of wings. I don't see anything, he I don't see anything, he peering over the battlement. I hear it, but I don't see it. Call out. Are you there? You call out. There is a great screeching, but no reply. But then again, the gold crest eagles of Annaland can turn their feathers to make themselves invisible, and yet they cannot speak. Pray to Elmon. Close your eyes and hear at the end of things. Make one last prayer to Ailman for safe and soft landing. Jump. There's nothing but for it but to jump. You stand and step from the turret edge, Jan clinging to your arm. Here we go. You fall too far, past where any eagle might have flown. You tumble, the great walls of the tower flashing past, the mountains rising up to meet you. Then there is a sudden rush of air above you. Claws scratch your shoulders. Rescue squeals Jan, and it seems he's right. You've been caught. The great bird has you and will not let you fall. You are lifted slowly into the air. We're flying. We're gonna make it home. The eagle soars up into the air. To Annaland, you cry, and the creature cr calls out in agreement. Finally, after so long, you're on your way home. Here we go. We're flying back. The journey to Annaland is dizzyingly fast. The eagles fly high and do not stop. You clutch at the feathers with pale knuckles. You fly past the waste of the backlands and the smoldering ruins of Kari. Smoke still rises from its squares and blackened fields, coming into view of the Shamatanti hills once more. So tell me, the Minimite demands, why didn't the eagles simply fly you into Mampang? Now, Jan... You can't just say that because you don't know what the connotations are here and how many Lord of the Rings fans you've just upset with this sentence. And, you know, maybe I should have yeeted you out of the tower. I'm just gonna be honest with you here. You know, I really don't know. <laughs> but I still don't understand, Jan continues. Couldn't they have just flown you a little closer at least? Over Kara, I say. Uh, just stop talking, Jan. Um, they were defending Anna Land. Terrible attack was coming. Not if they got the crown, it wasn't. But before you can argue back with this distraught Lord of the Rings fan who doesn't appreciate the films, the creature below you banks sharply, and conversation is lost as you turn into the air. Pass through the peaks and over the Lea Key Pass. Look down. The Chamatanti Hills are far be below like a green carpet, a place of lush, verdant beauty. Compared to the horrors you have seen, it's impossible to be traveling this way, unrolling so many steps. Keep going. You follow the course of a river that curves through the Mediki Forest. Jan grins at you, enjoying the open air. When are you going home, Jan? While she shouts back, you want to get rid of me after everything I've done for you. You did nothing, Jan. Ha, only saved your life. Then the eagles begin to glide lower. The eagles are skimming the elven village where you were once tied up. For the first time, you begin to feel nervous. You have smashed the crown. What if your king is not grateful but furious? Good point. Finally, the great bird settles to earth in the long grass beside the Cantupani Road, just in sight of the Shamatanti Wall. This is home, is it? Chan asks. Seems nice. He hops off your arm and begins scrabbling away. Let's go. There are only a few steps remaining in your long journey. You take them. Then, from the corner of your eye, you catch movement. 
An old man, a beggar, is skulking through nearby bushes. Approach him. Where are you going now, Jan demands. That's the wrong way. The old man leaps out to meet you halfway. Back again, he giggles. Forever and over and again. You're cursed, Anilander, and I am free. With that, he lopes away into the long grass, laughing and jumping until he's out of sight. Loony old men, Jan observes. Always a plus. It's the guy who came back from my leg. <laughs> he's come this far. <laughs> he's followed us back. <laughs> I am cursed. The gates of home are within sight, but the beggar is right. You have not died today, but someday you will die, and the stars will drag you back to Mampang once more, to do it all again. And so on and on, never ending, unless you can break the curse of Throbin. Suddenly the gates of Annalan seem terribly far away, and yet terribly tempting. Step towards the gate. Then you shake the terrible thought away. Today is for celebration. Curses can come to roost tomorrow. You shake off the beggar's dire words. This is your moment, and no vagabond will spoil it. You make your way to the Shamantanti Gate. As you approach the gates, you hear the song of Aomon the Whale God in your mind, longing for the sea. Perhaps one day you will sail, but not today. You pause beside the enormous sealed gates, prepared since you blew them open on your departure. Shout. Cupping your hands to your mouth, you cry out. The Annalander returns. A sergeant appears at the top of the wall, one you do not recognize. Do you have the crown, she demands. It's been destroyed. For a moment, the young woman stares, and a great cry goes up across all the sentry positions, an outpouring of confusion and excitement. Jan elbows you. You're going to have a lot of explaining to do, I think. The gates are thrown wide. You walk through the wall into your home. You are hoisted aloft and carried all the way along the Northern Passage, Jan clinging to your shoulder. You have saved the old world from the Archmage and destroyed the tyranny of the Crown of Kings. But the kingdoms of the Commonwealth will demand justice for the loss of the Crown. The future is hardly certain. The effects of your journey will be felt from Anilant to Zanzunus. Soon every village and every town will know your name. When the backlands and Kari are rebuilt, it will be in your honor. I destroyed Kari too, so it damn well better be. The Archmage is dead. Its people will rise up and be free. But you yourself still suffer Throben's curse. One day you will die and return to the Citadel of Sorcerers, doomed again to enact it. Perhaps next time you'll find a way to save yourself. Perhaps we'll find a way to save Elise. We did it. Steve Jackson Sorcery. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to everyone who's joined me for these streams. To the YouTube crowd for watching them too. Uh, for persisting through what's going to be close to 20 hours. <laughs> Probably over that at this point. Of me playing this game. One final scroll. Your 26 day journey is complete. Covering all four parts of the sorcery adventure. You destroyed the crown of kings and returned to Annaline with Jan. On the way you killed the Archmage. Were cursed to eternal death by Troban. And destroy Kare and Timpang. We missed two hidden spells. I'm devastated.